we are. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the writer's commentary for uh, Fixing Ruby, Volume 6. I am, of course, uh, the Celtic Phoenix, Raymond McNeil, uh, the one who's running this whole shebang. But joining me today for the writer's commentary are two... I, I was actually painful not to credit them, but they're my co-writers. Uh, I, at least I call them that in my head because I'm delusional. Uh, you want to introduce yourselves, you guys. <laughs> well, well, geez, okay. I guess I'll start because I did the least, probably. Uh, well, you're hey, the most famous. I'm, <laughs> I, I'm Fat Man Falling. I um I read it probably. I was probably the last one to read it, and um as such, I made a bunch of suggestions that uh, didn't uh, get used. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I'll, ta I'll talk this... about them a little more as they uh, show up in the uh, in the actual episode but yeah uh i i uh <laughs> everyone in this chat has read the script and stuff but uh me and jay would probably be i think what kelt wanted to credit us as the crow writers i'm coffee if i didn't say that <laughs> Yeah, you, you, I art. <laughs> you've probably seen my art. I don't know. I'm nervous. <laughs> don't be nervous. Don't be nervous. Don't worry. I'll cut out anything awkward. <laughs> or I'll make it hilarious. Either or. Don't worry you about it. You should censor anything awkward just to get them thinking about stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll move on to me. Um, my name's JJ. I um, uh, just sort of found myself in here and I just sort of vibed with Celtic. Um, yeah. So I really have no real writing chops or anything, but I was sort of a fan of the project and... Uh, joined for art reasons and then sort of became friends with Celtic on a sort of writing level. So um, that's how I ended up where I was. And I'm Moopa on Discord, but I also go by Rasta Lolman on YouTube, Swarm Up on Tumblr, and Erica DC on Twitter. I go by different names everywhere. I don't really do a lot of writing, but I do like to bully Celtic to accept my headcanons into the writing of Ruby. <laughs> so I guess that counts. I will say you are an excellent beta reader. Yes, reader. absolutely. You've done it for our personal project, and it's been chef kiss every time. Yeah, yeah it should. M Mupa is amazing at like picking things out and being like, "Is it should this really be like this?" <laughs> yeah, mm. like good, really good critique, like structurally, what makes sense. Batman, yeah. on the other hand, is more like, "No, this should be like this," and then we ignore him. <laughs> yeah, Batman's very gut instinct, yes. and he's very he good likes for a that. Woman's touch. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, yes, uh, so Volume 6, this was a whole undertaking uh, that, like, I, I thought Volume 5 was going to be the hardest one to write. Lo and behold, Volume 6 had so many problems I did not expect to become problems. I, I think you nailed the yeah. reason for that really early on in your little diatribe. It's the most okayest. It was before everyone sort of thinks that Ruby went absolutely nosedive, excluding the aberration that is 5. But it was like... The only thing that we really changed was like, yeah, I guess there's nothing really wrong with it, but we're sort of just trying to make it a bit better versus mm -hmm. volume five is a train wreck of epic proportions. Weirdly enough, there's actually a train wreck this volume. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, yeah, vol volume five was definitely a blank slate, making volume six kind of really tricky to build upon and also keep somewhat continuity with the original series, because we like to imagine that we're still doing the fixing part of the Ruby. <laughs> And not just writing fanfic, even though we kind of are a little bit, just like a little bit. <laughs> I just realized now I have not been streaming the right, capturing the right display. Uh, oh no. <laughs> oh, crap. Don't worry, we're, we're all good. Uh, just we won't have our, our little heads up anymore. Also, uh, well, enjoy I'll the opening. It's the only time you see it in the long version. I know, right? We spent so long on this. <laughs> we spent so long. <laughs> Friendships were tested. <laughs> We're terrible. Oh, uh, yeah, well, that so that, that Adam scene right off the bat—that was an intro, wasn't it? Yes, uh, I was actually surprised more people didn't complain about keeping that in because a lot of people's complaints about Adam at the very start of Volume Six was him going haywire and killing a whole bunch of people. Yeah, but it was um, bad in canon. Here, it was good. <laughs> in retrospect, yeah. I was thinking about that exact scene. I, I think it's because his descent was much more telegraphed in the in volume five like he has not been okay for a while like breaking down and crying thinking about his mother all that kind of stuff he is not a strong mentally sound individual and then losing everything at the end of volume five just sort of started 
this volume, I think. I think it also helps that here, it wasn't in response to everybody turning on him at that last moment like it was in canon, where they were all like, oh, you came back a loser, what a failure, and he just struck out in like some rash bit of anger. Here, he saw them weakening and being ready to call it quits, not necessarily blaming him, but also not really being admirable followers, to put it phrase words. Yeah, they 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 mm-hmm. weren't they weren't sticking to the cause. They were they were starting to collapse in on themselves. People were weakening. They were trying to they were scrambling in all different directions. They didn't have a clear like through line. And any good leader knows this is the point where you step up, give them a direction, and that's basically what they were begging for. But what Adam saw instead was that no one else had the same flame he did, and that just killed it for him. He's like, fuck it, yeah. throw everything out. Everything yeah. else. It, it, it's a big, like, cutting everyone off move by literally, well, just killing the entire room. <laughs> yeah, Adam knows firsthand what happens if someone, like, loses their nerve now. Like, the yeah, thing you that don't has want been ever since. Yeah, I mean, like, Ilya turning on him. Like, I don't know if Adam could have ever really imagined that. Or Blake. Or Blake, yeah, definitely. The, um... And so yeah, that's where, like, I was worried about that because we're still, we kept that element of it. And I know there's a lot of Adam stands out there that were, like, big supporters of the project. And I was like, okay, well, I mean, it, I, I mean, if we lose them, we lose them. I, I wasn't, you know, I'm, I'm not attached to if I think it's a, a better Yeah, story. he's going to be cool, but he's not going to be, like, drastically different. Yeah, he, he, we're, we're trying to hit the same plot points and the end of the White Fang, at least as we know it, Speaking- is... Speaking as an Adam Stan, who's a big fan of this project, I would have flobbered you if I thought you were messing it up. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think both our character designers <laughs> were, were very much were, are very much Adam fans. We have quite a few Adam fans in the server. Yeah. Uh, I just like characters. Hey, well if you're written. a fan of the early volumes, you're probably a fan of Adam, and just as like just proportionally how it turns out. I guess that's yeah. true. Yeah. Hmm. Also, can I say I love? Uh, is it Tibout? He he was a new person who came in. And he's like Tibble. a real ass painter. Like, he's like French, yeah. so you gotta say it weird. Tibble. 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 Like that. Tibble. I, I, I wish I, I wish he would uh, 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 be more. Pro- uh, he he vanished on us like halfway through the volume, and, and not in a bad way. Like it just they did an amazing amount of art. No, yeah, he yeah, did a lot of art, his art and then just went radio silent, and that yeah. happens sometimes, and it's fun, which is good. You know, yeah. th- these types of projects are like volunteer base so it's like as much as you want to put in is like what we'll take absolutely We're always really loose about yeah. the quality of art we'll take also and be like hey just give us a sketch we don't need much more than that yeah mm-hmm. and he really does a great job of just bringing out like the the, the colors and just the shadows of all these different characters oh yeah wicked the, the texture costumes. we didn't talk about it but the one where they're cresting the hill in the sunset i thought was like immaculate Oh, also, yeah. it's like the only peek you get of Neo's outfit, which was dev- designed by a sketchy, but wasn't used really <laughs> oh, in this episode. That's one of the things that hurts the most. I believe like- she's wearing a Hanbok because we we tried to have. This is a thing I wanted to do. Was like they should all be wearing different types of like Central East Southeast Asian like dress wear because yeah, all, all uh, Team Ruby is wearing a different. A different from a different nationality they're wearing a different yeah because it's building on last volume where we try to make mistral more than just weird china and asia vibes like we were like what if there was more cultures than that i think we had vietnamese in there i think we had um southeast blake uh, is Vin- yeah blake is wearing an owl dye and uh speaking of this is one of the the early hints in the volume that things are not well for team ruby uh, which yeah. was the major focus of this entire volume was things are not well with Team Ruby. <laughs> oh yeah, I'd, if you're rewatching it, it's absolutely great too because you pick up on all the little like more awkward moments. I feel, mm-hmm. and there's a lot for Blake. By the way, <laughs> I feel like people didn't see the Blake thing coming on. Spoilers, but you know, I, there's some issues with Blake it, later. <laughs> it was weird because when we were writing the big scene that happens in the future, I was actually thinking like, man, this like. There was a point where, like, I stepped away from it. There's a few scenes in this this volume, including an entire two episodes, that we had to just step away from and come back multiple oh, God. times. <laughs> um, and we'll get to that. We'll get to that one. I think some people can already oh, guess which one we're talking about. The there. late nights. <laughs> uh, but uh, the the Blake blow up was one of those ones where, like, I had to like at the last minute, 
I had to rewrite certain aspects of it because it didn't flow right. It was like, like her blowing up um, at Ruby just didn't feel right to me. And so I had to like rewrite how like that entire conversation started. We can get to that at a later point, but like, Part of it was it felt like there wasn't enough, like, hinting at it early on when there actually was. Like, Blake has been uncomfortable this entire time. Well, we um, do lose a lot of what would be visually shown. There's a lot of Blake who would be more reserved. And it does come through in the art pieces, but it's the whole, it's a lot easier to say someone sadly walked across a room. It's easier to actually animate that because you can just tell versus you yeah. say it once, people may miss it and not get the subtext of it um yeah and we we work a lot within the weird medium of like a criticism slash storytelling kind of like it started as a video essay series kind of sort of rewrite and, it's and now it's become way more of its own of story with its own delivery hmm. yeah uh which i actually i noticed when i was going back through these episodes like my quote-unquote voice acting, like, I got way more into it near the back half of the volume. <laughs> like, I, I noticed myself, like, I was, like, I was doing the voices, but I wasn't really trying. But, like, as, like, my 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 effort to put in more sound effects and things increased, I also noticed, like, I was putting a lot more effort into, like, I think it was Cordovan. Yeah. I had a lot of fun doing Cordovan, and she, like, unlocked something in my brain. It's like, oh, dear, I do love being an evil bitch. <laughs> We, but we also had, like, way more, like, written dialogue. I think we might have even gone a little too far on it. Yes. It's like, we had too many, like, written dialogues of, like, speaking in characters' voices where it could have been, like, a quicker summary. Oh, yeah. I, 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 I remember distinctly that there were some scenes, like, I think there was part of the Adam Chase scene later on where we were just like, look, we, we can't go into detail we just gotta just broad describe this like like we were yeah. we were all Especially kind of going scenes. into that like about Especially ready to like write the full thing out it was the, the one from the from the, the the breach in the wall yeah the motorcycle yeah, the scene the yeah <clears throat> yeah i want to point out uh it's i think it was a comment that yang was like yang's a better sharpshooter than blake no blake was just uh playing a fair game and yang was like fuck this shit <laughs> and like took out all the was it bullseyes in this scene or bottles? I don't. I, I don't think it was remember. bullseyes. I think it was bullseyes. Yeah. Um, but and- I remember that was a comment, and I'm like, it's she's taking it seriously, dude. She, she's just like no nonsense because she's kind of fed up with like. It's actually should we say it's been like two weeks, hasn't it? Yes. Since like uh, the end of volume a, five, a week or two. Yeah, something like a that. a week or two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been a, quite a short screened. time because since were- quote unquote Blake forgave her, which she kind of did, but it's kind of settled in that their dynamic isn't going to be quite the same. Yeah. And that's where, like, all the, the, the tension is coming from. Mm-hmm. God, I... Oh, Sino did such a good job on this. <laughs> we should say, Sino made uh, the chibi art, like, that's soon to come in this, and he made At this, like, months five. before. In fact, he's yeah, yeah, the reason he's the, for the... He's the reason why this, like, little, like, scene talk with, uh... Is it Team Arsland or something? Uh, and Sun? The, like, why that exists. Yeah, the, the entire reason why that exists is just because Sino knocked out this amazing art. Because we were just talking, we were joking about the giant Adam airship. Yes. That was the joke that, like, st- spawned this scene. <laughs> and we thought it would be a great little way to recap uh, the events of Volume 5. So we kind of had that stuck in our mind when we finally got to this. We're like, okay, we can we can briefly touch on that and then have Ruby get it all wrong for comedic effect. Yeah, it's a, it's a fun little recap. You like you like to be creative with your caps instead of doing like a clip show. Also, shout out to bathroom joke right here. Bathroom joke. <laughs> Not a lot of people got it. It's <laughs> it's subtle, but I like it. <laughs> we, we, we actually, this is one of those moments where like I, I have the, the proclivity to want to write like go full whole hog on it. There's actually a joke in here I got a lot of flack for going too far on. That's in the later end of the volume. But like, I, I like to write everything out. And then I I got convinced to write the bathroom joke down. It's like, no, 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 leave it more implied. No, more implied. <laughs> yeah, that might have been a Jay. I think Jay was like, no, 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 no. Yeah, Jay's, Jay's very good about like, don't overdo things. Yeah. Sometimes to a fault. Sometimes I have to push back on him. But you know what? I, well, I'd rather him have that commentary. Well, that's three of us. We reel each other back when we go too far. <laughs> I mean, our favorite writing uh, phrase is whenever we get stuck, it's just write it out to write it back. Just write throw back. as much at the paper and then just salvage it later. There are so many scenes yeah. that we just vomited onto the page that just went, yeah, 90% of this, garbage, getting rid of it. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, some a of them lot. Just vanish. Uh, <laughs> oh god, we'll talk about that. Especially at the top half, I feel because like the this this section leading up into the end of Brunswick, there were like very critical parts that we had to be like, yeah, it's not working. Mm. Or yeah. like we had to reconsider a lot. I was actually really happy with how the crow storyline actually played out. Um, I thought it, it worked out really well. We and it, it, it bled in really well from volume five. I thought. Like, mm-hmm. we're, we're really showing he's deteriorating. Yeah, this scene, I feel like it's a very good tone setter also, like, early on. It, yeah. it managed to be a very tidy and succinct story for this volume. It was, I was, It's very clean. Which is interesting, because I think out of all the subplots in this volume, I think Crow had almost no prep work. There was no document written down. I think there was one scene that we never wrote from volume five about drinking with yang um and commiserating about stuff and that didn't make it in apart from that everything just sort of diegetically got written to just sort of oh yeah we need to yeah. yeah we just sat down and wrote the the appropriate crow scene for the scene and i think yeah. that's based on a lot of like good uh foreground work like background work with that kelt did in previous volumes yes where it's like it's never been like so much as a joke of haha uncle crow or if it has been it's been quickly like wiped away to be like oh jean isn't okay with this ruby isn't okay in with universe this. i think volume bad. five starts that way yeah mm-hmm. yeah where they're like uncomfortable when he says oh i got my painkiller right here and they're like oh yeah you're it, drinking it, again it's one Already. of those storylines i was very like adamant on getting right um and also like it, it, starting here uh, another interesting mini story being told is Arslan. How far back is... does the event go? The we, we yes, spoilers. Her death. How far back does that planning <laughs> go? Um, I think, oh, uh, probably volume four at the. I uh, know it might have actually been back in volume three because volume three was being written. When was vo- was volume three being written before or after volume five? Let him be a DJ. Let him be a DJ. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Let him be a DJ. <laughs> also, a crack at the old uh, the old pilot boy setup before yeah. it got redesigned. Thank you, thank you. That God. is my joke. Jay yeah, has yeah, such a yeah, conniption yeah. It's a good joke. over that. I like it. Uh, Jay's former Air Force. I don't know if you mind saying that. Airplanes uh, are so my he, thing. He had a yeah. lot of things to say about uh, the avi the 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 aviation in Ruby. Yeah, and like recently, it's not like old, like a decade ago. He's not that old. Like I was still in when we were writing. He that. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's fairly recent. So he's up to date on all the cool shit. Oh wait, shit, Renora. We haven't commented about Renora. Yeah, Renora. I I, <laughs> I I don't think anyone really had any illusion that it was canon in Ruby this early on. Um, yeah, and no, we're just showing off their their. They are absolutely smitten for each other. At no this beating point. around the bush. Well, yeah. I think, no, yeah, confirm. I think it comes back to like it's a very common Western problem: is when they the will they won't they gets resolute uh, resolved, they don't know what to do. Like they immediately have them in a rocky relationship, and that's just not even uh, fic- uh, you know Ruby or Rooster Teeth or anything like that. It, it's a common oh, yeah, program. That's like everywhere. Yeah, yeah. I mean. They were already a couple. The only thing that changed is they're, like, they're saying, if you watch even Canon Ruby, the first episode, you're like, those two are basically uh, in a couple. Like, it's, it, um, so just them verbalizing it shouldn't change their behavior that much, except they get a bit more smoochy smoochy. Yeah, they get to, they get to have nice moments. Yeah. They get to And of be course, people, I, 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 that, I believe that was Catatune that did that art. Oh. Um, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Wasn't it? Or was it Cat Arsis? We have I two feel cats. bad because the watermark the Twitter said like <laughs> yeah we have so many something. sketches. Did I, we mention we have like seventy sketches volume? I feel it's like crazy. it was Catatune because I feel like it was the I th- that Someone's sounds printing. right. That's or was it Card Tyson? Card Ice? I don't know shit. <laughs> Regardless, did excellent work on that scene. Um, mm. oh god, Noel scenes where I had to ask her for like emergency pickups like two days before. Someone is printing yeah. in my room. That is irritating. <laughs> yeah, should we talk about how Kill we went? Them. Like we went weekly this this volume. Yes, in release that schedule. Was massive change to how we formatted things. Yeah, because like we didn't write the volume thinking this is going to come out weekly. We wrote it like how we kind of did volume five, where it was a lot of na- late nights and yelling at Kelp. <laughs> <laughs> um, and for the record, just to put this out there, principal writing was done back in September. And strange. So strange, it, isn't it? It's so strange because I know there's a lot of people that... Oh, wait one minute. This is... 
one of my favorite scenes in the entire volume. I think it's Kate a Danvers. Of people. Like I handed it off to Shaliria. I didn't know what to expect from Shaliria. And then this came through the pipeline. And I was just fucking floored. Oh, dude, people went crazy with the animation. But this one felt so early on and so tonally appropriate. It was like such a sweet present. Oh, it really was. Like, it feels like Ruby Volume 1 so hard. It's great. <laughs> yeah, look at her doing her little blinky puppy eye shit. It's like, oh my god. Uh, that, the sound effects on that were, were a whole, like, thing. Because I remember people didn't like me doing the sparklies too long. But, like, I was trying to match that she had sparklies around her face the entire time. Blake I remember that consistently yeah. being the other, the outsider. So still... Yep. Did we want to... Yeah, she feels she can't quite embrace the entire team yet. Which is kind of like an issue this entire volume is her relationship with Yang kind of souring the rest of Ruby for her a little bit. Oh, before we get into Cardin, did we want to talk about the, the famous friendship bracelets unresolved rooster teeth thing? Like how he just decided yeah. what it was. Well, yeah, based on what- so that's canon. Yeah, for, uh, in or was canon, meant to be canon. Ruby, like, if you remember volume six, Ruby had that little bag that she was holding at the very beginning that she was so cheery over and was like, oh, it's a surprise for later. And then we never learned what it was. Well, it's friendship <laughs> bracelets, according to the, the, the commentary. So we thought, you know what? Screw it. We're going to actually deliver on that right damn now. We're actually yeah, they said it. they didn't have enough time for it, but it's like, dude, you animated the bag and kept the scene in. Yeah, yeah like, that's the whole scene <laughs> at that point. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, just go for it. It's, it's a cute moment. But then how, how do you get to Ruby rushing through all the stalls? Like, oh, you couldn't, you couldn't possibly rework the scene to work that way. I and yes, that. here is the return of everyone's favorite uh, reformed bully that no one likes, apparently. <laughs> Before like Racists him. aren't allowed to get better. They're only supposed to die. <laughs> he didn't even die in canon. He just, like, walked off screen. No, but, like, people want him to be, like, dead or out of the story because he was, like, a racist, like, bully or whatever. Yeah, it's such a strange yeah. belief that does permeate, not even, as we say, the crazies, but it's a sort of belief that permeates a lot of writing is if you're bad, you're, like, the only solution is your death. Like... There's no, <laughs> no, I mean, there's a- I get it, I get yeah, it. I'll, yeah, redemption through sacrifice, it's like a price has to be paid and stuff. There isn't so much as like a natural reform or like- Even minor infractions. I mean, not that I'm saying racism is minor, but essentially schoolyard bully, no, not, yeah. a bit violent, maybe? You know, you could make my argument that he, he, he's quite bad, yeah. but it is anime, so the scale- We definitely up the racism, but yeah, he. I think it's more admirable that he was worse and then got better- I think it's also because like a lot of people take bullying very personally a lot of people have personal experiences personal. Yeah. Of being bullied a big bad Which villain I don't blame does them. It could be large like- scale bad can be redeemed and a lot of people are cool with it a bully is just like you're satan yeah it's because like <laughs> yeah. the abstraction protects your mind from yeah like emerald she's killed a bunch of dudes and it's like it's fine she can be redeemed but <laughs> emerald redemption <laughs> oh, emerald was re- responsible for this world's equivalent of like 9-11. <laughs> I, I, I was tempted to not whether or not to say it, but yeah, I was just yeah. 9-11. Like, it, literally, like, she is fully responsible for her part in that. Like, thousands yeah. are dead as a result of Emerald's direct action. But so, no, Car- Cardin b- bullied the bunny girl. C- Cardin bullied Kill the bunny him. girl, <laughs> and people take also, like, the, the visual I put on screen really seriously, because, like, I had shitty Photoshop ethic back then. Like, I, I put, like, this bloody splotch on her here to really show that she got really hurt. And oh, it's yeah, like, that's... And, like, and I'm like, wow, that's, uh, that's not exactly what I meant. I was just trying to visualize it. Everyone's like, no, he's made her bleed. And I'm like, that's not what I was... It might be... Blood for blood. It'd be interesting to come out and say that, like, the visual components to Fruby are separate from your writing in in, in a way because you don't know what you get. It's yes. a, yeah, you get tonal stuff that kind of sometimes doesn't match. It's not because the artists are bad, but the nature of the project. And you're not really going to ask for revisions unless it's like, a mm-hmm. hey, uh, like, Emerald is not purple. Like a major class. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And be like, like that's, oh, that's totally just dissonant. That, with the that's scene. one of those things that just never, I feel, gets appreciated is that, like, the the there is that distinct separation. Fruby is the words. Like you can Fruby is the words. And you can you can reinterpret that. You could close your eyes and reimagine everything. You don't need the visuals. The visuals there are very helpful, but the artists sometimes go in their own direction. Sometimes they add, sometimes they do things that I think might end up hurting. But if it's not overall the most damaging thing, I don't 
people volunteer their time. I'm not yeah. going to force them to to change things. There are there are some rare exceptions where I think something doesn't work that I will personally like hop into Photoshop and try to tweak out maybe with permission before people start with going permission. nuts. Yeah. Yeah, we always ask for permission for these types of things. Um especially if like they're too busy to fix it or they're not they 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 don't want to fix it. They're just like tapped out or something like that. I will ask permission and then I'll do it myself. That being said, the artists do add a significant amount to the story because there's been multiple times where the comments will say, it's like, oh, I really like this touch you did, Kelt. And it was just like 100% the artist decided to add that to the scene. Oh, yeah. Lubi. Oh. <laughs> it just adds background references everywhere. Oh, Lubi's crazy. Go- Dude, when we get to the, the fables, Jesus. Oh, oh God. <laughs> Common thing is also artists like forgetting diff- certain character details or even adding character costume details. Another yes. common visual inconsistency that happens. Well, I mean, we can talk um, about the fact that Blake refuses to dress in Volume 6 outfit. Well, you know, she just, she will not get out of the Volume <laughs> She's 6. She's always wearing her, her fucking cop uniform. <laughs> yeah, from, from uh, we're, we're, we're going to have to be more on top of that in the menagerie. next volume. Uh, I do want to yeah. transition to talking actually here about Emerald and Mercury a bit. Because they have like this minor subplot that they actually had in Volume Six. I I thought Mercury and and Emerald were fine in Volume Six. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, but yeah. It was a matter of just rearranging things and to make sure everything's where it needs to be. I remember yeah. placing this scene was a pain in the ass. Yeah, the subplot locations were very complicated. We could write them, lose them, then rewrite yeah. them. but placing them. We also them. lost a portion. We lost like an uh, like a scene. The arrival in this uh, plot line. It was the Hazel scene. It was one of the Hazel scenes, either when he talked with Salem and got tentacle grabbed, or the the scene... I think it was that scene, actually, because then we were trying to write the scene with him talking with Emerald after sparring. Right, and that's and when we're, we're like, like, wait a minute, where, where wait, what happened to that go? scene? We need to reference it. And it's like, oh, yeah, yeah. that scene vanished. We still, to this day, do not know where it went. We don't either, know how that happened, either dude. Either it by accident, or... It's like a Google Doc. It should autosave. Like- <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I was writing this in, in Word. Weirdo. Oh yeah, it was at the Google Docs that we shared for people. Uh, one of the few instances of my uh, popsicle stick animation. I was gonna say it's it's like very refreshing to see like butterflies art be used because uh, yes. you like to say when we use it, it's because we really need it. Which is a terrible yeah. thing because it's it is lovely it art. It just fits in really good. Uh, her Blake yeah. might be one of her. Also, best. just the way she drew this Blake in particular, because this is one of the newer like art and it came in last volume. Yeah. It looks so at home next to Callie. It's like, oh yeah, Ca- Callie wore that. That is just like minor alterations <laughs> to like what she's already wearing. I still can't believe that worked so well. That that plot point. That was an accident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She just slapped so in the of- guard uniform, and then like, well, okay, how do we pr- improve from the guard uniform? There, there, there's there is so much in Fruby that has a click moment that you really need where like last volume it was the white fang subplot that legitimately like we were struggling with that kind of thing jay came in made a suggestion and all of a sudden it all just snapped into place then in this volume it was cordovan that was the struggle there there, were there were several points this volume but cordovan was the one where like the back half of the volume was very much dependent on her because we we got to a stage where, and this is where it's really good to have different perspectives. Where, as in the modern era, it'd be very hard oh, to say wait. this. Oh, sorry. Uh, hold that thought. Yeah. Big thing we need to bring up because this is something that people will complain about. Ilya turning herself in. I don't know if anyone needs to hear this, but a guilty conscience is a kind of a hell of a thing to have. Um, and also wanting to like put your life on a better track is often a struggle all its own. And she's not being sent to do hard labor. Like, I'm pretty sure, like, she's in prison in the same way that, like, she'd be helping rebuild from the efforts of her own, you know, uh, crimes, yeah. for lack of a better word. I, like, I imagine she's probably helping <laughs> rebuild the Belladonna house part that burned down, which was admittedly <laughs> Blake's fault. Um. Yeah, I think we end up using, sometimes we have words we repeat a lot in script, like I think last year was Hottie, Volume 5. Yeah, I feel like this year we kind of had Do Right by quote, like, them, and I feel like that's like a little bit of a theme we ended up having unintentionally, is like what you want to do right by yourself first, or do what's best in the moment, Um, for if not for you, for other people. 
And so I think there's a little bit of that actually seated on with Ilya of being like, no, I, I, I still got to do my time. <laughs> I kind of fucked up. You know, I want to, in a way, she wants to redeem herself. And I think uh, yeah. a lot of ways characters want to redeem themselves others. I, I mean, not to reveal too much behind the curtain, but we don't have like a firm plan with Ilya because we, we don't know what Ruby itself is going to do with Ilya necessarily. But I we know she's not dead. <laughs> she's not. Yeah, we know she's not dead. And we know that she's out there like watching things. Um, our our plan is not to have her be incarcerated for the rest of the series. Oh, I imagine God. she's going to come out of that jail cell and she's going to... Yeah. She already has like a much better and healthier relationship with Blake, which I think is really integral for anything going forward. And yeah. she was Some a lot of old people. in Volume 5 in the OG series. Like, ugh. Roman and Neo pickpocketing their way to the first class. Oh, they're just a treat. <laughs> oh, new, Ro- new Roman model, by the way. We didn't mention it. It's been so long, but... Uh, me and Jay also work on 3D models. Uh, was that the and, new Roman model, uh, yeah. or was that the old? That is the new Roman model because we had like a an older one with the chunkier hair and the thicker eyeliner from uh, Volume Five. Right. Because I know I was using the old one for the longest time. So you notice a lot of people actually have a glow up. Like Weiss got a new model that took me forever. I was working on the Weiss model in Volume Five, and it just didn't quite get finished. I did a new Ren, so he doesn't look. It was famously Ren was like the worst model of us between me and Jay. It's like, oh, it's it's real bad. <laughs> it's real bad. Uh, and then a few other characters had like texture updates to to make them a bit more like uh, the canon versions. Uh, sadly, John still has alien head. <laughs> uh, we fixed that eventually. <laughs> um, what's interesting, I think, um, with uh, the scene that we just walked past um, is giving the characters new situations to explore their powers and, you know, and their story things. Like, the removal of weapons and the reason for it oh, came dude. so simply, but it unlocked the next four episodes. Well, no, sorry, two episodes. Yeah, I remember the conversation we were having. It was, like, late night and we were complaining about the train and redesigning it. And then it was, like, you came up and be like, what if they had to check their shit? So everything's in the trolley. Yeah. And, like, I added Kelt, and he was like, wait a minute, like, he did, like... Yeah, I did the brain like, blast. Like, big eyes That's, that's the thing that shit. I do, is, like, the minute someone makes a suggestion that just unlocks, I was like, wait! <laughs> it opens the third eye. The third but, eye opens. Like, not to talk over Aiden's amazing op- uh, animation, but it was a big moment where it was like, we can make something interesting happen in the story and within the fight for the train scene, and also allow... The, the seeds of, like, yo, they're not huntsmen, they're poor, they can't really do jobs, kind of legally. <laughs> um, and it's just, like, not all around, not a very, like, lavish life they're living with the... Everybody gets coach, except for Roman and Neo, who stole the money <laughs> to get, like, first class. Because a lot of people don't seem to realize, like, within the universe of Ruby, they are not the protagonists. Like, they are... Yeah, they're just some kids. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's like the whole thing with Cordovan. Like her trusting them at the at the very beginning is, oh man, I love how he animated that. Chunk. Also, also Loki Crow. I think it was a it's an important distinction that like Crow calls Ruby Kid a lot of the times, and and this comes up way way later towards the end. But he like makes a switch to calling like Ruby. He like corrects himself and he's like Ruby. And I think that's like an important like little moment there. It's like okay, oh, yeah. it's, I, it's crossing over because I think that's an original theme in. The canon volume that wasn't very, it wasn't conveyed very well. It was. It's going to be a struggle from here on in to not have Crow call Ruby Kid. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's like adoration, but like in serious moments, we'll, we'll put in more rubies. You know. Yeah. Can't be like a night and day switch. Speaking of things that weren't conveyed very well in canon. Oh hey, yeah. Oh. And our solution. Right, so, <laughs> Cinder. Cinder was. One of those moments in the where we were like, okay, we got to write Cinder's story. We all sit there staring at the screen for like 15 minutes and we're like, <laughs> let's move on to a different thing. <laughs> this is like, this was like the one, I think I missed like one or two writing ses- sessions and this was the one, like the start of Cinder's storyline was the one I missed. And when I came back, I was like, oh, we're not doing it. And it's like, yeah, it didn't work. <laughs> and I was like, okay. <laughs> because we do have, we have a version of the Cinderella, Fruby, Cinder story. And it's very detailed. And we've got some really cool thoughts on like her relationship with the others in the family. Um, but we just couldn't make it not feel disjointed to the story that we were trying to tell and Ruby was it trying dragged. to tell. Yeah. It dragged something off. Yeah. And it, like- when you pause dramatically to tell someone's entire life story, <laughs> it, it's kind of like a hold ordeal. So uh, instead we struck upon the idea of, well, 
why don't we tell the moment after that? Because that was something that I think in canon was never really explored well at all. Is like, how did Cinder end up meeting Salem? Like, what Even was though that? that was the arguably much more important part of her backstory than just the like, most oh, interesting she had a part. Yeah, she could have been an orphan. She could have been like Emerald. It's like it's not too important where how she ended up where you first meet her. It's everything else that's important. We just slid right past um, Jay's one of Jay's. I think one of my favorite shots from him was like the the whole time. Oh yeah, those train great. animations very visceral. Like it's like. I love little sprinkles of a uh, like detailed animation or like detailed environments because it really flushes out the kind of story we're after. Where it's like a very more wholesome and like expanded world of Ruby instead of like the cardboard cutout we kind of get. Yeah, you get the feeling in Ruby, and I really don't even like making fun of them because they, they they they're fine except when they pay their animators. Um, You're trying. There's a lot of good people <laughs> who work doesn't get to the final screen. Yeah, but their world does feel like it only exists the sets that they're in like you don't feel like there's any more of remnant than is currently in front of you at any given point yeah yeah, yeah. speaking yeah. of sets uh this is also one of the train things because uh this this original train like dorm room is fucking huge in canada it's the equivalent yeah, it's like massive. a living room it's the equivalent size of the beacon uh, uh a bedroom if you look at it it is surprisingly <laughs> big yeah, there's like a bookshelf in there, and we were like, okay, we gotta fix that. It's it's such a minor change, I I, I think, when people are watching it, because it's like, oh, there's some artist in, in like interpretation of that scene, but it was like a very purposeful thing of like, yo, they're in economy class, yeah, I, <laughs> this shit's cramped. I was going to make the comment that I don't think it gets quite captured like how we envisioned it, where it was much more yeah. cramped, like e- even even in uh, Kobe's style. It's still kind of spacey. It's still mm. kind of spacey yeah. a little bit. At least, at least in, yeah, this in, isn't the worst. We wanted yeah. it more cramped. But I, actually, I also think Kobe mixed up some of the beds and where people had in sleep arrangements. But nah. I, I'm not gonna. Yeah, yeah. She still went with the that. wooden post beds, but it's like still an overall improvement of like, yo, we're not in a we're not in a dining room <laughs> <laughs> with like a bookshelf, like a wooden bookshelf on the wall. <laughs> like, oh dear. Oh, and here's here's a, a nice little hang up of Blake and Ruby looking back. I think that was a slightly later addition to the scene of, like, when reading back, it was like, Ruby should look back as if she's going to ask Blake, and Blake kind of, like... Turns away. It, it Blake, yeah. It Blake, very quietly, she just turns in on herself. Like, Blake isn't even really... She's just, like, tuning everyone out. Um, yeah, she's kind of getting reclusive. I, I, also, shout out to the cat yeah. headphones. I was just... Kobe did that. I don't know why, but it's kind of cute. And, you know? uh, they, 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 they back sound her cat ears while she's listening with her actual... Now... <laughs> PTSD. I think it's an yeah. important topic of conversation about people sort of... But some people absolutely love this, and I think we tried really hard to nail the tone of what can set something off. It is not like... Oh, it's hard to explain, um, but the idea of... Oh, someone want to take it from me? I'm- you can be triggered by a lot of mundane things with trauma and stuff. I know a lot of people are complaining that it's like, oh, it just got dark, almost whatever. But it's like there's a lot of reasons a person might be triggered and they may seem mundane to you, but they're, they're still very visceral uh, to the people that happens to them. Her getting the glass of water in volume four, I complained about in the original reaction. But the more research I did on PTSD, yeah, no, just getting a glass of water, something about that can sometimes just set off a PTSD trigger. You, That's the thing that's actually kind of scary, really scary about PTSD, is you never know what's going to set it off. It's 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 one of those things where, like, it can be a random stimuli that you just never thought you would associate, but something about it mm, It can be a smell, it can be a sound, a visual. Yeah. I mean, you could just be sitting there vibing. It could be Roman winning a deck of cards that probably he cheated at. Um. Neo helped him cheat. (laughs) I was going to say, she has... She could could cast illusion on his cards. Oh my god, they could not even be aces, but they could think of it. (laughs) How does anyone trust them? (laughs) Nobody checked because it's Well, I mean, no one trusts them, but I mean, it's like, how does anyone trust them to play a card game? (laughs) Oh, that's great. Also, I love Jean's continued. Uh, he's still kind of not having uh, a good time. Roman shit. <laughs> I, okay, <laughs> All the way this is one that, that I asked Tyne to do as a pickup because I was like, we still. I want Nora, and God damn it, I got the Nora that I was looking for. <laughs> oh yeah, we love Nora being too much and Ren being embarrassed yeah. <laughs> in this scene. 
I just I love the idea of Nora being in this life or death card game with an old lady. She's got like an entire pearl necklace on the line. <laughs> just, uh, also, also old lady that we purposely tried to say it wasn't Maria because it's like, oh, she's got an anchor tattoo. Like, duh, duh, duh. but everyone thought it was everyone. Maria anyway. And they were like, yep. oh, so smart. You have her diegetically in there earlier, and it's it's like no, no it's, 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 it's not Maria. <laughs> That, that's that's only a one old lady moment. In Ruby, guys. <laughs> I think we had like a, a period where we really didn't know when Maria would come in, and it like ended up being like, oh, after we even like, entertained. I think cash. at one point not having Maria at all. I think very briefly, but I, I don't think that that never went anywhere. See, I, I yeah. went strong. It didn't she get too wasn't far. on the train because I kept trying to point out there. The train was so busy, and there wasn't really a place to slow down and introduce another character, even mysteriously. Without taking away from what we've done. But let's talk about this scene. Oh, yes. Carden. <laughs> I, Carden coming in and talking with Blake. The, the moment that he just is like, oh, you're a faunus. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's one of those, like, reveal, non-reveals. Because it's like, oh, yeah, he wouldn't have known that. Um. <laughs> yeah. oh, honestly, uh, if it isn't Team Blake is, like, <laughs> my favorite line in, like, the early episodes. Yeah. I good. love the it's way good. you it's... delivered that. He, he's always flooding his entrances. He has such a Ever good, like, green. frat boy energy, yeah. like, trying to be nice. Like, I don't know what to describe it, but he, he has such a good energy of the way you voiced him. I, I uh, It's weird because I could never get his voice down. Like, it feels like I use a different voice from every single episode he appears. Um, I eventually went. Oh, for, then like, maybe a generic, the awkwardness like, is real. Yeah, <laughs> then that just adds to the experience. It's like, oh, he feels a little awkward and stilted because I, I always want to give a him a deeper and voice than he has in canon. Because he has he has sort of a nasally sort of Brooklander voice in canon. If you actually yeah, listen to, yeah, I'm pretty sure he was like voiced by an animator who was just there or mocapper. Yeah, because uh, that's how a lot of the early volume stuff was like. Hey, can you just do some lines? Yeah. Shout out to Mupa's designs, by the way. Mupa and, and Butterfly's designs here. Excellent. Thank I, you. I think yeah. You, you were the one that just, like, threw Russell at us, like, almost immediately. <laughs> it feels like. Oh, should we talk about Russell? Because there was a bit of, like, we we knew, along with the Arslan thing, we knew that one of the characters was gonna, like, Get have snatched a, a near death or may die because of the train thing. Like, yeah. we knew Carton was gonna be on the train with one of his teammates, and we didn't know if it was gonna be Russell or Sky. Yeah, we were always going between the two, and I think... I, I just want, I wanted to keep the, 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 the partner pairs together. I always also kind of saw Sky as like a secondary leader character, so you can get a little more friction out of his conversation with, with uh, Carden. I know that's actually incredibly esoteric considering how little screen time these characters have. And like, <laughs> like literally there's nothing to go on other than just like very, very broad observations. But The vibes. Uh, the vibes, yeah. The vibes. The vibes are immaculate. Just like this this art, which is, I think, one of the earlier collabs. I don't know if it's the yeah. first one that's uh, we, appeared we had one or in two the volume earlier. so far. Um, I think... Oh, okay. We had a lot more collabs. Each year, we get, like, more and more people working together. And I think it's really meaningful because they're very, like, detailed scenes. It's not like a collage where, uh, like, you do a lot of art or, like, characters and stuff. It, it's very involved, I feel. It's weird because um, the... Oh, what was I going to say with this? Oh, the collabs. It's weird because it feels like there's less collabs this year than than there were. I think it's just more art. I think it's just more art. Like, like by I think, volume, I, I think there's less collabs. I think also they went smoother. I think the collabs just were done like more independently and smoother because of that. Because yeah. we didn't have to, like, as the writers are like continuity like squad. <laughs> we They just happened. And it's like, oh, okay, that's great. Thank you for the finished art. <laughs> we um we didn't really talk about it, but Carden and uh, of course a little reference to Velvet, the keychain. Do yeah, you want to talk about that yeah. and like what you think on a that? A lot of people think that he's in a romance with her right now, and like they are they are close friends. I don't I don't even I don't know if I would call them best friends, but they are very close friends. They're very dear to one another after <laughs> spending eight months together, you know, or so. Trying to in, in the little fucking trenches, the like reading of volume together, four, like, it's like, awful. Like, like people kind of <laughs> or five. Kind other of sketches may up. disagree or have other opinions on the exact yeah. nature of their relationship, but they aren't dating to be sure. Yeah, we got shippers on the team, you know. <laughs> it's just soft pining, just a little bit. Soft a little bit pining. of soft pining, maybe, maybe maybe a little puppy dog in there. Nothing pining? confirmed. Like crow? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> oh, Can God. we say originally this, this was like. 
way more explicit. Yeah, yeah. This was he was oh, literally yes. going to be making out with this woman. I remember that in the yeah, script. Yeah, in like a closet. Did we want to go into the jokes yeah, that as well? Nice. That the woman was actually a gold digger. Yeah, the woman was supposed to be like trying to like. <laughs> she was going to stab him. him. Literally stab yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> She was going to be like a he's so drunk he doesn't realize like he's getting taken advantage of or maybe he does and he's into it I don't know but <laughs> we ended up toning it down and just like oh of course he's in the bar train yeah I mean we didn't uh, yeah. we didn't have a plan for that we like the DJ thing about the pilot we have all these backstory which he's not meant to be in the show and would never be in the show but we love it we have fun <laughs> yeah yeah. Uh, the Adam also, reveal. is this the first he's standing yeah, there menacingly? Yes, the of first he's standing there menacingly. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, dude. I love... I didn't think... I know we used it a lot as like a kind of a joke. Like It kept coming up and we're like, yeah, sure, it's fine. But the fact that people picked up on it in the comments it's was really great. funny to me. I uh, love these names. L- Lumi's art there was like... I, I, I love how shiny Lumi's art gets. I don't know how to describe it other than that. Yeah, because she does like a shading and then yeah. like a shine layer. This is another point of contention. People, people were irritated. Some people, I would say, detractors uh, were irritated. Like two people, yeah, like two people. But uh, and one of them were crazy. Or something. I don't remember. <laughs> no, um, that like Carden, Russell, and Crow were like standing up to to Adam and Team Ruby had to run. It's like they're unarmed. What do you want? <laughs> they don't have weapons. Carden and Russell are also getting like, their ass kicked. It's their job. They're getting an asterisk in there. It's their job. They're the literal guards of the train. And, like, Crow is the only official huntsman on this train. Or, like, to know- they are the people who should be handling this. Similarly, well, not similarly, but, like, uh, this is a good scene to indicate that uh, Roman and Neo, they are not equipped to handle Grimm. Like, they, they kind of make do at the very end of the, vo- the volume, but they do not really stand up very well against they are They have been... Purely inside civilization, yeah, they're city fighting kids. people. That was an emphasis I wanted kids. to put in. That they are yeah, like the urchins. population of Remnant. They are terrified by Grimm. I know that Roman and uh, Neo are involved in the fall of Beacon, which is a bit in the terrorist attacks, yada yada yada. But on a, on a standpoint, they are the humans of this world who are not hunters. They are terrified of the creatures of Grimm. So just because they can fight, an MMA boxer can't win against a lion, probably. Like. Yeah, I would even say it, it's it's less about even, like, fear or anything. It's just, like, experience. Like, they're used to, like, roughing up people in, like, the cities for deals and shit. For, like, oh, you cross me. I'm gonna fucking kill your family type shit. It's like, oh, what do you do when a manticore fucking comes in crashing through the window and, and you're just pinned under some shit? It's not a good, like, time. Yeah. Swagger's not gonna cut it. <laughs> yeah. that, that's not a plus one modifier to intimidate. Uh, yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> would, would it not have interrupted the scene? I would have totally put the archer clip up on here. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to fight on top of a fucking train. <laughs> I, I speaking of fighting, so I think there was like a there was actually uh, this scene. I remember there was actually a bit more fighting engaged. With, like, Team Ruby. Yes, I they were actually supposed to Weiss, clash with Adam at some point during Weiss this. was supposed to have, like, a gl- glyph. She was supposed to be with the boys helping out. Yeah. But we found it, reading it through, it really dragged the entire scene and kind of episode. So we ended up having to rework stuff, which I think worked out better for how bad it turns out for Team Card and, like, their duo. And then how Crow ends up Loki being the cause of the avalanche. Yeah. Um, so that rework was actually really good. I think I coined the term like fight economy in that because yes. I was just like, it doesn't feel right. And it's like, oh, we have to save our money. Like, if it was a budget, we wouldn't want this to be the big set piece. It's not very engaging. It's it's more of like a st- like a yeah. And importantly, full it's, stop. it's not out of character what we changed. Like that's the thing. Is like, it, it yeah, could go yeah. It makes sense. Like you, they got to get their weapons. What are they gonna do? Neo trying to distract it, and <laughs> well, it was. By the something. way, Luby made that model real quick. That model isn't like ripped from a game. That Manticore model is uh, made by a sketchy Luby, the same one who does the art. Luby uh, is uh, fucking wild. More increasingly uh, re- regarded as the crazy member of the sketchy huntsman, which, considering we already have several the crazy members of the sketchy huntsman, yeah, he's yeah, saying yeah. something. <laughs> they just get crazier. Yeah, he's dude. the crazy they just get crazier. one. Uh, do we want to talk about why we made the train more of a set piece? Like, just the sort of absolute limp-wristed, and we do actually make a joke about it, which is cut out in this version. Um, 
Yeah, I, I was so I, I hurt myself so bad at cutting that out. I felt so bad about it. Uh, it makes sense. You know. Oh yeah, because the interesting point that we wanted to sort of say with with these two episodes coming up with the more about action is something that we have noticed that yes everyone says that since Monty died the show's action is a, is is not as good but the situations that they write themselves for action are also equally as as bland like they're on a train it has a train crash and all it does is fall off the tracks like it yeah and the tracks are only lifted like Maybe t- 30, five, ten feet. I, I would say 30, it, 40 feet. I also, real quick, I want to comment on Rin using his martial arts for the first time in five volumes. Yeah, after it was briefly introduced in volume one. We no. were like, uh, it was one of the few writing sessions where I was actually there and they were all brainstorming like, okay, how are we going to do this, this fight? Uh, what can Rin do? What can? How can he improvise his weapons? And I was just like, well, Rin can fight with his hands though. So why yeah, doesn't he just yeah. do that? It's... That ruby remnant, uh, where it's like he was shown to be one of the most adept in aura usage. It wasn't it's even like, oh, okay, a ruby remnant; it was just in the show. Yeah, 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 yeah. It it just was so natural, though. Yeah, it, it's been something that was kind of front loaded in the first volumes, and then was like, oh yeah. And I think gone. it was one of those scenes that one of those suggestions that helped uh, move the scene forward. By oh, quite definitely, because they had, they had improvised mm. weapons, and it's like you could see them like be- our characters have ingenuity. They actually like take measures to be like well we have to improvise weapons because we're useless without them right now like the like the food uh, food fight the food fight yeah (laughs) like everybody's using like like swordfish and watermelon and so like the idea of ren like having this ability in his back pocket and being able to pull that out in an emergency is makes him it puts him in a very unique spot in the team because like being unarmed you don't normally walk around heavily armed in in everyday yeah. life, uh, I, I know. you normally don't have your eight foot hammer with you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like twenty four seven. About this image. Oh yeah, this so might be, oh dude, also the fuck you, the the like was it stupid you. caboose? We love our RVV references. Well, there's a big one oh, yeah, later was... in one of the most important episodes. This series of shots. I know we're not doing an art stream, but I love this scene. I animated an avalanche. God damn it! Oh, oh and dude, Saito, yeah. Saito yeah. sold the scene. But Sa- anyway. yeah, Saito hit hard. Oh yeah, I was gonna say D- this is this crazy. Saito is one of our like he audition to be in it along with some other people like judgmental critter i and, hope like, i get in it, it was very wild yeah. it was like a celebrity roundup this volume yeah it it's great. like what youtuber can we snatch up the um i was gonna say one thing i'm disappointed by is that i never managed to fit in the caboose joke because like there's a point where ruby stops and she says damn caboose or stupid, stupid caboose. caboose why are you so far away and i was going to have caboose from rv and b uh, rv and b rvb pop up <laughs> And, like, say something. <laughs> uh, bye, Russell. Uh, see you at the end of the volume. Uh, don't yeah, don't yeah, die. Yeah. Um, <laughs> don't die. Don't do it. But It'll like, be too sad. I, I, just, I, couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't find the right clip to use for... for, oh. for, for, for oh, oh, the arm snap. Yeah, I forgot sorry, about that the shot is snap. so visceral. We, we had to choose very carefully on where to employ Saito, because we knew he was such a big gun, but we didn't want to deploy him right away. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> dude just it's so sick dude <laughs> absolutely the- again another really good use of the environment though because like he it slashes and the the slash carries through into the mountain and causes an avalanche again the the idea of ruby not really using its sets or get engaging with environment in the creative well, they never way. interact with I them think- i think that's the issue the sets and the characters yeah. inhabit two different worlds that are overlaid on top of each other sometimes that's quite literally if you mm. watch the footage it's very interesting yeah like compilation like that's how they render their scenes yeah. out um compos- composite compositing yeah um also, this was inspired by one of the fights in like the the freelancer trilogy. Yes, this it? is a dirt. Um, where they're fighting on a glacier, or like there's oh, yeah. and there's like yeah. these large fissures of ice that are falling school, apart. Yeah. And in fact, there was yeah. more of the fight was lost. Um, cool. Co- Coffee and Jay had a lot of ideas for a lot of different scenes. Yeah, so in volume there, five, there are like times, during there are production. times where I'm like, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm like because they were the ones suggested it, so I wasn't like natural to me to remember some of this detail oh we have a document like we, yeah, yeah, we actually jay, jay and i just end up working we wrote uh, a serious <laughs> chunk of a proto volume like it is just it's not us you will do this kelsey because we don't really have that much control we're just like-minded people yeah. that we have a list of ideas yeah. that'd be congruent with the story and would Mupa, i realize cool. you have neo with her umbrella open in the back what was your decision oh, behind yeah. that 
cute. Uh, I wanted to make it clear she had her umbrella and she was ready to use it, but also she's really fucking tiny <laughs> behind everyone else. Yeah, I was about to be like, it makes her less small in the frame. It's like, oh, wait, that's, there's Neo back there. She's at fucking crow's waist. What am I going to do with her? <laughs> <laughs> she's just so small. What is she, like, 4'11"? Yeah, something? she's like 4'11". She's tiny. She's it just makes you realize that in the show, they really... For some reason, they fuck with height a lot. It feels like because Nora early is on they small. did that. Yeah, I mean that's just an animation. Yeah, so thing. Scaling was a little wonky. Sometimes correct doesn't look right. Um, for, uh, first yeah, implementation yeah. uh, implementation of fights not working between the girls because the time scale of them being yeah. together is actually quite small. What is it? One year we no, we we established. Yeah, yeah. Oh, how long they've been apart? Yeah, they, yeah. They, they've they've only been to, like Team Ruby as an entity only existed about. Eight nine months before the fall of Beacon, I want to say, uh, maybe, maybe ten months if you're really pushing it. Uh, then the vital festival, tur- yeah, the vital festival happens. Everything goes down. Uh, sorry, Yuri was really excited to do this thing. He was mad that I had him change the color. Oh uh, yeah, and, but and it worked. Because <laughs> it's Neo's. Uh, sorry, it's uh, Nora's pink. Yeah. Grenade launcher. And she just catches it one handed like a boss. Yeah. I love how quick this exchange is, too. Like, she, it's so natural they flow into each other, Team Ranger. Oh, yeah. I just noticed Rin's weapon stuffed into freaking Ruby's, like... God, a pants, yeah. Like... Yeah, he was yeah. really... Yeah. He yeah. loved so that feature. Like, he was really... I remember talking to him about it. He was just like, oh, I want them to have all their stuff. And I was like, oh, that's fantastic. You're getting it. And then he was like, that this these two weren't drawn originally. Then on a watch through, Yuri actually, like, heard the script. And he was like, well, I need to do more art. So he did these additional two, like, Ruby gets thrown images, yeah. and like, oh, that sells the scene. Oh, and coming up with the names for these, it's Sugar Drop and Olympus. Uh, sugar Rush, it's, it's, Olympus Drop. Rush and Olympus Drop. Olympus Drop, there The Olympus go. Drop, obviously, uh, reference to Pira back in Volume 2. Fixing Volume 2, where um, they basically codified her springing off of a shield, or someone springing off of a, a Pira shield. Of a shield, that yeah. That was Volume yeah. 1. Though, I think it was visualized differently. I well, think... You know, in, in it, Volume in 2, it was scene. solidified as a move. That was They used it with the Yang in Volume 2. Oh, I see, I see. You mean it's like yeah. in Ruby. Yeah, I was going to say, in this scene, Yuri depicted it as, like, Ruby jumping off Jean's shield, and I think it was supposed to be Nora jumping off Jean's shield because it's Olympus drop. Regardless, and, I mean, oh my like, god, this it did a great job here, Jay. Oh, yeah, yeah. This, this shit's crazy. You made a whole ass <laughs> animation, and then here's Ruki coming in for the last minute. <laughs> I, heart, I, remember, I, I remember talking we had to get this scene much more than my stuff right this this final cut yes to convey to people what would happen yeah. again again problem of animation and how to get cross fades tunnel fades where light should be coming from like the edits. and still people were confused what happened I, like i saw it in the comments 90 <laughs> so yeah. got it right though this is a very interesting episode actually in terms of construction this one is actually worth a topic of itself because it was an experiment that from our end, was a complete failure. The work, I think, in the end was quite good, but what we did was an utter failure. Um, do you mind if I just oh, go yes. through it, or do you want to do it? Or I, I can I can do a quick summary. Basically, we usually assign artists to specific blocks or paragraph scenes that we've cut up beforehand. In this episode, it was so like intertwined and a lot of action that we were like, let's experiment a bit. And so we left the entire episode open to artists just to free grab what they want. And it turns out when you don't give artists structure... Uh, they don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah, so we had five artists sitting in here, like, with with choice paralysis. There was so yeah, much Yeah, everybody to do. was like, I don't know, what do you want to do, yeah. <laughs> basically. And, um, and like, uh, a, lot of, a lot of scenes in this didn't get started working until, like, I want to say a month before the scene was, the, the, the episode went out. Yeah, there's a lot of lead up time also. There's yeah. a lot of lead up time that people don't consider into these episodes. We, we try to give them, I, I, I try to give at least a month of leeway into things. Yeah, obviously. Month, yeah. Especially this volume with how, like, the weekly went. A lot of artists were... I was just kind of like, hey, does anyone want to do, like, last-minute art? You know, I, <laughs> it's a one day before we air. The watch-togethers are the most yeah, important Yeah, only part. crazy people would pick up the assignments, usually. Yeah. So it was pretty fine. Uh, I don't think we had too many cases of people, like, putting too much on them. In fact, we had a couple cases of, like, we're cutting you off. You can't do more <laughs> art. <laughs> we're not letting you do more art. So to wrap up, like... <laughs> but, wait, uh, yeah, click on, you go. I wanted to oh. move on. Oh, well, it was, yeah. <laughs> to I was going to say that. So this fight itself, um, however it was constructed, was an interesting topic. But it's actually a reference again to uh, is it the Volume One Nevermore fight? That one scene yes. just when the drum beat 
no, is it the drum or guitar? Whatever. The tower has just it's been the violins. Uh, has just been destroyed by the Nevermore, and all the girls are jumping up the rubble um, to get back to various platforms. And that's sort of what inspired this idea. And then we just wanted to do a handoff fight where all the characters yeah. are handing off components. Just to show that they, when yeah. instinct kicks in, they are actually an alright team. When they were trying to make things work, it wasn't quite working, which is the sort of dynamic yeah. that we were going for. Yeah, and if anything, it's like they're all working really independently. The only one who's really kind of doing teamworky things is Weiss, <laughs> and she's just trying to hold people down so they don't die. It, it's one of those things <laughs> where, like, internal support. The yeah. the element of this that I was always most fascinated about when it was finally because Coffee and Jay proposed this idea, which was awesome, um, was the idea of environment being the antagonist yes. for the majority of the episode. <laughs> like that's a that's a running theme through this, leading up all the way through Brunswick, is that you know the wilderness is fucking dangerous and a car and a train wreck should not just be oh look it hopped the rails speaking from someone whose state just went through a massive crisis because of a derailed train uh like <laughs> like it just you know very very fresh fresh wound uh but it's like when when massive amounts of material traveling at high speeds happen to get flung off into the great distance it should not be a it should be a and it's just anime as fuck, if I can swear on this. It is just anime. I mean, you, I mean, I know uh, Ruby's not an anime. It kind of is. But the idea that to, to not have an action set piece versus having one, I mean, there's only one option. But also, we just went past it. But uh, the first setup of a very important plot point for Ruby this volume, um, Crescent Rose got absolutely totaled. Who is Ruby without yes. her weapon? And her leg <laughs> gets absolutely yeah, totaled. Well, that too. Well, sex. that hasn't happened yet. Well, she's... So, actually, do we want to talk about... She's straining. Oh, go on. What? No, I said she's straining it already. Like, she's carrying white. She was already yeah, straining yeah. it yeah. before she It's a sort of it. double injury she does, which some of it comes clear, and you can interpret it a different way. There is, like, a really good meaty snap <laughs> when she lands, but... God... I, I just I loved having those on hand. They were very useful. Those snapping noises. Yeah, it's good. It's um, good. But yeah, she basically Ruby here overexerts herself simultaneously with like just the strain of combat simultaneously yeah, with the so harsh she flops landing. the landing strategy yeah. and just fucking <laughs> crushes her leg. Yeah, well, not all of it, but yeah, yeah it, 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 it's it's only it's a good. minor fracture, as Ren will yeah. remind you. <laughs> um, she led to a rewrite. is the one that comes up unscathed. She's a cat. Effectively, she, she's a cat. She lands yeah. on her feet. Yeah, Jay mentioned quietly is a rewrite, because I think originally we had it written as, like, a sprain, and then we're like, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it well, let's, be... let's, make, let's commit to the break. Interestingly, we say it's like uh, a there's, a sec there's a section of this fight which was sort of lost. There was, uh, as uh, Fat Man pointed out, that, yeah, that's the... Um, the, the glacier fight, you know, from uh, from Monty's work. We actually wanted that. Like, they're on a glacier, and you can sort of see remnants of it with them saying to run, and then they sort of just... Well, no, they're on a frozen Yeah, lake. yeah, not glacier. I, Sorry, thank was, you. Yeah. Um, there was going to be a little bit more, like a get off the ice as train debris starts falling, but there was even yeah. limits to how long we could make a long fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was going to um, say, like, like, the... The entire idea with this, and this is where, like, the name Breathless came from, was this is supposed to be one bad thing after another, after another, after another. Like, this is just everything that could go wrong does go wrong, with the exception of people dying. Like, it doesn't hit that point, yeah. but it gets damned close, and everyone feels it, including the audience. And you just, the entire goal here was in some way to make the audience tired. Like, you, you want to be... You, we wanted you to be as exhausted as the characters were in this scenario, but there's a limit to that. It's almost as if, like, when you're making a video game and you're trying to do something, like, thematically where it's not supposed to be fun, like, there is even a limit to that kind of thing. Yeah, where, where, it's like, collect 300 Koroks, even though that one's fine, but it's like, yeah. you, you gotta reel it back yeah, at, some yeah, point, at some when point, it's, like, necessary. At some point, it becomes so not fun that you just don't want to do it anymore we didn't want people tuning mm. out because they were exhausted from this so like we 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 couldn't do the everyone weaving through these crashing train cars uh instead we had to limit it for um the neo and yang almost drowning scene yeah this, this scene was 
I I really liked it for the the inter conflict that Blake kind of goes through. I think initially she's just so worried for Yang, she wants to get her out. That overbearingness that she's displayed in canon, but she has to like snap out of it, or she snaps out of it because Roman like is yelling for Neo that she's like, I need to get out of it. So <laughs> there was someone trapped under the ice. I, I feel like that's kind of interesting um, that like the thing that snapped her out of it is Roman. Because like at the beginning yeah, of the volume, she, she also doesn't get along Roman. with him. She despises the man. Uh-huh. You are responsible for the death of a close personal friend. <laughs> I mean, and that's another. Yeah, it's, it's not. That's another thing that's sort <laughs> of lost, lost in the, the medium. Like a lot of people, a, a few people have said that she gets over Roman pretty quickly. The interesting thing is Blake is a very reserved person like, with the exception of when she lashes out like in a later section, but her way she to deal things yeah, with that, with the way to deal with Roman would to be like to vehemently ignore, ignore him. him. And it's very hard to convey that. Like, and every time that he would speak that we would animate, if we were going to animate like a scowl or a dismissive like gesture, um, very hard to convey. Like, Roll your yeah. eyes. Anytime they don't interact a lot, but anytime they do it, like, interact it's antagonistic or dismissive mm. from either one of them yeah this is uh the beginning of the survival this is base sc- a based alaska confirmation <laughs> <laughs> based alaska but i i can't speak based it. alaska baked uh, you see the thing is i could i could see that as based b-a-s-e-d but i like i think it based as it's the most based something. ship like, ever it's, it's basted like i don't know you're putting like barbecue <laughs> sauce no i <laughs> no like barbecue no, I mean, sauce like, on your ice boosted. cream no uh, that, that super pet <laughs> freaking quill went all out on the fire and then realized he had to draw the rest of <laughs> he the gave up he gave up <laughs> <laughs> but we, we uh, love him he's great he actually did the cover of my yeah, book which great. is available now and you what need to send him a copy of it <laughs> I, I know and I have Michael's it right in front of you. That thank we you Nina Michael <laughs> I'm sorry I did unspeakable things to your, your, your beautiful bike she said it was, she was fine with it she thought it was cool <laughs> um, before we uh, get into the uh, the next two episodes did we want to quickly talk about um like the start of like hypothermia and why that's like uh, like sacrificial layers and what yeah like coffee your idea of yang running hot those kind of ideas. Uh, you sort of envisioned that um well we sort of wanted to do hypothermia right and uh, right in terms yeah. of anime where yeah we tried to take a very like uh, honest approach to it of being like hey you if you can't get out of the cold layers wrap yourself up like hmm. be be towards other people to, to to get their warmth and Yang naturally has like a, a heat semblance kind of the the after effect is like a little bit of fire and wisp so it's like okay she runs warmer and neo is like a 411 uh, <laughs> woman she they need that there needs to be some sort of consensus here or like neo's dying and, and the idea with blake is that she's actually got she's from menagerie it rains a lot which is not the same as warm yeah okay so we it was actually left out the line that her jacket is like water yeah, it, resistant it, it, or like water oil ski. because yeah. the rainstorms in menagerie you know the the giant flooding rainstorms like the wet season Sorry, volume five it's like it, yeah 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 so it's like it, i think that got cut because it was like one of those parentheses kind of notes in the script it's one of those like so big make notes it, that but, like gets like glossed over in a format like this but like i remember very clearly during volume five is like every scene in menagerie it's pouring <laughs> Like, that was a big yeah, yeah. design thing. So, like, the idea that all the jackets in Menagerie for the uniform are are, are water-resistant to some degree. Right, oil skin type Very things. important. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, she, she's not soaked through like the, the other girls are, yeah. especially Neo, who was, like, under the water significant. And we have uh, Ollie over here uh, popping off the, the Roman. This shit was great. It was. I remember we argued very specifically, argue is the wrong word, but we argued very specifically about the phrasing and emphasis on that thing thinks, um, where to put yeah. the emphasis. Yeah, this is this is like... That thing thinks? I, th- I think the best way to phrase the scene is Roman is having an interrogation with Oz. Um, he doesn't even realize he's doing it. And it's all it. internal. <laughs> like, like, like he, 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 he's like, he stumbles upon the way to actually interrogate Oz. Yeah, which do we want to talk about why Roman is a particularly yeah. uh, interesting match as a host? Um, Cause, uh, oh, do we want to talk about that here? I, I will, I will oh, we say- We can hold off. I, I, uh, because there were people actually asking about it. We can say there's it. things about Roman that makes it, makes 
made this scene possible. There are things that not even Roman understands that makes this scene possible. We can put it like that, too. Yeah, yeah. Be esoteric. Why not? Yeah, we, we, be esoteric. It's, it's... It'll be fun. We can, we're allowed to have secrets. And for those who are worried and who may not know, it's, it's, it's not like we're giving him some sort of OC superpower. It's actually quite mild, but it's very specific to Roman, which yeah. is very interesting. I don't, I don't think we even implied adding anything like that to Roman. <laughs> Some people will. I mean, eerie. well, no, I, I imagine like, oh, what makes Roman so special? He's got the sharing gun. Oh my god, Roman's so special. He can overpower us, but I, I can see that. He's got mm. the manga cool sharing gun. Of course, that's what under his oh, eye. Oh god, the cracking noise. Here. Oh god, I, I remember I put that in. Okay, everywhere. so this scene, Aiden has like a very stark tone to like his art and like animations, and I think weren't you worried like it, it would be like a little too much, like the. The scene or the sound effects? Oh, it was. Uh, I don't know if there was any concern. It was like the this. crackling noise. You thought it would be like maybe too comedic or not like good for the tone of the scene. Oh, maybe. it was horrifying. Yeah, it, it, it actually. Well, I think because like I was worried it was going to like carry on too long somehow. I don't know the timing wouldn't be right. I I managed to get it to work, and I'm very happy I did. Yeah, it. it and really it's, it's awesome. This is. I remember comments like blowing up and being like, "Oh God, that's horrifying." <laughs> Like, ed- edging into the body horror of, like, oh, your body's being snatched actively. Yeah. One thing I do notice is, like, I don't know if this is Aiden's thing or if it's, like, our model thing that he uses, but is this hair kind oh, of Oh, that's a glitch. It's in the- yeah, it's green at the roots. Yeah, yeah. It's green so at the that's roots. a hairline? That was a layer that was not removed. <laughs> um, <laughs> Oops. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the Osbin growing on Roman's head. <laughs> exactly. It's the white. It's the white coming in. It starts creeping up this white. <laughs> no, yeah, but it it, ha- it has to do with like the uh, way because we use Vroid to make our models. Oh yes, the so Jake it, Snow comedian. It's, it's the layering. I completely forgot I had. And the rigging. This is an alternate version uh, of hey, Jin's Klon. redesign. We have so Klon many thoughts about Jin as a character. It's kind of insane. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. 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 <laughs> Do we want... Oh, shoot. We had the idea, actually, forever ago in Volume 5. A lot of Volume 6 is just Volume 5. We got really excited. <laughs> it's like, what if we did this? <laughs> and now we have Volume 6 done, and we're all like, eh, Volume 7 can wait. <laughs> oh, dude, we got... We're, we're always too much. You know, we're always thinking, like, three volumes ahead, even though we don't need to. Well, that's because, like, that's... We have to go. We have three volumes to go. No, but theoretically, we could only like we could think just up until volume eight or something. Yeah, no, you know? theoretically, but we're not going to. <laughs> yeah, no, we're all a bunch of creatives. We're just gonna get out of hand. This is gonna be an, uh, an interesting one in a second. There's two things. One is a bit of foreshadowing, but two, a criticism which I don't think is invalid, and it has more to do with how I pose the weapon. This, I think I made Weiss too threatening to Crow that people pointed out. Like <laughs> that's a complaint of the volume six proper that they raise weapons to the to the would be oscar at this point and and crow yeah the i remember yeah. i think this is a, one of those disconnects between script and visual because i think in the script i say they're very un yeah. uncomfort they, they they're not they're not comfortable with any of this. it's a guarding yeah they it should be like yeah. they're just like putting it in front of them so yeah. like they don't pass it's like the equivalent of putting yeah, the arm that, out god there, i love this but, moment with yes. the weapon also, this shot with Roman, I think it was supposed to be a chest yeah. shot, which is a little less visceral than Ruby pointing a gun to his head. But either way, it is uh, foreshadowing for things you know, later. Roman, like, sank into the ground three feet for the gun to be at his head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he sank four feet into the snow <laughs> conveniently. Oh, God, this, this opening gag. This was another big thing that was contentious. Yeah. Because Archie decided she would be it. 16 for some reason. <laughs> We didn't make that uh, choice. That, that, was team, that was on canon. And it's like, okay, well, she looks like a 20-year-old. What the fuck? She, yeah, like, uh, she looks like a grown woman. And in comes Mupa with amazing... Oh, the, the, the uh, image of the, yeah. the, the, the... That's meant to be the mother, isn't it? On top. Yeah, it's a statue of her yeah, mom statue above of her. her bedroom. Yeah, which, nice little, like, environmental storytelling I a little bit. I still yeah. want this elephant plush. <laughs> <laughs> it was really cute. I made multiple really comments, cute. and I don't know how I would ever get it, but I want it. It's so damn cute. Also, the immediate sell of the, the magic barrier. I know someone who sews custom plushies. Maybe I could, like, introduce you to them, and maybe they'd be willing to <laughs> do a commission. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Can we just look at sweet, open, like, bright-eyed Salem? Look at her. She yeah. just wants to go outside. You know, this floats so well together, it almost made me realize we, ha- we we now we need to talk about oh, I <laughs> the know. lost fables. So. Oh, yeah. God. Oh, shit, lore. God damn this it. Was, we can't just gush about the art and story. This was the first thing 
that we tried to tackle. And the lost. Then we stopped in the middle. Lost. And we tried to tackle it again. <laughs> we left it again. And then we came back and tried to tackle it the final time. This was the nightmare of nightmares. <laughs> I thought it would be a simple fix. I thought it would be a nip and tuck. Like, like I didn't think it was that bad. But then we really started digging into it. And oh my god. We had a lot of issues. And it wasn't until we had like a kind of last minute. Because we always had this idea of like. They're kind of stories and being knit together. Because Jay had the idea for the book transition mm. very early on. But it wasn't until we kind of nailed that. Each of these lost fables is going to, each of this part of the story is going to be its own story with its own kind of like Mm -hmm. moral or archetype of story. Like the first one is very clear, like a fairy tale. Should we flat out just say, like, because some people aren't entirely sure, and you can get my corrections on this, that the stories that they are being told are physical stories within the world of Remnant that through time have morphed a bit, so the exact meanings have changed, and they don't link together. No one on Remnant believes the girl in the tower and the, ma- the, 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 the widow in whatever the widow's story is called are the same person. It's just that Ruby yeah. is getting yeah. special yeah. knowledge that they are, but the stories themselves probably are exact representations, because it's been thousands of years longer. The exception being, of course, yeah. Ozymandias, yeah, which Ozymandias. I don't think exists. Yeah, a th- there's, a, there's a deliberate disconnect, because uh, no, at the end of this fairy tale, it's like, oh, he's like, no, 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 you're not, I'm not going to marry you, you're gonna, just going to be my ward until, like, yeah. you can go see the world. And in the following story, it's like, a wife loses her husband, and it's because no, the sec- the, that story is supposed story to be is more... The and the- like the the first story oh, is yeah, because sorry. It's in the third story. We're very story. deliberate with the pro the, the 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 actual nouns that people went by. So in the first one, it, I think it was the hero and the princess, um, or a knight. It was the knight and the princess. Mm-hmm. Second yeah. one, it was the hero. The hero and hero his, and his ward. ward. The second, the third one was then the wife and lover, the, uh, widow and lover, the wife and the, his hus- the, the and lover her husband, and widow. Yeah. That was it, yeah. Which, again, another story with, like, a moral where it's like, okay, don't try to, like, you have to grieve, you know? You have to accept death a little bit. It goes into how we, like, de-age Salem a little bit because, obviously, we wanted to be responsible how we did that. It wasn't just a matter of, like, oh, she should look her age. It was also a matter of that there is something very fragile and innocent about this character being as young as she is going through all of these experiences And you lose that when you don't accurately portray her as that age. And you also lose it if you don't treat her the way she is. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There was a lot of respect we wanted to pay to to Salem in this. Because it's weird that it's framed a lot like it is like what's Oz is hiding and it is his story. But it's also Salem's story. Yeah. Yeah. um, It's also I feel like canon tends to be very uncharitable towards Salem. As, as weird as that yeah. may sound, because she is like the villain and she does the do villain, a lot of awful yeah. things. But in her backstory, she is seen so uncharitably. And even in later iterations in like Ruby fairy tales, it's like, oh, maybe she was lying all the time. It's like, dude, she's come from the most awful situation possible for a human being to grow up in. And you want to cast her down like some bitch? Yeah, like, it's like she's always been evil and manipulative, even when she wrote the letters when she was 16. It's like, excuse Vernal. me. What's great about this, though, that's Vernal. Oh, I love that. I love the planning for the, all nice these touch. different things. Yeah, yeah. Um, but no, the, the we should mention that those earlier iterations of what we wrote, they it was near the very end that we, stumped, like we actually nailed down the Lost Fables plural. Early on, we were writing just straight through, trying to just tell the direct story of what happened. And, yeah. So we actually have, at some point, we actually had like an actual through line of what happened, but it was, it, it felt disjointed and weird, and it didn't feel cohesive. There was no story like, being it, told. There was yeah, a series much like of events. The original story, yeah, a, a lot like the original, like Lost Fables. It feels a bit more expositiony than it it should have been. Yeah, and so like. Also, the the the, cha- the slight change from just generic leaves to a ginkgo tree, I thought was I I, I remember saying it's like it should be a ginkgo tree because it's like wisdom and wealth and, and life and shit. And a tree for... is fucking ancient, like prehistoric as far as yeah like, being existing. Yeah. And the gods. No. Oh, yes. Yes. Hell yeah. The god redesigns are so good. The um, yeah, they are so much better than mannequins. So it was. Yeah. So the, basically, the writing of the lost fables was just nightmarish and when we finally stumbled upon the lost the the multiple storylines we got such a better idea of what to do with them 
Um, this one was was great because like one of the things that I wanted to introduce, we had like a whole scene planned out involving it, but I wanted to introduce the Proto Grim, and we we finally did get it, and I think it came out great. Where, like, really natural, yeah, and, like a really good counterpoint to Oz being brought back mm. to life. The sort of Pandora yeah, like, element to it, the sort of while not her fault, yeah. it is, you know. The idea of Pandora has opened this box. She has done something to the world, not yeah. through her own. Checky breaky. Yeah. <laughs> Liat. Um, but no, the uh, the thing that that got me about it, and the one of the things I like to convey is that these gods, they are incredibly powerful. They're not seemingly all powerful. Um, they they basically, they don't have full control over it. Like, like him bringing Osman back from the dead creates the proto Grim, and he doesn't intend to do that. Like that's an that's a byproduct of like the world violently. They're Greek gods, his not uh, yeah. They're Greek monotheistic gods. gods. Yeah, they're not omnipotent. They're just like very yeah. strong. Yeah, cool people. I guess I don't know. Uh, but um, they're assholes for lack of a better. Term. Yeah, yeah. They're they're very there flawed they and, and interesting in that way. Which there was inklings of that in Ganon, but it, we just like committed to it more. Yeah, I, feel. I did. It also helps that they're less like figures because of their design. They're they're less like yellow and purple, and we did that with the names also instead of like the god of like darkness small detail, or something. Yeah. We went with, like the the god of darkness when he gets angry, like the the cracks between his body start to spurt. Oh, he boils. He boils. Yeah, <laughs> it was something I was very keen on including in his design. Yeah, Just because like it's such a shame that in canon they didn't. They had such blah designs because they're clearly written with distinct personalities, but none of that personality came through in canon. So that yeah. was something that we were very keen on is that in in fixing Ruby, they should their personalities, which are in their characters, should be visually apparent as well. I, I also quite like the uh, interpretation of the god of death is not evil. Um, he is the counterpoint. He, he and he has a valid point about uh, the you know the death cycle. He is as important because to create you have to you have to destroy. That's literally yeah. um, a, a, only creation is stagnant and like horrific. Like a world without death is as bad as yeah. a world without life. I think you brought it up pretty early on. There's like seeds that need to go through like a forest fire to be able to yes. germinate. Yeah. And it's very that cyclical nature of things. Also, well, the yes. art. Fucking that was chef, also mwah. that was also part of why his skin erupts. It was like referencing lava because we talked about how an eruption of lava flow creates like, land. It brings very fertile soil to an area and inc- mm. increases plant growth. Yo, yeah. coffee. Oh God, coffee jump scared. Uh, me. Yeah. Hi, hi, coffee. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> oh my God, it's me. Um, <laughs> no, I just um, wanted. To- very fun to revisit this design. Like- <laughs> um, this is another thing that we sort of, when I did suggest it and we did eventually go for it, it went really good and really sold it. This bringing the girls into the story. I think in the original, the girls are semi-present there, aren't they? Momentarily, is that yeah, correct? they're standing there observing. They're like they're like yeah, they're standing observing. there. Like yeah, ghosts. this sort of the, the 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 creepiness of this that involves the girls, I think, helps connect it to them. The idea that. It also kind of grounds it that they that all of these girls or most of them have read these yes. stories at one point or another. I mean, it would be like learning that Alice and Wonder, like all the stories you've read, are one connected and yeah, all the Grimm stories are connected. Actually, it's the same people, and it's like, no, yeah. what the fuck are you talking about? All, Saito's art here yeah. went hard. Oh. Uh, like he really oh, captured dude, a medieval. It was theater. perfect. Yeah, I couldn't have. I I I had it, ideas. You know, you always have ideas with scripts and stuff. I would turn out this blew it out of the water. It was so creative and like this one is. To so me, the visually. weakest story, not in terms of bad, but it is sold the hardest by the visuals, I think. Yeah. Which, again, it's that weird dichotomy of fixing Ruby where, like, you know, narrative, the, 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 the monologue or the, the me, me speaking is supposed to be distinct from the, the actual images to some degree. This is, this is yeah. one where, this like, I gen. would be hard yeah. pressed to remove the images uh, for some reason, this is what is the most striking image to me. Mm. Like the way they're holding their hands, like the way they're stylized, that that gets yeah. me for some reason. It feels a lot like um, Secret of the Kells, mm, and just the 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 cloak over Salem. There's there's an additive to like Salem's story, like uh, that she has been through like a sort of redemption Before. arc. She went through a redemption she's arc. Had... It went up really bad for her. <laughs> yeah no it's it's because she was a young woman at the time I, I think she probably felt really bad that and she's immortal 
And so she's she's seeing all this shit go down, and and she's trying to do something about it. And it I just had the sudden urge, good. like a lot of her life, it just turns to shit. I wanted to put, I w- no good deed goes unpunished. I want to put a bag of yeah. Cheetos in her hands. It <laughs> 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 just suddenly <laughs> takes the entire context of the scene. Um, and the little halo around her head. God, he went so it's, hard on the gods and their oh, dragon the firmament forms. being depicted like that. Oh, that's amazing. Oh uh, yeah, I, I also I am actually quite fond of, of the word play we did for these stories. We don't talk about like the little words of it, but we were, it was very fun to have different kind of stylings for each of the story and like, yes. bring in little pieces of Andy Ozzy Mandy as a references to other things or being a little esoteric in a way that it can be interpreted a certain we way. We mentioned how at the beginning we wanted every story to feel like you know, the first one sort of a fairy tale or more of a folk tale, possibly if you however you gauge it. But, like, the idea is that, like, as time goes along, more and more it develops into, like, these different types of stylings, I think. Different types of stories, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, just like the general progression of human literary tradition changes throughout the ages. And I'm going to be the first to admit, I don't think I quite pulled that aspect off because I am not the most well-versed in so many different traditions. And I don't believe I could necessarily capture it, but I, I... Older stories. I, 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 Older stories are really hard to read. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But there was a lot of intent. We talked about, like, fables versus, like, fairy tales versus, like, biblical like, yeah, the, stories versus, like, historical accounts. More I'm pretty so. sure that last one was supposed so. to be a biblical parable. It was yeah. supposed to be more biblical. And I really like the wordplay at the end and then that she, like, fell into shadows, which could could imply her character dies. But in her sense, it means she, she literally, you know, fell into she, the grim She went pool. for a swim in the oozy jacuzzi. Yeah. Um, a lot of open-ended terp- interpretation oh, stuff. God, the crying Oh, yeah. Certainly uh, yeah. one of the visual through lines we had, like, part of our, min- our many thoughts with Jin, which we decided to make canon Fruby, was the reference that she was one of the former magi or queens or whatever that the gods apparently didn't quite kill, but had a further purpose Punishment, even. Very Greek in there. Well, you know, everybody has their punishment, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do we want to go so, into that yeah, or save that for the volume eight when they will that comes to play? That's a good question. I, I don't even know. I think that's good enough. I think good, we covered good, good. it. It's like there is there very is actually a little bit more that we're not touching queen. on, but like people can start to infer that, and then we'll touch on it later. I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We got more plans for her, but for now, we just decided. Yeah, she has like a history to her now. She didn't just poof into mm. existence. The relics, yeah. The the relics have more background onto them besides like magic MacGuffin. Um, mm-hmm. I also, I like this. The more and more I think about Osman's reincarnation, now that we introduce like the rules that the gods themselves cannot break the idea that they reincarnate Ospin through possession. Oh, I see is, what you mean. It actually, it kind of, it, it's a much more unique, like it's how they s- skirt the rules. Like, I think we, that that's an accidental stumble upon. Like I was thinking about that the other day and I'm like, huh, we actually, we, we figured that out like just instinctually. Yeah, so it's like against the law of like reincarnation slash immortality. They're like, okay, we learned our lesson the first time. <laughs> can't bring you back from the dead, and it's we can't do a mortal how bad, shit anymore. I feel bad that how fast this style, this this reading goes by because some of Wolf's art here is excellent. And I go, I feel like I cut by it too fast. Well, the masks are beautiful. I couldn't let it linger though. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's always a bit of a compromise, I feel. Or it, it's always a push and pull between the art and the and uh, This the narration. was the hero and the angel. That's what this was. Yeah, yeah, uh, that, yeah. That was the pronouns. Uh, we're, we're, I'm listening to this as a very low audio, so I'm trying to just remember things from, from Rogue. Yeah. Um, yeah, about the same. Yeah, We really need someone to do subtitles. <laughs> uh, like we just need, it, would, it would be great. Not it. God. I love I love this Salem and how she's described like as an angel of the old world. I feel like that's very fitting for her as like she's always depicted in canon as like this demon uh, grim queen. And for someone, it's specifically Oz to see the light in her. I think it's very. And sweet. what's what's important with Salem that we, you know, early on was that I, I know we talked about how she was like she's continuously villainized, but. A lot of it is also her naivety also got people into trouble. Like, she sent out those letters at the very beginning. A lot of people yeah. died trying to get to her. Yeah. Like, she doesn't She doesn't realize she doesn't, early on, she doesn't realize she doesn't have clean hands. And the more time goes on, the more, like, the weight of things pile up. Uh, 
she I, I, I very much It's the dominoes. It, you know, they just keep piling and falling it's down. It's very whatever. important to show that both her and Ozpin, neither of them necessarily have they're not good people. They're not well, not until much later, they're not awful people. It's like neither of them could predict the consequences of their actions. Yeah. Like they weren't wrong for what they wanted to do or how they tried to go about it, but they couldn't have seen all of the ramifications that would come because of it. And when the ramification yeah. came, it suddenly painted them in a lot worse light. Yeah. They're ultimately very similar to the gods and like they're very human. And, and that comes with all the flaws involved with, with humanity. Um, can I say we also if, if, if for people watching there's like a lot of thought put into like who transitioned into who and what the books were named into we tried to one of my favorites up, yeah. is Ty crying at Ruby reading and she's reading like uh, the tale yeah. of two lovers <laughs> this, this, this period in which it's very obvious that summer is gone He's Raven has been long gone and Ty is just really trying to keep it together and he just is, isn't he's just he can't be it's there. also to be said that thematically they're supposed to line up yeah. and also isn't that one of the first hey did you rip off volume nines um, because the the reading of a book at, at night at the ruby house Oh yeah, that. <laughs> yes, no. yes, that was one of the first no. ripped off. Volumes. But we didn't know. It wasn't quite. It wasn't quite the reading of a book that it was like. Oh, you're ripping off Volume Nine. It was the accusation. Oh, you're ripping off Ruby Fairy Tales. And it's like, right? Yeah. What? Yeah. Okay. I I, I have never read or watched Ruby. Fa I've watched exactly one, and that was the awful Faunus one that I am now ignoring <laughs> permanently. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What do you mean? There's oh, two that is, ones. Oh, that was something uh, I remember when we were still talking about how to do the fables and explain the backstory and everything. I had been really hopeful that we could explain the origins of the Faunus, which was never covered in canon. And unfortunately, we weren't able to cover it here. But we do. We did have a lot of theories and ideas about how that could oh, have occurred. Yeah. As well as the oh, rebirth yeah. of humanity. Mm. Yeah, we have we have a lot of deep lore that's just like, okay, this is a kind of background or like where we could go for things. But as the story folded out, it's like, okay, this is very, very much Oz and, and Salem story. Yeah. So we I love the style for this. It's very like, it's a lot of bashing, but in like a very interesting way. There's a lot of texture going on that I like. And it fits very well with like the kind of going too far, the overindulgence that's going on in this arc. This is what the most important element of this particular story is that Ozpin ultimately is the one who created Salem. Yes. Like that's, that's. Yeah. He's the one who's like, Hey, we should invade lands. We should conquer these lands. And then he gave, he, he gave her the his... taste for conquest. Yeah. Yeah. And she, and she was hesitant and you see that in the art and then you see it later flipped where she's like, shouldn't we get these lands for our kids to like, rule and he's the one who's hesitant um also that the added detail of him aging aging is is one i like oh yeah that was written in I the think script he actually, that he, he, he flipped would... uh faces he too, comes back in a different uh, person yeah yeah the... yeah 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 in a past where it's like he goes to a war he dies comes back as a different man so that that was a thing that this is happening over a long period of time yeah it's kind of like it's starting to feed more and more to like where salem in my opinion, how I see her character, she because she begins to overcompensate for everything she went through. She's like, I've lost so much. I deserve yes. everything. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so little, but so much. <laughs> also, can I say, Lumi goes oh, probably maybe a little too intense on that. The uh, Salem's angry face. I don't know. I think it's, I think I think it's where... fitting. I mean, she literally stomps her foot and the tower collapses. I do think it's it's kind of more reminiscent of her geist form than like yeah. how she normally her, looks. Yeah, yeah, her. But her and the in universe it, um, re, like uh, version of that, which where it's not Salem, it's the yeah, the. It's yeah, the storytelling. It would be of the about a, like a, 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 a you know uh, not specifically a woman, but a woman wanting too much, you know, you know that kind of thing, you know. So her having a tantrum mm -hmm. uh, of you know epic proportions, like it's very very fable like to stamp your foot and the tower comes down, you know that kind of thing. Yeah, I was gonna say. Oh, I forgot to mention. I really love the yes. music for that part. It's just like so epic. With it's the oh beautiful. yeah, God, the, the, there were some. I, I'm very happy with a lot of my music choices this this year. Um, I got such a more oh. plurality of songs to choose from. Yeah, I just of thought, I was going to say. Also, re 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 I just <laughs> thought of a really good parallel for this one that expands on the thing that about Roman that we're not going to be talking about very much. His story is not a story; it is incredibly factual. 
it's barely a story. It's almost like if he was reading oh, it. Oh, yeah. If he's reading it, oh, it would just be him yeah. reading it. <laughs> I, uh, interesting. That's fun. All right. But that's fun. Uh, I was going to say, like, the, the, <laughs> the, the lineup with the different <laughs> characters um, and what they're reading is, you know, thematically important to them. I never really explained it necessarily, but like, obviously, Roman and reading Ozpin's straight up story, very important for Ozpin. But you go for Os- for, sorry, for Roman, but you go to mm-hmm. Crow, and the story he's reading is all about how Ozpin ended up creating Salem. And it's like, oh, the guy I've been working for created this problem to begin with. It's a moment of cold water for, for, for Crow, and it's the reason he's disillusioned by the end. Um, you've got. Uh, was it Yang that was reading the one where he died? Where Ozpin died? Yeah, Yang was the one that was reading when, when Ozpin died. Yeah, she read so the second book of the hero and award. The idea of abandonment in the, in the being ward. thick. Um, with that one. You have uh, Neo lined up with the one we're learning how to... to the first one. Yeah, yeah, because it's it's so much strong parallels of like... Ro- like Ro- Oz being the one to to save... Salem in the same way that Roman ends up saving Neo off the streets. It's yeah. like a very interest. It's like a very transparent way that they are similar. Yeah, you get, get that line. and that we've shown, and that wasn't like so screaming loud at you. But if you look back, it's like, oh, that is direct. What ha- that is like directly a, a direct parallel between their characters. Brief thing on the Oscar because we just saw him pass by. Uh, people were confused his relation, and I don't know how you could be when certain things get mentioned at different parts. But I, I guess yeah. people didn't put it together. Uh, he is uh, former Ozpin's son. He is Magnus Reinhardt's son. So Oscar Reinhardt. Um, yeah, and, and Hazel's, Hazel's nephew, nephew, obviously. Yeah, we decided to have that cameo for him. And then we also have some plans in the future with him. Yeah, initially. Which we won't get into but here. Full yeah. dis- uh, but full disclosure, he was, he, he was supposed to have uh, basically died. And... That was going to be the end of Oscar. It was going to be a cameo. He ultimately ended dead. Uh, we have more plans now in the future for how... We're yeah. a bit flexible. You know, yeah, we changed though, our mind. So don't, don't get too committed to anything that he's like, secret, he's at Lee alive, and he's going to show up in the island of Volume 9, and he's going to do shit. And just be like, just, you know, just let the story yeah. unfold. Um, uh, it's about here. Because a lot of times we're not even quite sure until we get Drawing there. Ruby standing. We, we have overarching plans. Be, uh, oh, that, yeah. Consistency was a very... I mean, just from a right... Since we're talking about... The, Conveying so many intricate things on a, on a free project is quite hard. Um, I mean, we, you... yeah, getting people to make Ruby not stand <laughs> all the time. Uh, oh my God, Maria's entrance! This was Maria was really fun to write, oh. <laughs> and I am glad we kept her so as we did. Thematically, I think she is a much stronger character. Um, it, for what should we do with her, we lose the famous talk scene, sort of. We lose the famous talk scene. We'll get to that. We'll get to but that. But she is a stronger deliverer of information, narrative, and just a heart to the season that I think was was missing. Not that she's like Marie is the key. She's a funnier character than we've ever had before. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I threw out my back. I got, I'm going to miss doing her voice. Oh, oh, I, I want to I wanna talk a bit about, because uh, I didn't get to talk about it in the moment, it's Ruby making the decision to cut the train, because a lot of people were wondering why, or like, why she, do, uh, why she did that, and I think there's a lot of room for interpretation, but one of my favorites is like, she, it's, it's a, a thing about trust. Like, she trusts Team Ruby to get through this, or she trusts Team Juniper to handle um, you know, the rest, rest of the train, because they still have to get to Argus. Um and I like how in the moment you can think, oh, Ruby's sticking with her team. But I think in writing it, I think in my, uh, like, when I was feeling it, it's like, she's t- she's at- Ruby's actually trusting her team. She's trusting Team Ranger to follow yes. through without her. Yeah. And it's more so, you can interpret it as, like, trust more towards one team or another. But I think uh, a very valid one, in which I like and lean towards, is she is trusting Ranger more. She She doesn't feel like she can leave Team Ruby alone. Like, she needs to be there. Versus, like, she can trust Team Juniper to carry And it's through. one of the things that yeah. we wanted to specifically uh, set up as a theme. We sort of waxed away from it um, a bit. But the idea of 
uh, placing trust, whether it's in the right or wrong place, is something that happens a lot, specifically with Ruby, this this volume. It's, and that will infer what she does in future volumes, yeah. but it's uh, it's how she interacts her trust with others um, and what mm-hmm. she learns from that. Yeah, yeah, which was already a little present yes. in the canon volume, but we again the fixing more emphasis. Also, more, more. Hi, um, hi, hi, uh, Sky. Hi, Dove. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 hi. Also, um, some nice world building lines here. I liked really a lot. Cord- cord- uh, like Carden being like, "We don't have enough people," but I put in the report. <laughs> uh, it's a reminder that these things got structure, and they're just kind of like live in it yeah, a little they, bit they, they're, there are rules that people need to abide by also oh my god I just realized yeah. the detail in this scene that I never picked up on but the little mural in the background that Evie did where it's the the two different Atlas, the Atlas and, and uh, Mistral symbols combining I, symbols, yeah. I never picked up on well, that we also have some deep lore about the train and like the Argus like the city itself the the uh, me and Jay hashed out oh, why the train exists oh yeah it's a sort of um, CCT style yeah uh, Post, oh, it was a post-war, post-war project, you know, to connect the 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 Pretty literal the colony, inroads. or the, mm. the kingdoms. Ah, here we are. Cinder, remember Cinder. her? That was Cinder. Or is this Cinder? This is the yeah. This is, is Fat Man. This is one of your least favorite episodes, isn't it? Oh yeah, this is one of the ones. Like uh, these these last three um, were probably the ones I had the biggest uh, uh, suggestions for. Because for the for the lost fables, I was gonna say to like you know break them up and put them at the start of like every subsequent episode, so that they weren't like all at once and it was just kind mm, of like spread out Ooh. over a, yeah. a volume. Yeah, and so that when you got to the to the gin, it was like oh oh those were those were the past. That was something that was actually happening, and and uh, that was just one of the suggestions. But then this one, it was just like. No, I don't like this one. <laughs> <laughs> this one just messes with the pacing, and it's in a weird place. And like, yeah, I know people like the pure scene, but it's just like ah, uh, um, because knowing like what we're leading up to with the um, with the apathy, and basically having like the whole plot like slow down into like into you know this basically getting like ground up be- behind these uh like grim that suck away all of your will to have forward momentum. I just think like slowing down the pacing prior to that doesn't, isn't like, you know, as conducive. There's less contrast yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you mean. Yeah. Um, but yeah. 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 I, I, I remember that. That was, that was a point of contention. And to be fair, placing, yeah, we also fussed around with the episode. Placing order. <laughs> this episode was difficult. I remember that being a struggle in itself. Um, Center continues to be a pickle. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think uh, <laughs> I, I think we really did hit a good story with Cinder this volume, but we did struggle on where to put it, um, finding the right gap. Yeah, because it was supposed to be in volume five. Like that's why we put it here is because it was meant to be covered in volume five or six. The same way how Maria was supposed to be introduced earlier. Yeah, we, we hit the exact um, same struggle that they did in in their production. Like, it, we were, we're suffering some of the same production woes. Uh, I hope that's not a trend that continues. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, green light six in volume 10. <laughs> get, it, get it trending early, all right? Bro. Please do. Now, um... Uh, Luby's backgrounds. I, I, God, I, I was so tempted to tell him to cover things up, but it's a strip <laughs> club. I don't. It, they, they, yeah. This is what pisses me off about Ruby is that Ruby. It's classy. I, I get that Ruby has a, <laughs> a skews a little bit younger than than RVB, but it's not so much younger that I don't think that you can get away with some adult. Well, the things. Yellow Trail has. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Shonen do that. Everyone like Shonen do that all the time, where it's just like, ha, ah, we're in this age bracket, and then they pull some weird, fucked yeah. up shit. You know, they say it's like actually less, those, those were experimented children. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, they, they. You're allowed to like pull pull at the like rating a bit more and be like, hey, give a little for like certain scenes, especially as you go on. And to know? be fair, yeah. Although that is like the hottest background character. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's the name lemon they lemon. all have names for people who don't know yeah. they all have they all have yeah. is, that, yeah. is that a reference if, if you to, um, if you see a Liubi scene 
if you ever see a Luby scene, all the background characters have names. They have personalities. <laughs> they have lives. Because Luby, again, is the crazy they one. They file taxes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's really so into Super members. Sentai shit, so also all the designs are based off of, like, Sentai characters. <laughs> There's yeah, actually um, yeah. a lot going on with this scene before we get to Malachite, before Mooper gets to talk about Malachite. Um, uh, that one, uh, Little Miss, came out southern, no matter how hard we tried. <laughs> Oh my god, that was nightmarish. Like, like I, you can hear it in my delivery. I try to like measure it out to not be southern, but even that, like, it bleeds through. It co- the yeah, twang yeah. comes in. She, every would, once she while. would have an Osaka dialect, I think. Yeah, yeah. which is Japanese southern, Loki. <laughs> I mean, yeah. also there, lots of places that those are the vibes. There was also a. She's like a little bit Yankee, you know, like just a little bit. And there's a missing thing, which may appear again, probably not, but there were grim, uh, sorry, there were white fang masks hanging off the side of the table. Yeah, they should be in the scene. Hey, yeah, yeah. Off, yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, they they got to pick them off of their territory. The cleanup in yeah. Mistral, isn't it? It's, they're, they're still cleaning up. The underworld is actually still cleaning up, because later we see, like, the police identifying people and shit. But Mupa like, is happy the underworld because got some Little Miss gets her hookah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, She's that was a, using it. I was so annoyed when you wrote about her smoking a cigarette and I made a comment about it. Oh, but, but she could actually be smoking this hookah thing. Because, like, I don't know, I just feel like it's cool if different characters, like, do the same activity in different ways. And I thought, like, Little Miss, she's very elegant. She has a lot of money. She can afford a big fancy She was hookah. actually supposed to have a pipe also for the cigarette to yeah, make it, like, have a, a cigarette more than just like holding a-, a cigarette. But again, things get <laughs> yeah. lost in the script. A yeah. pipe, a cigarette, <laughs> and a hookah. <laughs> No, the, the, right? You know those pipe holders for cigarettes? No, yeah, yeah, it's, well, like it's, like it's, it's one of those thing. like femme fatale yeah, things yeah. you always see. Mm. Um, oh, and that's not the scene. I'm mistaken. That's not the scene that Mupu... Yeah, yeah, yeah no. Amalekai comes in the, like episode Look, 19. I'm man. Stupid. Later. Yeah, 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 she's yeah. way later. They're really spread out. Is <laughs> all Mart? All Mart? Was that Sino that said he wanted to do All Mart? Or was that... I think that was Sino. Sino was the one that threw threw All Mart. It might have been Sino. As, as like as a, a reference, reference. Like, and yeah. it just it, I gave it to Vexar, and she just did magic with it. I love it so much. Yeah. Oh, here's here's one point in the in the script that I wish people held me back because there's a little too much coffeeisms in Nora. Like the I've never been wrong a day in my life is passable, but there's like a tie like in the early episodes <laughs> she says wah, and I'm like she she could have just said what. <laughs> We need to, say, we need to, you know, I need to prune a little no, bit. No, no, no. I, 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 don't, I don't mind that as much because, like, I, I, I love working on a writing team at this rate. Uh, I think it's a lot of fun because it helps you, like, everyone has their own personal quirks, especially when they speak. Like, I notice that when I write characters, I'm like, this, these all these characters write and sound the same. And you kind of want to beat that out. When you have multiple voices in the writing room, while it can get chaotic... It really helps you flesh out other characters because suddenly you can get different parts of same uh, of different people in one character. Yeah, I, I think it was a big. You, you mentioned. I remember you said it's like I feel like we each catch like a different aspect of Ruby, yes. and the sh- and Ruby becomes more like Ruby because of that. Uh, shout out uh, to the Canberra War Memorial uh, for <laughs> uh, changing this whole uh, layout on what this scene was and why it's constructed. One the way- of the first things. Yeah, one of the first things, another the, the idea statue from had five. to go. The statue was absolutely it's stupid disgusting. From every for conceptual angle. Pira's own story. <laughs> Her story is not what. Yeah, yeah. Thematically, it, it's not. It's yeah. really not okay. Girl didn't want to be put up on a pedestal, Ooh. and it, it, it's like display it as a very sweet moment in canon, and it's it shouldn't hmm. have been. Really. Yeah, and like I, I think this change helps make it just absolutely way more balanced out. Yeah, it, it's a bittersweetness. It, it, it's a reminder, but it's also the weight of that reminder, like the fall of week in itself. I know I know we ran the numbers. Yeah, we even, actually, like, we uh, tried to calculate, like, what the rough per capita of the world of Remnant was. And, like, since we wanted to equate it to a grand-scale disaster, uh, and the most easily referenced in modern history is 9-11, we ran some numbers involving that, you know, what is the exact number of people that died during its event, and we came up with a couple of hundred, I think, from Argus. Just Argus. Yeah. I, I forget the number. I, th- I don't think it exceeded 400. Yeah, it wasn't but it, it, We did, like, have bracket numbers. It wasn't, like, specific a data analyst. It was just, like, rough. So we had an The idea only person that would know the exact the number is Redlock, who, when he drew that memorial, drew every single individual. He's name. mad. 
<laughs> Bro. <laughs> Bro. It's interesting how um, you can let law uh, expand. That we figured out from the implications of what we've written here is within the next five to ten years, there will be a massive uh, hunter shortage throughout the world because a large percentage of students in training just got died. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and not to mention the entire shit going on with uh, Lionheart mm-hmm. in Mistral yeah. within that single academy after the fall. Um, we also haven't commented great. that we just decided to take the bull by the horns and be like, screw having a mysterious woman walk up and not explain herself. This is Helen. This is Helen Nikos, and she knows Team she's, Juniper. She she's Pyrrha's she's Pyrrha's mom. mom. Yeah. Pyrrha would have regular contact, regular photos back and forth. That becomes a whole thing where we're talking about like, yeah, no, Pyrrha would have totally told her entire family. Like, man, these are my friends. I am so excited to yeah, have even, friends. <laughs> even in the comment, like, sorry, even in the credit, they they just have her as mysterious woman, and I'm like, why not? canonize her she she also just like vanishes when john turns around oh, yeah, she, so it's so like they're, really they're, like, weirly implying that it's a ghost of meeting of Pura, her but I, I think it would look more like pura than it does yeah <laughs> and it's just it's weird because it's it uh, there's so much of canon that like eschews like ren and nora like it, it ignores them in their mourning process about pura which doesn't sit well th- with me and like a lot of other people it, it's it's like no just have her meet Mi- pura's mom mm-hmm. Well, they're hard. inconvenient Especially characters to the writing staff. They are. They really are. And also, we have to write a story <laughs> for these two characters. <laughs> the um, yeah, I was going to say about that. The 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 Nora grieving process was a huge focus. Um, ever since, I I fully admit that I kind of flubbed a little bit early, well, a lot early on with how I introduced it in volume three and didn't really build it as. Because it was introduced to me between doing volume two and three by Fatman. Fatman was the one that recommended that Nora have this sort of grinding point with Pyrrha. And I, it, it didn't, it wasn't his exact suggestion. It was, I, I changed it up. Um, but I remember it very distinctly. Yeah. And I, I don't think I implemented it the most smoothly. It came kind of out of nowhere, kind of blew up out of nowhere, which honestly feels the most like early Ruby where a plot point kind of comes out of nowhere. <laughs> But uh, the idea was, I'm not going to just go back and retcon it. I'm not going to do anything like that. Instead, I'm just going to move forward with it and try to do even better by the point. And so volume four, (laughs) I keep hinting at it. Volume five, keep hinting at it. Volume six, finally, Nora gets the emotional release episode. And that's going to be a great thing to talk about later on. Um, Tiny hand. Oh, Ruby's missing her cowl here. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. That's, that's another thing that we're missing occasionally in this. Yeah, because we said she doesn't have her cape because she gave it to Yang and But Neo, she has a removal cape people, from her cowl. Like yeah, it's part of the it detaches. That's different from the cowl. <laughs> so the people were like, "She no no red? No red thingy? And she, it's like, oh, well, no, like a... wait, wait. <laughs> she looks like a maid. Like a maid. <laughs> <laughs> Which, hey, yeah. not averse to... Uh... <laughs> Kind of new er- errors, you know. They, they I, I love how how plush uh, the the frills. The shawl it's super looks. plush. The shawl looks so soft. Yeah, yeah. Um, very luxurious, like daisies. <laughs> like daisies. Uh. uh. This was, I I when I stroke upon the idea that he see forever fall in this, like the direct him directly paralleling this event with Blake fleeing from him. Uh, it was great. Yeah, another train cut. By Ruby this time, but, you know. Are, are we really recording this on the 10th oh anniversary? Oh my god, we are. are. Oh my god, are yeah. we? Oh my yeah, god. we are. Wait, yeah, I think why we are. did we date this? We did not intend that. <laughs> Suck on that. <laughs> this is one of the most really lovely scenes for the conversation and the art, but this is one of the worst wrong outfit videos, uh, sections. Both oh my god. Ruby, there Ruby's are actually- cloak. Oh, there yeah. are parts... <laughs> Oh my yeah, god, this is Blake Blake was in her beast f- f- four outfit. Um, Bumblebee. I think Weiss's shawl was missing. Bumblebee was I I I remember like there are actually parts in here that I have I had to cobble together in Photoshop from different images. Completely out of the artists. Yeah. We didn't catch it early enough. No yeah. Oh, yeah. Also it, it saved like a uh, her time. Like she didn't have to draw the same thing on the same character twice because you could edit on top yeah, of yeah. it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but this entire scene where Team Ruby are 
are talking about the the they're 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 kind of all being worn down by the elements again making the the environment a character making the environment an antagonist is just so so key to this and these characters just trying to figure out how the hell do we get these people who are freezing to death to safety very important yeah yeah uh, I, I like the the bit of escapism here. I, I remember thinking like this is a really interesting scene for Team Ruby because they kind of it, it's a thing that they kind of have to let go over the past and make something new, like all of them low key. But it, it it's them kind of indulging in what could have been and kind of mourning that to a, a degree, not really knowing that they're doing that, but they're talking. Yeah, about and it's, it, there's and also being nostalgic for something that. We're kind of dropping in a little bit of nostalgia here and uh, not nostalgia, uh, not bring, sorry, foreshadowing. Opposite of nostalgia, foreshadowing. Um, <laughs> dropping a little bit of foreshadowing here, where they're talking about the beach, which will happen <laughs> later in episode seventeen. That, that was episode. definitely a thought there. It's like you can see that Ruby has it on the mind uh, when she's doing her thing here. Uh, but it's also a bit yeah. of a reference to um, Ruby the session, which I bring up. Uh, periodically in, in, in arguments about official Ruby content where it's like the only official images we have of Team Ruby in swimsuits. Uh, yeah, so Ruby the Session was a Japanese light novel. only light novel that released and it, I think it takes place volume 2, volume 1 era in between or during, something, something like, like that. that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a beach episode. Also, Roman's in it, strangely. <laughs> oh, really? I didn't know that. <laughs> Yeah, Roman's in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's, it's, it's some crime I subplot want, I want or whatever. Roman but... in swim trunks. It'd be hilarious. <laughs> no, he isn't in the. He's just like doing. He's like under a street lamp or whatever. He's Lame. not in a swimsuit. Lame. What is it with with Ruby? Like, come on, you guys can do more interesting things with Ruby. No man service. Ruby equal opportunity man. Service. Can we all uh, laugh at the for absolutely for terrible uh, Yang joke of high beam? <laughs> high beam. <laughs> God. I think that might. I think that was something I just said yes, when I was tired because we did these the, the writing sessions. When I say late night, I mean like late night, like one a.m. to three. Oh, no, we would go like and there were times we went regularly to like six. It's a. perfectly um, adequate for me. Yeah, yeah, because it's it's yeah. Jay is Australian, so <laughs> fuck off. Um, and then no, Roman is like a night owl, and I'm trying to like when it's writing just season, I'm just like Raymond okay, Roman. my sleep schedule is to the wind. Goodbye. <laughs> I, I will just live in the night for a little bit and be fucked up. <laughs> um, uh, moment of contention here. Roman Roman grinding with the crew because he doesn't think anyone's taking it seriously. Uh, yeah. And if everyone's on their last legs. Everyone's pissed. It's Everyone's tired. And strangely, him and like Maria low-key like, agreeing on that one point about like focusing up I and love shit. That. Like, that was an interesting, like, dichotomy of, like, Crow trying to get along with Maria, not working out, he drinks. <laughs> Roman saying something, Maria agreeing. Yeah. It, it was just, like, interesting character dynamic stuff. I love the vulnerability that comes across with the very subtle, like, and her hair changes back to the, uh, to Neo, of course. Um, yeah. I, I don't know, yeah. I like... I li- Another continuity dr- d- d- fucking thing that has to yeah. be Oh, God, for. oh, no, <laughs> let's not talk about that. Black and white... Yeah, yeah. So it was established what in like volume two or three uh, that like, she's four. sick. She can't keep up the the illusion. Yeah, it, it was volume four. And so it happened subtly in the, the background. Jane Doe arc, and then, um, mm. which I, is basically how I refer to it at all times. Like it's her Jane Doe appearance. Does she naturally have heterochromia still? Uh, no, brown eyes. Brown eyes, right? No. Uh, I, I, I like that because like the idea that Neo went from being this nothing special about her street rat Roman saw something in her and she is now she embraces that she is something special she makes herself something she special she was literally plain Jane. Jane she was literally plain Jane and now she is now now she is Neo Neapolitan, Neapolitan. Yeah. she is the delicious cold treat when we were writing this, did the books, the Roman Holiday book, no. come out, or was it about to come uh, out? Or mm, had it come out by that point? I feel like uh, it might have yes, been. Yes, because out by remember then? the last thing you were reading with someone, and that was that, and then you stopped, and that was right, still. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we didn't. It, it didn't matter at this point. We no. had their whole backstory plotted out anyway. So yeah. Uh, also, no books. No, I don't no, like the no books. books. <laughs> the first book is okay. That's the best I can say. Second book, 
not so I'll open. give you that. It's coffee details, and I don't mind the details that they bring up but, about coffee. But then they ruin Team Team Sun. They've ruined Sun in the yeah. sequel. It's terrible. This was also going to become a point of contention. It starts out small here, but I think a lot of people clocked it pretty early on. The questionable relationship that Adam's mother had with the, their landlord. Yes. yes. Uh, it was one of those things that, like, Adam has a lot of issues on his plate and i it's one of those things that you have to handle very very tactfully uh we'll we'll get to it more but like we just seeding it early on in fact we were i was seeding this plot line back in volume four um with adam sitting at the table talking to uh hazel and getting a letter basically hazel did some digging for him and found out information on his mother who passed away and Adam has some choice words about his mother that reveal a very unhealthy mindset about how things played out. Um, Adam, you, if, if you yeah. read into it, Adam, Adam is just a man that just never had a healthy day in his life, it seems. Yeah, also very similar to Salem and not had. Yes. So it's not very I, good. Also, let's let's say, actually, this, this, this Grim, Grim shit, this arc, the mimic. Yes. The mimic referenced the, is yes. first referenced here. That actually, window shot. no one has ever actually pointed it out. But um, in this shot, uh, there's a shot through the window that Luby does, and it's the mimic looking out into Roman getting into. What's interesting? Brunswick he Farms. gave me both versions of that. He actually gave me a clean one that didn't have it from a window. Yeah, it was a last minute I, suggestion I chose for the me. I just said, "Hey, what about yeah. this?" He went, "Oh, okay." So he he said yeah. he had it done, so he just did it again. Hmm. Also, I like the the subtlety. Well, not too much subtlety because we're saying it out loud. But him striding in with confidence and knowing mm. where he's going. Yeah. A lot of people, uh, as, as we get time. into this arc and we find out that this is the Brunswick house, this is where he's from. Though audiences already know, a lot of people pointed out like he, he didn't specifically address it, or Ruby didn't talk about it. I mean, like uh, the t- those two characters who know what this place is would be very personal about it. Like they don't. Roman's not going to go. All right, guys, by the fire. I need to tell you. This is where I saw my family die. Cowabunga. Uh, yeah. Cowabunga. yeah, he's not going to have a tearjerker about it. Um, and everybody's going to pat him on the back because yeah, he I was shared. Say, Roman like, came to peace happening. with this place. He, he had already kind of, like, he has a piece about it. And it's being challenged, but it's not something he's, he's internalizing it. Yeah. He's not going to talk to anyone yeah, else he, about it. Maybe he talked to Neo, but Neo's on death's door. So. Yeah, yeah. She's passed out from us. So sorry. Um... Which in itself like lends itself to a lot of the dyna- dynamics at play with like Yang and, and Blake. I, I remember there 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 are certain people that uh, were like, oh, the the Roman arc is all about the, the the Brunswick arc is all about Roman. And I actually watching back through these, Roman appears in very little of this arc. It is yeah. He he has a little thread because he's connected yeah. here, but it's not. Yeah, it, a Roman is the R in Ruby. Yeah, he, <laughs> Unironically, because I mean, we kind of already gave Roman a ton of focus in Volume Four regarding this place. Yeah, yeah. So. we already got his backstory. What more is there to say? Um, c- can I say one of my favorite moments about this scene, uh, which speaks to age and experience, is Maria pointing out to Ruby when Ruby says, "Yang, you go out to the garage to, to like put Bumblebee away," and Yang is like nearly about to pass out. It's just like the the. They're in a very stressful cir- circumstance, but Ruby is still inexperienced and young and didn't take in the or notice the condition of Yang. So it's Maria telling her, or like, I don't think if she, I don't know if she grabs her hands or taps her on and the back, like, but it's just like, not. hey, take a breather. You yeah. got this. Yeah, it, yeah, it's a very experienced kind of mentorly kind of person to do, like thing to do, which one I thing, enjoy. It, it conveys a lot of age. One thing I her. did want to call back to, and I, I think Yuri would be pissed if I didn't mention, although he might want to mention it in his own. Um, he's very. He was the one that did a lot of art for the 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 Brunswick arc back in Volume Four, and his scene of yeah. putting uh, of Roman putting Neo down on the couch is a direct callback to an image that he did with uh, Roman and Aventine back during the. Yeah, he did it in a similar style yeah, too, like because he, he did charcoal. that in charcoal. Yeah. I just want to comment that I very specifically pointed out that they need to have their originally the scene talked about them facing the fire front wise. And I pointed out to Celtic, no, no, if you've got hypothermia, you want to face your back to a fire because it's your back that absorbs yeah. the most heat. Yeah. It, it, uh, I, I'm i a Boy Scout. I, I was a Boy Scout for years. I didn't even know that 
and I feel I feel ashamed. <laughs> no, don't be ashamed. I read about it in Golden Collie. <laughs> yeah. Hey yo, Golden Collie. <laughs> Uh, the detail in this scene also is lovely that everybody has their stuff up. The people who were Again, submerged Ruby, in water. Again, just crazy are... He just yeah, absolutely yeah, yeah. went ham. I, I didn't even realize there were socks yeah, in that yeah. scene. There were socks on the yeah. side there. Uh, yeah, it's, it's also completely modeled in Blender, the scene. I, I later got it. Uh, and I, I, I cleaned up this room for some reason. I'm not sure if I ended up using for some it, reason, I, I have this For set. some reason, I remember this struggling to load the transitions where characters are fading in and out in my editor i don't know why um i just thought it was kind of a weird thing because like every it's just fades like fades happen all the time well f- uh, probably like a lot of value because of the shading on the 3d probably. you pass through a lot of colors and then there's nothing for me up there red like that's 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 it's, Roman yep. just being like, look, I don't want to fucking be here. I'm just going to sit here and like try not to think about what's going on. Also, can I say you? It's, I think we mentioned it before, but the color transition, like the the artists paired for this this episode of Brunswick, really floating to each other really well. Ah, there it um, is. God, so creepy. Which made it, which made it very imperative that we kept uh com- continuity with some things like Ruby. Yeah, this is this, <laughs> I I am. So many people had that moment in the next episode when they were commenting, like, wait a minute. And we were all like, yep. The oh shit. Yeah. Like in the moment in the premieres, it was like, oh, that's sweet. Ruby wants to check in on him. And then it's like Ruby leaves and then Ruby upstairs. It's like, oh, yeah, of course, that's not the same Ruby. (laughs) Yeah. The timing Um, was intentionally inconsistent. (laughs) Yeah. 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 And here's here's a little. Oh, God. This was uh, some people. Like when they cut through the dots on this one, some of their reactions were just priceless. Yeah, they the, very sad. It's just the room has been caved look, the in. Blake, the backpacks the are Blake still there. The Blake battery arc was real. <laughs> that was a coffeeism, and I love it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's the it, you know you set something up, you gotta pay off Chekhov's a little batteries. later, even if it's now, small. This is a uh, not a yeah, point yeah. of contention, but a point of discussion for some people. It's just like, damn, Ruby's like a cold-hearted monster. It's not really what's going on. She just. She, well, you want to talk about Ruby's mindset, Celtic? You were sort of pretty. She's a lot. She's a lot more mature than people like make her pretend. Like, like it, this yeah. is where I diverge a lot from Canon because Canon has made her out to be like this naive, bumbling idiot. Yeah, they're they're like naive means sweet, innocent baby girl. She, she, she know nothing. I, I, I draw the difference of she's not naive. She's innocent. Where she she's she's optimistic. She has this this lively, youthful energy to her. And it's not naive. Like, she's informed. Naivety informs, like, an, uh, implies a level of ignorance, a level of, like, inability to see the world around you. Where I think innocent is a little more, is a little less, it's a little more personality based than anything. It's word interpretation, yeah. but generally, like, R- Ruby, this isn't like some weird Ruby's a cold hearted bitch, or it, even so much of, like, oh, the apathy has already taken her, because it's. Yeah. She's just generally tired from everything. Well, I also um, like to imagine it has to do with, like, the things Ruby has already experienced. I think if Yang yeah. had been there and had seen the corpses as well, she would have reacted in a similar way to Ruby. Because they both already know what it's like for a parent to die. And that's pretty extreme on the scale of grief trauma yeah. experiences. Well, the, the th- Also, shout out to that mauled body that Roman <laughs> and her <laughs> investigated last the- volume. Yep. Yeah, but like on top of that, like oh. one of the things that I I do draw from is that Ruby is much more into the hero fantasy for better or about worse. the more real edge, the, the real edges of the, the hero fantasy. Should I say she's not she's not just like the, the what everyone when you say you picture a hero, you say like this golden Superman figure on top of a hill. No, she she's actually more of like referring to like the Batman type, where it's like there are some dark things that heroes come across. Like she she. She's a little, she's more, a little realistic more realistic about, about the nature of what it means to be a Grounded, hero. It doesn't mean she she's 100% aligned with it. There are still times where it catches her off guard what it means to be in the position she's in and the hard choices she has to make. But like she is definitely much more savvy to the world than even canon gives her credit for. And it's very frustrating for me because I think Ruby could be a much more complex character than just this this the standing that we get. I also like to think it's because the world that they exist in is consistent with itself. And what I mean by that is they 
they don't really have as many superheroes. They, they have them, and they're, but they're X-Ray and Vav. But, like, Ruby's as interested in hunters it would be the same as me being interested in Alexander the Great, a real person who did real things, fighting real enemies, rather than Batman beats up the Joker. Like, you, there's, there is a difference between what she's idol- idolizing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, shout out to Noel. This art was done the scene. back during Volume 5? No, this was done like back... Or when we yeah, were writing before it. Before yeah, we were writing it. it. Was... This inspired the scene. Because we were talking about... Talking we were talking about, about light lighting up a room trick. using a... Gla- like, I was talking about this trick that I knew about lighting up a room using glasses on top of flashlights. Um, Which is real. You can do it with glasses and, like, balls. Yeah, it's a Safe to try thing. at home. It's a fun thing, yeah. Specific type of um, glass has yeah. to be re- very um, geometric and refractory. You can't be just like a cup. Yeah. Versus if you use a bottle, I think you need to fill it up with liquid so the lights disperses, disperses, like, disperses. Yeah, there, there, are, there are all sorts of tricks to do shit. that. But it's a fun little thing you can do, um, especially if your power goes out and you just have a flashlight on your phone. I did that with friends at one point. Yeah. Also, also a neat reminder to like Ruby, who's kind of been disappointed a lot by Crow already. And has just like yelled at him to be reminded of a she sweeter memory. At him yet. And, and yeah, not yelled, yeah. yelled, but she was upset that he was drinking and hadn't checked the right, cell, right. like cellar, which is an inkling of, of things to come. And kind of Ruby's frustration with his alcoholism that Weiss is trying to quell with her own story with dealing with her alcoholic mom. And I think a lot of people took it as like, oh, that's a sweet like white rose moment. And I, I feel like they ignored the part where it's like they they they're dealing with Weiss is trying to help Ruby deal with the alcohol. Yeah. I choose to think like, of her like that is a line and that she says. Weiss, I'm paraphrasing. She chooses to think of her mother in that warm, yeah. comforting night of when she was a child versus yeah. While Ruby is upset, Weiss has kind of entered a, a peace or apathy about it of a, like an acceptance that's like sad, but you kind of have to do in some now, cases. if you want to like, read it as a, a white rose moment, <laughs> you can. I'm not going to stop you, but you must also remember the you, important in things. Addition, yeah, in addition, you know, it has to be in yeah. addition to the to the. There's actually an scene. interesting point um, that you were um, building to coffee when we were discussing how to handle Weiss's Crow Ruby stuff, where what Weiss has learned to do is also not the perfect and correct absolute way to deal with that kind of issue yeah. she largely what is sort of not accepting of I mean, you, you put it into better words how do you want to go into that no yeah it, it's this theory of like you you fight you uh you, it's fight flight and fawn and fawn is like appealing to i, I want to say abusers but it's a little more complicated and it, it, it's rough when we get into weiss's stuff but um the Weiss's approach is an approach and she's trying to lend to Ruby so Ruby can have some some sort of ease or acceptance or a way to deal with it besides the anger and yelling. Um, and it, it it's not necessarily right itself. You know, it's just the way she she's knows how to, to deal with it. And like you would give, yeah, it's what you would give your friend advice. It's like, do you know the right answer? Probably not. Yeah. You just have a way Also, there was another it. really good bit that we were just dealing with. Oh, we just glossed over with uh, the visuals is the... I wish I had hypothermia. Uh, <laughs> in- Blake being <laughs> jealous. Just oh, a little dude, bit. Th- this entire episode is, is Blake kind of being unsettled still. I think part of it is because we it's writing Blake is a little hard because she's diverged from canon a lot. She, she's way more of an acceptable character here than what she is in canon. Uh, and so sometimes her voice is a little lost, but it it lends itself very good to this arc. Like when she brings out the pillows or the sheets, and she's like, "Clean, well, not really clean, but like." Eh. And then Ruby's like, "We get it," like, <laughs> or like Y says, "We get it." And it's like it, it also hints at like Blake's. There's a lot of hints at Blake's growing frustration and observations about Team Ruby. She doesn't and have Ruby. Doesn't have a place um, herself. Misaligned. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's all very subtle though. Like I, I think we are very subtle, and I was worried about conveyance on that. But I, I'm really happy with the scenes. I ultimately really like this transition I did for your image here. Uh, yeah, I that yeah, thing. which was just a coincidence yeah. that that last panel where she's like looking for paper. There was supposed to be another. Art Where's there, the goopy goop in this scene? <laughs> uh, bottom left. So uh, this is another uh, mimic. You see, the mimic was probably in the room, and then it grouped through the cracks of the wall or the door frame. Oh. I didn't lab. even know that. You never you pointed see. that out to me. <laughs> I put it out 
on Twitter and then on this uh, and then retweeted by the sketchy Twitter. There's so many times where um, people almost die in yeah. this arc and it just like it barely passes them by and they don't even know yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You can it, it's very subtle and there's like a red shimmer on the black. The, I mean, there's it's not would never be in the episode, but there was this great visual in my head. If you would get like an alternate cut during the night, there would just be the mimic as one of the characters standing in the center of the room, clearly feeding on their negative emotions, but not moving, not blinking, not breathing, just there drinking essentially. And it was just, just a horrifying thought that at any moment it could just could have stabbed any of them, whatever it felt like it. Why didn't you suggest this? That sounds perfect for this. It would have been. He, I think he said this. Be- he said this before. I don't know. That seems kind of yeah. problematic to include that sort of cut because it's like, well, if it's right there, why doesn't it just kill them while they're asleep? Yeah, well, that's fair. Yeah, yeah that's, fair. that's that's my thought. Also, it it it, it like yes. blows the gun yeah, too. Yeah, early. yeah. You know, it, it, there's the subtleness of the yeah. movie coming in later. It's it's better that it just keeps trying to get at them, but it keeps getting interrupted by other stuff, or people don't yeah. go with it to other lonely places where it would normally try to kill them. Yeah. Because the mimic, it's a thing of like Grim gets smarter with age. Yeah. The the the, the mimic is is very instinctual. It's not super intelligent. It's very much an ambush predator with emphasis on ambush. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Also, also this scene, I love drawing this. Um. Uh, I wanted more images, and they they ended up getting cut. But I love the oh. palette and the mood of it. You know, just Ruby, just really. Being I remember it was actually out. quite hard to write a sequential order of Crow's fuck-ups. Like, they were sort of disjointed, and we had to go through them in, like, reverse order chronologically. Was it reverse, or was it forward? All his fuck-ups. Like, we went backwards all the way back to Mistral, didn't we? You've been drunk since we've been to Mistral. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, reverse order. So, it's like Ruby replaying in her mind. It's like, you were drunk on the train, you caused the moon slice, avalanche, we're going back, we're going, we're we're, we're, we're bringing back the, the timeline for her. She's going back and she's like, you just keep fucking up. You just keep fucking yeah, up. Yeah, and it's it's just this great moment of dress down. He just, I, I, there there's something to be said that people, this is a philosophy that, um, I have family obviously went through this through through alcoholism and in fact one of them right now is going to become um getting their degree in uh abuse counseling uh, substance abuse counseling and one of their strongest philosophies that's carried through all their education is that some some people who are addicted just need to hit rock bottom they need to hit rock bottom in order for them to realize like for everything to like flush out like you 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 need that thing because that's what they went through. It's a personal experience on their end. So I tried to convey a mm-hmm. little bit of that energy into writing these scenes with Crow. Also, summer uh, that he is he is. Well, also, the summer tease. Yeah, summer tease. Uh, oh, yeah, summer. Love that art. Yeah, as a treat because it's on his <laughs> mind. You know, it was fun to. I wanted to try and make the cloak, the red parts of the cloak, look like the rose petals. That's oh why yeah, it flutters that's and cool. ripples that way. Mm-hmm. Also, can we say in the OG Ruby's yell at uh, Crow is very tame. It's very much Lindsay's delivery that makes it seem like a very big confrontation. But she's just saying, "You can talk to me and Yang, <laughs> Uncle Crow," <laughs> like literally. Instead of, and we were like, "Whoa, uh, that is different." <laughs> yeah, I, I, you, you, you don't realize how how drastically things change when you're sort of taking. God, the more I look at this image, the more I hate it. <laughs> look, it's bridging out. Okay, I'm fine. right there with it's you. It's bridging on that. out. It's fine. <laughs> It is, you know, you're getting better. All Detective Maria. I do have my, my, my quote unquote best piece is in this episode. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, Maria doing Maria her reconnaissance. Because... <laughs> <laughs> no. Why that? <laughs> but I remember that was a big brain blast moment when we were like, oh, she's like a retired huntsman. She she does reconnaissance yeah. work. For, yeah, so someone's going to fill those boards out. Like, who's doing these listings? Like, someone has to be. Yeah, like, how, how do you classify them? That way a kid doesn't get, like, mauled and eaten by 13 Ursa, so you know? The entire idea is she would go into places, scope them out, figure out what the threat is. Typically undetected, because you don't want to, like, you know, rile a nest up or anything like that. But the the idea being that she is, she's not really supposed there to solve the problem so much as she's, she's there to just observe... Assess, assess and be like, all right, this is the kind of, like, work we need. Do we need a, is it a solo huntsman job? Is it a... Is it a, a team job? Is it a multi-team job? There are some that happen like that. Um, mm. 
how far is it, how much supplies will you need to get there and back, yada yada yada. Yeah. Do we need the giant fuck off mech? Terrain problems, possible weather issues. Yeah, very important, very important, especially with Argus also having its withdrawal issues and and short staffed all you around. You know, my one issue with Tabalt's art here, he didn't draw the token. Oh, I know. Okay, so I, I love I, that I, idea. I, I, I take yeah. full credit for the like the joke. Yeah, that was Jay's idea. <laughs> this is the idea. It wasn't really a joke. It's just a yeah. thing. It's the idea. Yeah, it's just like, oh, yeah, it's hidden yeah. under there. You so the idea it is it's a semi-curved <laughs> toe hitch that would follow the like the curve of the rear tire, but into the back seat area, and it just folds down. And it's like, oh, yeah, cool, probably a locking pin or something. But I just like the idea. It's like, yeah, she learned it from me. And it's just like, it's the one thing Yang ever did that she's proud of, and it's just like... Yeah. Yang's like a little <laughs> bit, like, being... I love, I love the little, like, bits we get into Yang being Ruby's sister. It's like the little bitterness of being like, and then she got better than me. It's like, damn, your little sister got better than the thing you taught her. It's like, I'm proud of you, but, like, also, like... Uh, though I, I think it's... Up. Yeah, do you want to <laughs> clarify? Uh, no, I, I was going to talk about yeah, Adam. That's uh, not Adam. And Appearing how, in his that's not volume Adam. three outfit, but also Yang not hallucinating. Again, a reason to be consistent because we have a lot of like. It's important that we we hit these correctly. Yeah. I'm not sure if people so picked up so that that Adam happened. was also the mimic. I didn't necessarily see a lot no, of comments no, no. about that. I don't that. think they did. <laughs> yeah, that was the, <laughs> that was like, the hey, mimic Adam. again. He, the mimic is very bad at guessing whether or not a person. Who is important in someone's mind is someone they like or someone yeah, they hate. Just a strong emotion. Yeah, it's like, oh, hopefully I can lure you in. And it's like, oh, you picked the wrong one. Yeah. <laughs> that that one's going to repel your victim if you wanted to lure them in. Yes. I'm trying to think of like what, what would have happened if it was like Ruby out there. Or what if it were Blake out there? Like, that would be wild. <laughs> that would be fucking funny. <laughs> like, oh my god, can you imagine like, like if you're in here. But you're also out then where there. where am I? Then who's in here? <laughs> Turns into the thing. <laughs> it shows up as Blake, but it's Blake in a swimsuit. It's like, it wait a minute. <laughs> that one's hotter than you. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. You're freaking me out. Blake, not outside of the bedroom. <laughs> God. No, but... And then that that scene uh, very similar to canon, but we had to reach it a different way. Like it started different, but we ended up more or less in the same place, dialogue and and tone wise. The uh, the, uh God, this image. I'm I'm so glad I figured out how to put Yang in it because like having Ruby just dove to the side of this ugly kitchen She's picture so I off found to somewhere. Left, man, you don't even see Weiss. You just see her <laughs> hand on like Ruby's arm. <laughs> If you didn't tell me why is here, I'd be like, I don't know where she is. <laughs> uh, this one came out really good. I don't know why. It's an image I found online, and it looked good. <laughs> and the composition. Uh, it was a good angle. It was a good angle. God, I... Oh, this one yeah, less good angle. Say, can we can move on from this image, me, please? <laughs> Here's where I started actually putting I, I don't know why you didn't ask Luby for the 3D room. Uh, because I didn't realize he had it. We were actually very poor at conveying that information at times. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, a little bit, but it's like the Argus it existed. Island. We'll be it's smart like how people about kept sets. asking about the Argus Island. I'm like, but I have a map here. It's like, did you post it? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, this Brunswick has an entire. It, it, it was softly redesigned. Yeah, it, it, um, it's still roughly. You the probably same, wouldn't notice, but, but it, it's, well, you know, one we thing did. that was <laughs> very much that Jay kept pointing out, and this is true, that almost every location in Ruby is just a flat plane. Oh god, don't we stop? So, his his model so of Brunswick Farm is actually on a hillside. It, oh. Like you actually go to the just facing the house. If you go off to the right of it, it actually slopes down um, to fields. It, it slopes down about maybe 10, 20 feet down to fields. It's like a nice gentle hill. But like the road here and everything, there's like a lot of hills and valleys. It looks very pretty. Oh yeah, yeah, it's winding. I wish we could get more out of that. Um. We we have more of those like greenhouses because in the con we actually follow the concept art of Ruby better than the show does because we reincorporate the windmill that the windmill that is in Brunswick but isn't really like shown or is in the background of stuff. Also, there's like three wells in Brunswick for yeah. some reason, and we got rid of that. There's just the one well. Yep. 
find you guys again. Now we're heading and so here we go with everyone getting heated at one another. A uh, big moment in the original Ruby. Um, and the big thing that was important here was trying to justify Ruby dropping the relic in the well. That was that was a big like discussion point because it's really stupid how she dropped it in the actual show. She just got mildly startled. In this one, we actually it, it, we worked in the leg break um, a little nat more naturally. She gets startled by something in a way that makes her just turn her body naturally. You just react to something when you get startled. She puts weight on her bad leg, and the pain is what makes her drop the relic. Yeah, it, loos it loosens her grip on the, the relic. Uh, another one of my shots that I'm relatively proud yeah, of. Yeah, I actually like putting the reflection yep. in. Also, I made the relic. You know, we we try to we try to make our yes. own assets when Didn't we can. Didn't give me this is this is an old version of it, isn't it? Isn't there like textures missing on this? No, yeah, Jason, you're the wrong terrible with file, uh, Consistency. That, that's what I mean. Management. Yeah, yeah. There's supposed to be textures for this. the The geometry is the same. It's just there's supposed to be textures uh, for the gold. I think you added a few little more visibles to the the white blue area as well. But yeah. Yeah, because that's not modeled. Oh, okay. I, I wanted to keep it. But that, that's more for, like, the art stream, I feel. Can we just talk about how this background here from the show is clearly the trees are PNGs? Can, can we, can we yeah. not pay attention to the background? Because I just copied it. It's either everything. PNGs or, like, PNGs in the array yep. modifier. They just, like, it's like, okay, make 50 of these that going back. That background had a bunch of people standing around the well, so I had to stamp. To and also the, the background just ends. A lot of just, yeah. just stops <laughs> outside the sign. I just know it does. <laughs> This, I remember the scene was kind of hard. To, we were trying to work out why they would be all outside and what would cause them to kind of separate slash turn to crow. I, I, there was like a, trying to find what yeah, song yeah, would the, be. Yeah, th th then we wound up it, on like it actually connected very well into the crow. Yeah, because I think it initially it was like a gunshot and not like the, the wood falling through yeah. on the wood meal. And they were like, oh, if it was a wood, if it was a shot, they would obviously all go there. But it's like, oh, it's just some wood. In an old building. God, I did felt. this scene. So, I did it pose in, and then Jay wasn't happy with it, so he did his own. Uh, that's all my commentary on it. We're real efficient here, and by that I mean here not we at go. All. My the one that I was probably the best at this episode, this volume. It's really good blending. It's really good. I, I put really a lot shot. of time in the shadows. It 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 is it's very impressive when the models can fit into the the OG sets and like environments. The entire waterway was just an interesting locale that I feel like... I, I wish we could have spent more time down there to some degree. I, I really like it. Yeah, a little more fleshed out, maybe. Yeah. But, I mean, all the same, like, I this is this is the reason why, like, the arc is actually really good, is there's a sense of spatial awareness in this arc that is missing in a lot of Ruby. Like, they're exploring this place. They are exploring a locale in an adventure <laughs> series. Novel, I they're, know. They're... They're interacting with the with the scenario. They're interacting with their environment, and the environment actually ha looks like it's been lived in and has a history and story and behind it. So rare, so rare. For yeah, we, I mean, we make a point of being like the the elevation of the water and like the tunnel's depth change. So then, like at one point, there the art shows them like almost neck deep in water, but it's supposed to be like less. But it, it's still like they're trudging through water in this chase scene, and it's it's not great. <laughs> Super not great. No one's See, having yeah, a good I really time. like the uh, uh, idea of um, how some. Uh, I think it's Blake starts to question, like, what did they even build this for? And then they all just immediately, because of the mimic, like they just under uh, the apathy, they just lose interest. And so, I just, I don't. Care. We kind of deflate. Yeah, they're just like, I, I don't care. I don't. Yeah. I, like, I don't need that information. Actually, we didn't matter. actually initially have this uh, shot by Psycho, <laughs> and he got um, mad. <laughs> He got mad, and so he was like, yeah. I'm going to draw He the, was like, fine, I'll do it myself. Movie. Which is actually kind of a common occurrence where it's just like, I want... Some people care about moments more than others, and they're like, I have to do right by the scene or something. But uh, it, the, the the Grimm were largely unchanged, because I think they were pretty okay in canon. They're cool. <laughs> this yeah. has one of my favorite lines for the season, and it has to do with like the continual <laughs> weather, the, the weather-related jokes. <laughs> The weather jokes. Yeah, it's almost as if it's like a running gag in the uh, in the Branwen Tai uh, 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 Zhao Long Rose family line. Like the, the, all the all of them are terrible at telling what the weather is. Like summer, no, it's fall, you idiot. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> it it's good, but it's also like if watching it, it's like of course he doesn't know what the fuck summer is about. <laughs> what the f- he's just says summer. He's, he's a collapsed drunk. He doesn't uh, know. Interestingly shit. enough, um, I had to go back in and it, it, I was working with um, is this Flip it. Isaiah. Is, is, Isaiah Isaiah right? is, is Isaiah. Um, and I, I basically asked, hey, do you mind if I invert this? Because he initially had it in what you saw at the very beginning, black and white. Um, where, as opposed to, like, when we get inside, it didn't feel right. We didn't get, like, the dark atmosphere. So uh, I basically was yeah. like, do you mind if I flip this? And he's like, yeah, go ahead. And so I flipped it, and it immediately became way more striking for what we were going for. Yeah, it, it really fit the tone and the music better, which was generally a very unsettling scene of, of a very emotional this arc, scene. There are two, um, I think there's two soundtracks I use, or three soundtracks I use total for this entire arc. Um, I use The Thing, the entire soundtrack of The Thing has a background <laughs> base for a lot of scenes. Really works. Um, then there was the quiet moment down in the basement where I used the Resident Evil Zero save room, I want to say it was. Uh, which is beautiful, very relaxing, calming music. And then I used... For all the mimic scenes, the freaking uh, uh, Silent Hill. I use Silent Hill music, which became like the theme yeah. of the I mimic, love the body horror. Which yeah. I thought very fitting. Oh yeah, I, yeah, I the, I'm a little bit disappointed. I wanted to actually pop. show how this thing moved when it was rolling on the ground like a limp balloon. Like I think it would even be creepier in motion, which is impressive already. Yeah, the, it's one of the things that would be better in animation, but. Still is really remarkable. I think it really gets the the creepiness of a, a grim that can have that can transform into and a human grim that, can that look human. They've never seen before. Like Crow is a very experienced huntsman, but he's a huntsman on the Mistral Plains and and Vale. Like it sort of makes me think that they're like like Pokemon. They're just grim. He hasn't heard of, hasn't seen. Maybe only heard about in like bars. Yeah, yeah. Like like this is. This is like you talk to someone in Canada about, about fucking still. Garchomp. Like, I, I, lo- the fuck I love is. these. The lighting came out really good. I know we're not doing an art stream, but I'm just like, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Never. Jay. Stop being proud of your art. Um, <laughs> one of the rare, mo- <laughs> rare moments where I can use the uh, actual footage from the show. The actual footage, yeah. A lot less of that. But um, uh, the pairings, I gotta say, was important here. Because uh, Bl- Blake... Ruby's leading the pack, and Blake has light vision. I mean, that's that's how the order in which they went yeah. down in was important, um, and how they're paired up. And as they as they trudge through all the shit to I'm escape, really happy the, how this yes, I thought it was very good. Uh, it's very nice. Mm. The but yeah, the the oh, what was I? I am blanking. Let's just talk about flat Blake instead. Flat Blake. <laughs> so for those who don't know, if you're Blake. really good at um, like uh, looking, uh, really good visuals, in volume, uh, the actual volume six, there's a two-dimensional Blake like visible in a couple of scenes because they just forgot to remove it. You kind of kind of have to know what to look for and whatever, but it's it's hilarious. Yeah. Stop shut it! Up, shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Stop it! I mean, when so, you get we'll three artists later. onto the writing commentary stream, though, it's like, it's kind of <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> uh, the, um, so, yeah, there wasn't a lot to change, necessarily. There was just some cleanup in terms of, like, logistics, especially in, in mind of what we're doing. But the the idea of what they had in the original Volume 6 was already so good. Like, the, the, the Apathy arc is rightfully praised as one of the strongest arcs in the show. So we, we, we ultimately just, as opposed to a lot of different parts of the volume and a lot of parts of like earlier volumes, especially, it was more of a touch up job where we're kind of adding things and just like reorganizing them to just make make a, a, a little more sense for our continuity. Yeah, we've made changes. Enhancing mm-hmm. a scene, enhancing a yeah. scene is part of fixing it too. Like it's good, yeah. but yeah. it could be better. Like this, this wall detail. Thank you, like, Pedro oh, Pascal. It's because Ruby was down there earlier in the cellar with Weiss. That she that there's like a, a patch of wall that's just bricks, like it's been filled in or whatever. And here she's the only one who's who's kind of has enough will in her to notice this and still direct the team to get them. Through, yeah, I, which I think this was just an open corridor or broken down and wall. It, it wasn't uh, like in canon. 
Ruby, I think, and Maria simply Mary, Maria through experience and Ruby through just how she is yeah. as a person. Her it's, pers- not a it's not a silver eye. Thing. It's just her personalities, which maybe you yeah. could tie into the silver eyes, but I, I don't like doing that. It, it, silver eyes is not a a a write off solution to their characterization. Yeah, I think it's I think it's very much their personalities. Like Ruby is very determined. You know, she has the willpower and the mindset to see a lot of things through. Everyone else so she does. has like struggles with that kind of yeah. stuff. It's the simple soul. Taking them in. It's the simple soul um, thing showing its strength. Yeah, she's she's got a lot of resilience to her. Uh, I'm, I, that's right. The only difference here is that oh, sorry, I, there was more music. What am I talking about? The Bloodborne music is in here because Bloodborne is horrifying. And then later we have the oh oh oh. Uh, Fruits Basket, which became the unofficial soundtrack of this entire volume. <laughs> of, of memory slash silver eyes stuff, yeah. Oh, um, well, not even just that, like, bit. in general. I use it for a lot of, like, incidental music. Red yeah, and, and here's another reminder of, of of Ruby Crescent Rose still being broken, because she's just shooting it off. She can't, it, it's not fully transforming. She has a broken leg. Yeah. There was, like, a big thing of, like, making her feel the desperation because she has such limited options. She can't run away. All her friends are collapsed. She can't use Crescent Rose. It is is a very truly desperate kind of situation that we wanted to get her in. I, I liked using the flashbacks the way we did. Um, the I liked going back to those older volumes, pulling them up, and, like, getting those shitty screenshots <laughs> I, I thought it was it's very nostalgic for me as like, man, we have this project has come so goddamn far from those moments where I was just putting characters yeah. on a bland black background and just throwing things on screen, hoping people will get convey that information. And he's, he's uh, Ruby using her, her silver eyes quite intentionally for, I think, the first time. Yes, um, uh, le- learning for the first time. Yeah, with, with not all the implications that we'll be privy to later. Yes. But um, you know she 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 thinks about her team. She thinks about Team Ruby, and all the sweet moments, even though it's not so sweet right now. I was gonna say this is butterflies. Are I was like there are some points where I think especially Jay uses Mupa's uh, art just cut it out and uh, it worked out really well. I think coming up here we'll have it yes. soon. And here's the windmill. So this is an, an example of the set that does exist, or like some, yeah. You can notice because of the trees. <laughs> the <little poly laughs> yeah, trees. and you can tell there's a hill. There's there's actually like a, a, a gradient to the actual height of the area. You can tell that it's a little bit. Yeah, like there's a little more atmosphere, which which helps with the tone because it's like they're fucking still up in al- a, like a high altitude place, and it's snowy, and it's not great. Yeah, and the farm isn't just like a floodplain <laughs> yeah. in, in any rain or snow. Also, it did. We did mention it like snowed out the night before. Like Crow was like, "Oh, it's, yeah. it's you know, it's snowing. There's no visibility." A, a very important snow in this volume, where yeah. you notice that it, the thickest snow happens to be around times where characters are in danger or in mortal peril in some way. Like the snow is always thick in those scenes, mm-hmm. but it gets typically thinned out the more they come out of those situations. Yeah. Uh, you notice that especially in episode 12. Yeah, like in the streets and of Argus, it's mostly slush. Like, I made a conscious effort if I ever made that Argus scene that was a bit of slush somewhere. Hmm. And, he, and here's the, the, the follow-up on Roman, the little little setup with, with coming back to Brunswick. Using probably my favorite Silent Hill yes. song, uh, which yeah. is called Promise uh, Reprise. It, it, it does a fair amount of lifting, and it fits really well for... For the unnervingness of it, of like realizing, Ro- Ro- Roman realizing, it's like, you're not Neo. Very quickly. You're, you don't have brown hair and brown eyes. You look completely fine. Um, yeah, you're not shivering, like, yeah. off your Yeah, I left you covered like, up in a blanket. <laughs> like, why are you standing here normal? Um, and then, and then the Neo just going absolutely ham which this itself is a callback to volume one of fixing ruby where neo defended uh basically saved roman while sick yeah there's another little bit of a moment there where we kind of get things kind of come full circle this is the this is roman's present coming to save him from his past yeah there's there's a lot more weight to it now considering that roman is oz's uh host 
because it they they very much need each other and it, and Roman is pretty much only saved by Neo and Neo is only saved by Roman because she's fucking dying again hypothermia but um codependent there, there's something very eerie about the the cane just sitting there and it's like a reminder to Roman of like I'm not gonna be here it it, it it's just solidifying Brunswick act acts separate from like the the fables of uh, of a strict reminder that he's shit's coming to an end or it's something's gonna he believes he's on a ticking clock yeah yes Also, yeah, dad yeah. jokes. Ha ha yeah. yeah, the dad jokes. Ha-ha. Oh god, those were so people much are fun. like confirmed crow dad. No, <laughs> Mar- no Maria. No, Maria god. is just. I, I, when you you saw my comments when I was reading the script for the first time, I went fucking wild for the first one of those jokes. Like you fucking I'm screaming. Uh, it's great. Re- reading notes on the um, from beta readers is great. It's just it just. Chef- but um, yeah, just it, it's just a natural. Uh, Maria later does it more as a joke, but she does it here because it's like, oh, you're an older man, and clearly this girl's upset with you and your familiar relationship shit. She'd probably just assumed it's like, oh, you're her dad, hair yeah, color, that kind of thing. Yeah, uh, this little moment where people were like, man, why didn't Roman ever explain anything? Ruby saw the picture. Ruby understands hmm. that. Like I, Ruby put it, the pieces together. She's a smart cookie. Like she's not. Also, Roman, Roman doesn't need to explain that to Ruby. That's not really something Ruby besties. needs mm. to know. Yeah, but still, a very nice <laughs> moment. I, I think people got a lot of it. They're like, "Oh, that's a really cool end to Brunswick." Yeah. So we we now have like, and it's just I mean nice because like, Roman is getting kind of a closure he didn't have before. The ad break. Hey. Uh, the with that closure it's like ruby is helping him close that door there's something to be said there that like for all the terrible things in his life and he he mentions it later when he's trying to run away from all this um for all the terrible things in his life he doesn't realize that he's added some very nice things oh my god i know this isn't the art stream but uh Oh yeah, but that's right. The little people, people saw those like helpers around at the castle and were like, "What's that? It was a, was all those other people? What's going on?" It's not official canon, but it was an idea that was pitched that there were more people working for Salem than just like the main villains that we. I see. mean, there's a whole uh, series. Of yeah, I think if you talk about it, it's like the cult of Salem, and it's it's more so like a splinter of Oz and Salem when they played God for a little bit. Yeah, um, it, it, it's not going to be a major element, I don't think. But there are people building. that are like maintaining shit. Yeah, yeah just, just NPCs. Salem, NPCs Salem to help flesh out her faction. Shit for her, and also staying in a castle completely isolated for decades doesn't do well for for people for 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 being a person. <laughs> Even watch, if you don't talk no, to them, having people around. Watch is Ruby's good. solution to Salem be like, "Oh, I was alone for so long," and just be like, "Well, fuck. What are we <laughs> going to do now? <laughs> Write something better." Uh, yeah, the, here's, here's. So yeah, the call to Salem now, now in a way it confirmed in Fruby, but they're not going to be, they're they're not combatants. They're not going to be anything other than just handmaids. It's just, yeah, it's world building. Yeah. We've just got like, hey, more. making the world a little more fleshed yeah. out. Also, Tyrion being a delightful asshole. Yeah, uh, and and pointing out so the fun. obvious of like, if say if Cinder was dead, wouldn't you be the maiden? Um, and just rubbing it in hard. Yeah. On the Setting up for Emerald redemption, as... sort of, kind of. Mm-hmm. Of course, got the explanation scene by Maria here, where she's the. Uh... Yeah. I will say, even if if even if Canon Ruby does go the route like, oh Salem, I was so alone for so many years. It's like she could be alone even if she's surrounded by cult members because oh yeah, they don't really no. get. Yeah, her. that's not an equal relationship. Hey, that it is... goes all the way back to um, when she was treated as a goddess, where like. It, it goes even further when she was locked up in her tower yeah. for the first 16 oh, years dude, of her life. Oh, dude, we didn't even mention it. That the Yeah, it, it's a thing. It's Salem always in towers. Yeah. It's always yeah. in towers. She, she can't ever escape. Always in towers, always alone. Yeah, she can't ever escape, like, that. She can't ever escape her child or, like, childhood slash early years in that sense. Being on high, but being trapped on high. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
And and here here's I think some people did they, people take issue with it being explained after the fact because that's pretty much like in canon. Yeah, like, yeah, that is exactly. Yeah, in canon. yeah that's that's exactly yeah. how it goes. Again. The only thing we didn't have is the books where Oscar was like, "Oh, I'm reading these," because <laughs> um, we don't yeah. have Oscar. But talking about like being put on a pedestal and being punished for it, that just kind of made me have an errant thought about like, man, Pyrrhic kind of had a lot more in common <laughs> with Salem than I yeah, think I had the same exact thought, but about I was like, <laughs> how we've set up Salem is that she she rings true to the experiences of so many of our cast yeah. members. Yeah, she's very relatable. Yeah, and I think very that relatable. that pays well to like a good villain. You know, you can see pieces of Ruby and of Weiss, of Yang, of of Neo, of Blake. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. a good villain typically is someone whose motives you understand but whose actions you you decry one you could almost contemplate you joining if you're not for your own morals or quandaries or like yeah exactly there's an appeal there yeah yeah i i, I understand adam i i can understand where he's <laughs> coming from i would never take the actions adam <laughs> takes jesus christ yeah. <laughs> uh so uh, yeah a little recap everybody skirting around talking about what they should talk about um but still Every, holding it off for juniper pretty much this was one of those moments where i was like very because i know a lot of people were mad that team ruby never really discussed the vision yeah in the it kept being show. pushed along and like i i felt like we were kind of falling down the same trap but like it just it made more and more sense like they wouldn't talk about it right now why would they yeah like they are they are dog tired after all i think there's a serious yeah. uh, there's an aspect of denialism shit. as well i mean like it, there's only so much uh, that they can process with that information in their current situation like their yeah. their ability to push it and compartmentalize it is actually a bit of a strength because they you know oh we're so depressed about the origins of humanity that we just stay in the forest and get eaten you know what i mean it could go either way either way i think it's it's a denial and it's kind of shown i think there's a point of like blake being like she wants to talk about it but ruby shutting her down again um and then noticing that she's calling up team junior or team ranger instead of saying team juniper uh yeah just, the, again the language around how ruby interacts with team junior um, Realistically speaking, Ruby has been with Team Ranger only a little bit shorter than she was with Team Ruby. Yeah. Oh, there's the squeaky squeak, you noise. Know, yep. You're mm. you're very adamant about the squeak. And it goes <laughs> it goes both ways. I think they genuinely really care about Ruby. It's just a little different because Ruby's yeah a, a singular person versus the team, and also Junior is dealing with some pure shit and whether they're going to stay in Argus or not. Keeping the running gag going, uh, where Nora punches yeah. Roman. Uh, which is a thing that we established back in Volume 5. Yeah. And Neo being slightly better right enough to be like, I'll kill a bitch. Um, <laughs> fun fact, uh, the audio cue I used for that, I ripped that from Gundam Witch from Mercury. Uh, there's a Content ID very match legendary incoming. punch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, there's a very legendary punch uh, in, that se- in that season, the first season, that's just awesome. So here's an interesting piece. I think in the script... Jean isn't her crutch yet. She's supposed to be here with her her uh, using Crescent Rose as just a cane. So actually, I don't think Jean is very privy to the Maria situation. Actually, yeah, that's interesting. Somehow, I can you know, how art can just be used and it changes the meaning yeah. of a scene. Mm-mm. But still, Jean becoming Ruby's crutch for a hot for a hot episode, just being like, oh, yeah, she can't walk. John and Ruby are like the bestest of besties. Yeah, I, they get I each other because the they're friendship. both leaders. It's set up really early on that yeah, it's like we I both realize get it. they haven't had a lot of fun together recently. I think they need a fun scene together at some yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Also, like a little bookend. Like, or they need to have a silly little time where they go to an arcade and play Dance Dance Revolution and maybe kiss me. <laughs> 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 just just like in the next <laughs> just Bro, letting the shit no frame not come in into the commentary, uh, I live for it. They're just Amazing. practicing, that's all. <laughs> it doesn't count if you're practicing. Uh. <laughs> um, uh, here's here's some good Weiss. bit. This is oh. your wife's wife, Ruby reminds herself. Oh, I, I want to... Oh, I love this scene and how we introduce character into these... Oh, yeah. These... These NPCs, Loki. Yeah. This actually does uh, is the beginning of. We'll get to it. It's a short scene, so we can start talking now. Of the one and only rewrite 
or a re-edition that happened this volume, based on by someone's comment, or we'll find it one time, um, where they just mentioned, why doesn't John just fix it with his magic Ooga Booga power? And then it led into this conversation that we had between the three of us about, oh, that's a really good point. And then, yeah, we can expound upon that. Thoughts, Kelty? We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll be, we'll be covering that in just a minute. We'll be seeing the scene here. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I'm looking at all these photoshops I did where I just gave them really shitty bags under their eyes. I love and, that. I absolutely and, and, love and it. Yang looks like she's I, I raccoons. I want to say one really poignant thing about the scene I remember saying out loud is like Ruby doesn't know what it means to be yelled at by a, a maternal figure because she does. she's never had a mom. Uh, she's had her dad yeah. and Uncle Crow, and I remember being like, "Yeah, that was the intent of the scene," but it really hits hard that she's like really shrinking under it because she's she's just never had that in her life. She's never experienced that. And it's like a little sad, but cute. It's like a cute scene, but it's like a little sad when you like think about it. Yeah, the worst she gets is her sister. Like, John not using his semblance to cure Ruby to to heal Ruby. He doesn't have his full control over it. It's been a week. Just kind of like it. it it's been like a week and a half, two weeks. Yeah. It's it's not been very long. We were since purposeful the on the train because in, in the tr- in like <laughs> volume five or sorry, volume six versions of the train, it's like he uses it with Ren to camouflage the entire train, and it's like, dude, you've had this unlocked for not even a month. Like you wouldn't. It, it, that was conscious before the comment of like, yeah, he doesn't do that. So it, it became very yeah. natural to be like, oh yeah, he. He was originally he doesn't going to have heal that much Carton's control. arm, but that just never we we never actually went through with that. I think because we agreed he wouldn't be able to do that. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's also fair to point out that there's so many people who need medical attention. I think even for Jean, if he was experienced with a semblance, that would <laughs> yeah, be yeah. It's like I'll heal your hypothermia. I'll heal your hypothermia. I'll heal your broken leg. I got you. Alcoholism is a disease. It's a little too much. It is a disease. Revivify. Revivify. Uh, Ruby giving Crow the cold shoulder. Yeah, and, uh, a, a very everyone... purposely awkward scene, which I I, uh, I don't like awkward scenes, but it was like perfect. It's like, oh yeah, that's perfect for the strain that they've kind of been through. Uh, and of course, here's the conversation that, that we had to just briefly modify for uh, one of the few comments. I love the scene. Uh, it's <laughs> very nice. It, it is. It's a it's a great scene. Uh, it just and Mupa captured reality. It so well. It's just reality setting in about stuff. Uh, it was uh, this was originally my only assignment for the episode but then the very opening scene the artist who was supposed to do that wasn't available and so i was just like oh let me draw this real f- first real quick this because this is more important and then i'll jump back to this yeah yeah and it's, it's a, a great scene it's important to note they have people that care about them <laughs> like that's mean that feels very saffron I don't get the feeling cared about John in the original volume. I mean, to be fair, she was like a neutral party. Yeah, it, she was just there. She was kind of blasé mm. about it. Yeah, you kind of get the feeling that maybe she was grown and out of the house or something when he was growing up. Like the there's a large age gap there or something. So winter with I still feel like when you hear your little brother was in a train crash or yeah. or was part of a a ma- massive train derailment that you might have a little more concern and worry about his future and be yeah. like hey your mom I, and dad would be real pissed if you die yeah also like an a, an adult with some perspective like she's a young adult still but like he's a 17 year old they're all kind of like burgeoning 18. Eight, like young adults and stuff but they're still kind of being coasted along on this momentum of this journey and this like big yeah. quest john I'm trying to remember. John was the youngest. Yes. Is that right? uh, he was, no, he's not yeah. the youngest. He has younger sisters. Oh, but he's the only know. male. Oh. Only male. Oh. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't think they said that all of his sisters were younger. He just says seven. Yeah. Damn. Right. <laughs> he strikes me as a middle child, probably just like not too. Yeah, probably middle child yeah. syndrome. Ah, uh, yes. Here we go. The scene that yes, vanished. this disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> we had to rewrite it. No, it came out better, <laughs> but it's fine. I think. Yeah, it turned. It was the same, but better. <laughs> but yeah. Um, the we really wanted to emphasize the uh, the 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 character dynamics between all of them. Like uh, Mercury's one hundred percent ready to sell out Cinder, whatever we've established pre- uh, before. Emerald's eventual cracking is then built on with the scene later with Hazel, and Hazel's just constant want just to take responsibility um, and Salem's interaction with all three of those different personality types yeah like 
we've already been shown through like the the illusion in Emerald in Volume Five that she's she has a very particular view of Salem and it's she's fucking scared <laughs> shitless by her, um, and it's just solidified here when you when you deal with her and, and the way she she acts with all her generals. I really like showing when Mercury is scared. Like it, that's something that like a lot of shows do very poorly is the villains never get scared. Like they want to always make the villains cool and, and calm intimidating, and, and it's like and intimidating at all times. But like, villain, when you treat your villains as people and they react realistically to stimuli, like mm. I don't know, giant scary noodle arms coming out of the ground and dragging people into a black hole. Like, if you react like, oh, oh, I'm going to get the furthest I can away from that. It makes them way more relatable, and you're suddenly like, oh yeah, no, this is more of a real person. And in some ways, that makes it, when they are doing the evil conniving thing, way more scary, because suddenly you're like, oh, so this is a believable character. This this could actually exist, potentially. Uh, you're doing this on purpose, and not just because you're following yeah, a character. I, I really like how this scene folded out. Um, again, it's like... Uh, Hazel is the informed one, the adult one, and he chooses to take the responsibility because he also low-key knows he's dealing with kids who are in over their heads. Specifically, Emerald. Uh, so specifically, yes. yeah, Emerald. Uh, Mercury's, again, bought into this shit. Um, but Emerald's going through some shit. She's, she's going through some shit. Yeah, yeah, Emerald's, Emerald's having her crisis right now, and one thing that people did point out, and it's very, we tried very pointedly to avoid showing Salem's face to a great extent. Um, she's very mm-hmm. much supposed to be kind of inscrutable, kind of unreadable to the yeah, audience. Yeah, a careful balance. Even to the it, people it was, around her. It, striking um, a balance with her that's kind of like mother, motherly, but like really unnerving and intimidating. I've heard enough. You may leave. Which, you know, it, it, this goes to a credit to Volume 6, uh, where this scene originally origin, you know, originated from. In this premise. was already another yeah. good scene to some extent. Ooh. In premise, there there were just there were it was the fine details that yeah, got especially this end. Lot. We decided no no yelling. Yeah. Oh, explicitly, this end was like way over the top, and we didn't want that. We wanted yeah, a we wanted more subtlety. more subtlety with her. Something she she can keep it all under. Like you can tell she's boiling. Like it, it's coming up to the surface, and that's why they all leave. Even if they weren't ordered out. Well, I just didn't respect her afterwards. Like, when she starts screaming, Ooga Juzu face, you know, she's just, like, face melting almost in, the, in that perspective shift that they did. It just, it looks silly. It looks like a, a character so unable to control their emotions that I, I'm not, I don't feel threatened by you. I think, yeah, oh, you're a, a tran- cartoon a villain. Of sorts. Versus a, someone that can show control. Got a little bit of downtime. This is maybe the first scene where characters can like genuinely re- relax following the events. It's also the battery of the arc train crash. <laughs> comes comes to the end. Battery arc. Yeah. Ba- yeah, the close of the battery arc. Oh God, I think it, I think that's still that is the head adjusted version of Adrian that we made. That's like I think it was okay maybe that that helped tweak the size and yeah. still that thing looks like an. They don't know how to make children. Yeah. Oh it. Oh, God. No, they don't. Is is that PNG really? Yeah, yeah the they're smaller heads. Yes, I'm pretty sure we shrunk that head. It, it's it's oh nothing compared to Salem's children. <laughs> like, oh my god. It, oh yeah, they're horrifying. Adrian, <laughs> lesser known monster. monster. Oh, pilot. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is the end of the battery arc, and I think the if, near official close of the plane crash plane joke. Crash yeah, arc. we can't yeah, hammer yeah. a joke too yeah. long. We're like, oh, two volumes. It's probably good. Like, you know, bookend it. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I liked it as a running gag. I, I think maybe we have room for one more later on down the line, but it's got to be. Yeah, it's got to be. be they got to close it's it. Gotta you know, you can't you can't hold on to <laughs> things forever. Which is a thing we kind of like try to balance with because, you know, we love a lot of early Ruby, but we can't be like, okay, let's replay the hits, replay the hits, replay the hits. Um, yeah, that's why we're so happy to find our... Not that we've only ever got one, but we found our own joke. Like, we found stuff that, like, hey, this is self-referential yeah, yeah. to us. There's some things like Ruby's Heels that are, like, early volume yeah. stuff, how they take their coffee, that get expanded upon, but um, just a uh, pl- plain, yeah, plain yeah, crash. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Everybody coming in from their little trippy doos. Ruby no. got her new shiny new cane. 
Got got the got the inconsistently yeah, placed brace on her fine. leg. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is one of the frustrations with the uh, the character PNGs that we have is that yeah. John hates Adrian. Got it. They all have like weapons. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah, gonna say he's yeah, stabbing um, his, his nephew now. God, it's, it's weird to see Roman and We've Neo plans in this for that house because they spend almost no time here. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, it's like what is it? Next episode they're out something like that yeah i think or they they they, they do leave uh Ru- yeah i love ruby assuming the worst out of crow here and, and the the people library. believing it it's like a realistic thing to believe that oh crow went off to a bar because he's done it so many times like his first like phrase introduction is uh <laughs> fucking drinking in a bar with like winter ship overhead yeah uh, and then, of course, uh, this scene. Yeah, uh, being which pleasantly surprised. The the yeah the, the 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 start of the healing between Ruby and and Crow. He's making an attempt, very important. But the idea of the idea of Ruby tinkering in order to like deal like she she's trying to work through a pro- a problem in her mind or ignore it or what have you she's always working on her weapon for that yeah, yeah. it's a coping thing we we established that it was the idea of uh um whenever she's dealt something frustrating or she can't deal with this is the place that she goes in her head so i think the word is mind palace i think that's what that uh, phrase is um but uh <laughs> but uh also bringing back something i saw blessed earlier about her is that she made crescent rose and she's like very into weapons so it's like naturally she would find herself working on her broken weapon after everything you know just yeah. sitting outside quiet trying it's to the one thing done. she can control it's 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 her yeah. it, it is her in her own mind like crescent rose is a, literally a part of her that she can fix she can't fix mm. a lot of the stuff that's going on right now but damn hell if she gets a, scr- a screwdriver and a wrench she can at least make crescent rose work mm-hmm. and maybe something she picked up a little bit from yang because yang also ends up like working through a lot of stuff with i, it, I feel like it's just a natural later like domino effect that maybe yang picked that up a little bit from summer like just it's oh i was thinking it must be yeah. a tie thing tie is very work uh, through no, the problem no 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 no, no. no. But again it doesn't give me uh it it's the opposite because like in in this, we actually pointed out how Ty couldn't stand when uh, when of oh, course yeah through her stuff yeah her her silence mm. he didn't like the silent treatment and Crow kind of feeling like he deserved it because he's kind of always down on himself. Um, well, I'm just I wanted to, not art stream, but I wanted a shot where John was looking or mean 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 looking at, at crow for a second because he, he kind of gets what's going on yeah. it's like oh something and happened. of course uh smudge um, ruby cheek this was a, a very important thing for us uh we yeah because it, she, she it goes back to that like physicality face, of the, the show that just is missing like the idea of a character like getting their hands mm-hmm. greasy and then like wiping a tear off their face and then getting oil all over it like that's they're yeah. plastic yeah. models they're, they're, they're very plastic characters in a plastic world Mm. it adds a lot and i think it adds a, a like a bit of a, a cute levity to the scene which is kind of serious they both have to talk about some things they both have first some inklings to of <laughs> the boot Ayo. Da da, das boot. Das boot. Yeah. Das beer boot <laughs> yeah das beer boot whatever <laughs> So here we are, Cordovan. Uh, the oh god, she gave us so many problems in development. <laughs> Head bitch in charge, and emphasis on bitch. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, we 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 were initially we, planning to go with the original storyline where the girls got basically kicked out immediately, and you know had to plan around stealing an, an airship almost immediately. Well, not quite that. We wanted to actually kind of flesh that out but the problem was fleshing out that initial plan was really kind of impossible with all how the characters are built we were just also struggling with what we wanted to do with argus like there was just so much ideas but it wasn't there wasn't a plot so we came up with this idea of they end up working for cordovan which had a twofold thing of like making a plan seem 
like better, as well as giving us ability to flesh out Argus as this place that we could just go to different locations and different little setups, which I always thought was a good idea. Yeah, it, it, no, yeah. it gave this backbone to the idea of all the girls have to go out and do these different things, and we got to get a little snapshots of Argus, so later on we'll see the wall that John and Blake are protecting, we see that Ruby's running around with munitions, Nora's at the docks lifting boxes, we get a, a real feel for Argus as a as a as a place, um, and it was it, I, like I said earlier. This was like the what we decided to do with Cordovan was a real click moment where it, we had, you know again all these ideas just all completely scatter shot. Um, I think in there was also the the downhill chase sequence, which initially involved Neo on the bike. That was the initial place we had that. Yes. Yeah, it's a carryover from Volume 5. It's a carryover from Volume 5, and then we had to carry it over into a later part of Volume 6. We were going to get it, goddamn it. At one it point, we were cool considering... It was a cool payoff. Um, but yeah, I think uh, one thing we were kind of consistent about, though, I think is treating Cordovan less goofy. Yes. Um, same with Maria, just being like, "Hey, let's let's tone down on that a little bit." Yeah, just because she's a little person doesn't mean she has to be a joke. It, what I find, yeah. <laughs> what was really great is that I f- still find her very fun. Like she's not as like overtly humorous, which honestly I found more grating than anything else. I actually really, I really didn't like her and Maria's original dynamic, and it's one of those things I I don't think anyone's complained about us cutting that particular element. Um. But the her being this kind of very prim, proper, stick up your ass type military hypocrite, I find just way more enjoyable to some degree because not only did it, she's fun to watch as an antagonistic force over our main protagonist, but seeing her get her comeuppance is a little more rewarding instead of just like it's like a clown getting hit in the face with a with a like a, a shovel it steps on is funny. But it's funnier if it's the straight man in the story. Yeah. Well, I think it links back to the idea that the problem we had with her in the in the in the volume of RT was she wasn't a character. She was uh, an event. Like she, that's not the right description for it. But she was just a caricature of a character. She was a tool. She just existed. Was a yeah. Bit silly. Here's that at- at- Asian nationalist who lives in a like short lady in boot. Please clap. Quite literally um. a wall. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder if they should get like a like, we got to determine what kind of wall this is. Is it a paywall? Do you think we could flash the money <laughs> in front of her and she'll go away? <laughs> I, I really like the immediate payoff of taking her a bit more seriously, though, of just being like, "Hey, I'm not gonna be your taxi service to Weiss," and her like having a pre-established like n- like antagonistic relationship with Winter, probably calling her a vixen and stuff oh yeah that was uh, that was great and the idea that like i i i'm amused at the pseudo incompetence of the uh of tweedle uh the tweedle brothers here the uh where they they don't really give her all the information she needs and she's confused it's like oh one of them's a schnee and it's like i don't know, it's, it's like in, a slight incompetence all around but like a believable incompetence yeah 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 do we want to talk about the Tweedles here? Like, why they exist? Why they're not the knuckbacks anymore? And yeah, when- yeah. So that they're not people. Was... Have like it's like um, uh, not Streisand's effect, but oh yeah, I was gonna say that that was one of the things that I had uh, an issue with when I read the script the first time. I w- was um because I really liked the uh you know like the the big dumb idiot guards. Uh, from uh, from the actual show, because uh, I thought that that did a great job of characterizing, uh, you know, Cordovan and like Atlas exceptionalism as a whole, uh, where it was it, it, like it is just nationalism and competence is less important than like the appearance of, you know, keeping up the appearance of Atlas superiority. And with, you know, with these guys who I don't think it's in this episode, I think it's in a, 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 a like a couple episodes down the line, but they're like talking to Nora about how they're not actually even from Atlas, how they're like, you know, half at Legion. And, yeah, they're from Argus, Argus. Yeah. essentially. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it's like, it's like, I, I don't, I, I didn't really like that. You know, I don't, I didn't really like, you know, the, uh, I, 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 did, I didn't like the toning down of Cordovan as much as, uh, I guess, other people did. 
No, yeah, I see that. I think the the version of Tweedles, which uh, it's like one of those fake things where it's like, oh, Tweedledum and Tweedledee were actually the train guards, which everybody has forgotten because why would you do that? Why would you put twins in the season and not name them Tweedledee and Tweedledum? (laughs) Yeah. But also um, have two twins that are twins. Yeah, I think. Are they they supposed to be twins? I mean, no, but I mean, they're twin characters. Yeah, you have yeah. these two different pairs of characters, and it's just it's just goofy. But I I like where they ended up. I feel like there's a little more heart to them, and it ends up working well for the finale where it's Argus, it's the people of Argus rallying up against Cordovan and like what she represents and in not Atlas. The <laughs> not not to get too far away from what's actually happening in the scene, this is such an, an integral element to the the the, the narrative as well because it's yes. Ruby making a deal with Cordovan that basically on the surface looks like it's going to get them everything they need. They just basically need to bide their time. And mm. this uh yeah, this really threw me when I was reading it in the script. I was like, whoa, 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 hit the brakes! What's happening? <laughs> yeah, um, and the. The kind of thing that we were kind of going with was Cordovan is basically just trying to exploit them. Like, maybe she'll follow through on her deal, but she always has the option of just reneging on the deal, but at the at no consequence to herself and basically getting free work out of a bunch of people when she's low staffed. So there's there's a lot here that goes into Cordovan being a rather shrewd deal maker, knowing when people are kind of desperate and willing to exploit that to some degree. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a, there's a lot on Ruby's side yeah. of things. Like she's only kind of stirred into this because like a, a lot of the circumstances leading up to here, and like Crow also like getting aggressive during negotiations, where she's like, you know what, fed up, I'll I'll do it. I'll do the big move. I'll do what needs to be done. Yeah, and it's it's it just goes into everything about Ruby just trying to do everything right and everything just not quite working out. Well, it shows her developing in, in, in a couple different ways. Like One, it, it shows that she's developing a sort of leadership quality where she knows that, you know, she can't be just guided by emotions. Like, Crow's reaction was to be immediately bitten and taken taken in by the insults and they were losing any chance they would get. So she was being the adult in the room, but it also shows still in parts her naivety. Like, she still um, is too willing to trust in certain situations. Also, I love that joke that no yeah. one picked up. <laughs> yeah, she puts out the cards on the table because that's kind of what you would do, like trying to get a fair deal between them. And so she's showing the cards or as much as the cards she feels comfortable showing. I, I was going to say, Jay, I, I appreciate your joke. I, I love Ruby's uh, photo there and the, the misspelling of her name. What was that? Was that? that? That was it, right? I'm to Ruby Rose. Yeah, yeah, yeah Ruby Rose. <laughs> Spelt with an I. Um, it was interesting going back to the Tweedles while we're just sort of in this this section here that um we were always worried about how the twins would eventually get taken in the final part, which we'll talk about later. But the chat, when that chat came through, oh, the people were so into the Tweedles and we were like, oh, thank God, we, we did it. We actually, people actually liked what we did with these random background characters. Uh, it was, oh God, so, so important we get that right <laughs> Yes. Um, and of course, here comes. I remember this scene was quite. This hard. scene wasn't so difficult. It was, <laughs> and the thing is, what's great is we could pour our frustration right into the characters themselves to some degree. Like that kind of wound up working in our favor because this is a really frustrating conversation to have because we were basically yeah. saying the same things to each other. It's like how, like if we were in the same boots and we had these abilities, how would we solve this problem? It's a really tough situation. Yeah, it, it's it's also helped by the fact that like we kept pushing it off because we were dealing with the fables and how to fix that. Yes, and Team Ruby has kind of have done the same because of because of Brunswick, because of Roman, because of getting to Team uh, Ranger slash Junior. Uh, speaking of Roman, uh, what one thing that like I, I didn't have the heart to tell Saito. I thought he was focusing a little too much on Roman and Neo, but I understand why because if he did it this way, he didn't need to cut back to everyone in the room. <laughs> yeah, I also didn't need to draw background stuff. Yeah. Efficient. <laughs> Just draw two characters. Yeah. You know, while this is, you know, a very, uh, like, you know, stressful 
issue that they're that they're dealing with compared to what it was in like the you know the canon show it's actually like comparatively a lot less stressful i i think anyway cuz it's like instead of finding out that there's this immortal dickhead who has been trying to do a thing for uh, you know since the dawn of time and never coming up with a plan the fact that Ozpin was like trying to do the the opposite like he was effectively working against their goal and now he's gone i don't know like just like i understand that it's just like oh we've we're we're up against like insurmountable odds but compared to the actual show it's it's slightly more hopeful i don't know if that was like you know dramatic irony on on your part or or, or uh, i i don't know i don't think that was like necessarily intentional um because we were literally just trying to fix ozpin as a character and kind of understand how <laughs> how he had been fucking up for so long and all the bullshit <laughs> yeah. that he had done. It's like mm -hmm. the, the answers we came to came naturally out of trying to just understand that. So the situation here follows from that. Yeah. Much better than. In, yeah. It, <laughs> in, it, it, it makes more show. sense to like, Hey, well, uh, well, I feel like following up on the plans to go to Atlas makes a bit more sense in this context. Yeah. Mm hmm. Versus, like, we'll follow the old man who's a fucking bitch uh, and we hate him. One, one thing that <laughs> I want to point out here, and I think we actually came upon this relatively <laughs> late in writing this scene, was Nora questioning, you know, well, shouldn't we just ask Jin again? And then we have Ren follow up by saying, yeah. how can we even trust Jin? Like, literally everything we've been told so far has basically destroyed our entire view of this entire situation. How can we trust anything at this rate? There, there, There's there's no reliable data to actually pull from. For all we know, Jin's story could have been completely fabricated. Yeah, and it, it's the extra mile for Ren and Nora who weren't even there when uh, Jin was summoned. And I mean, they're the perfect people to ask it because you could also infer from what they know of the world is, is Salem even real? <laughs> Do, is there any proof that anyone has e in, in their group has ever actually knows that Salem exists? Um, well, no, they, they've, at least of it, they've been told by, there was the they've been told by Ospin, but then they, uh, everyone saw the, um, wacky wave even flavor to illusion. our man version. Fine. Oh yeah. I suppose there is that. It was that, a bit less wacky and wavy and flavorful oh, yeah. in our version. But more terrifying, <laughs> but I guess, uh, terrifying, Wavy arm inflatable tube man. There we go. <laughs> hey, More you, crickety, you've never rickety, been... <laughs> wavy inflatable arm tube man. Rickety crickety. <laughs> I was gonna say like, hey, you've never met a, 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 a sleazy used car salesman. Those guys are horrible. <laughs> True. <laughs> I live in Ohio. I can't. I, I can't go five feet without <laughs> tripping over one. <laughs> oh, so you just also... sensitized. <laughs> now look, you can tell that this is. A purely a work of fiction because this is meant to be fantasy san francisco and look at the floor plan size there's no way that could possibly exist in san francisco it should be about one quarter of the size yeah yeah it's, yeah. it's argus is supposed to be san francisco? yeah it's heavily inspired uh, san francisco I mean, kind of yeah. uh has roman and neil left already yeah they've already the left yeah they left yes. okay yes. cool i love how long they are gone for i have to say yes um, They're gone for like we weeks. Didn't, at the, in, in yeah, it, in and what? especially with the weekly, and we didn't get too many questions of where are they. It felt very natural yeah. to have that longer break of them actually being gone instead of in canon where Oscar was gone for like a, a was minute. it a full episode or was it <laughs> no, just no, a section of the He was literally gone for like half an episode. I don't I don't think it was really all, gone all that long. Yeah. You gotta wonder where Roman and Neil were staying all that time, but eh, they probably speaking of people <laughs> hey, who were gone for <laughs> a while. Resourceful. Well, they've true. Uh, yeah, three. we've got Plucky Team Cardinal out searching for Russell. They're they're out Clown Patrol. They're, they're out of the city limits for quite some time. Uh, mm -hmm. we're, we're catching them at the very beginning of their search, but they they don't get back for like a month later. But they managed to start tracking down Russell. Um, that actually might be a bit of a time discrepancy, honestly. Uh, but well, they've been here for about two days. They, they go to sleep. They, 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 um, the, the guys have spent like a day arriving and a day with Cordovan, so they could have been theoretically traveling for quite a while. Yeah. Um, in that time, two days. But what was interesting is that everyone thought they died. 
like the a lot of the comments were like, "Oh God, he's killed them." I was like, "Really?" Yeah. <laughs> Even though it's like, and then they decide to leave or whatever, people are like, "Oh, I can't believe Adam killed Team Cardinal." <laughs> 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 Rip to God. them, you know, rest in peace. They got an active imagination or wishful thinking. You can never tell with the audience. I think it's wishful thinking. They're just like, we want Adam to kill people so bad. Um, he, he in this scene was supposed to show he's very unhinged with just the killing of the dogs. Yeah, he it was supposed his, to be a lot more brutal than it, than it ended up being. Um, yeah, the other we we stay out of it more. Like we're further away from the carnage in this image. Yeah, the the thing that I wanted to convey that was really important here was. Cardin making a very tough call. There's a lot of tough calls made in this uh, volume, and Cardin make one really rough call here, where instead of turning around and trying to get within audio or, or radio distance of Argus, he decides to continue going forward with uh, his and his team's plan to find Russell. Which, yeah, when you think about it, this decision gets a lot of people killed. Um... He, he ends up making a, a very selfish call here, and it's... It, I don't... You can say that it was the morally wrong choice to make, but it, when it's a close personal friend that you know might die if you don't get there soon enough, what choice do you have? It's a, hard it's a very hard call to it's make, hard and call. he made one yeah. that is more about his friends. He trusted in the defenses of Argus... Basically, he was like, they can probably handle it better than I can, and it, it'll be fine. Yeah, and my bud might be dead in a day if we don't consider, like, if we don't continue searching for him. As well as, I also think it is a bit of cowardice. Like, he is a bit of afraid of Adam. I, I, I think yeah. there oh, well, there's there's definitely a lot of, like, it. remnants of the fall, kind of, like... You lose an eye to someone, not, yeah, and, no. you know, you might just be a little <laughs> a little anxious around them from time to time. Yeah. <laughs> they, they're holding the fork, and you just flinch from time... It just happens. Anyway, flinching. Uh, <laughs> we, we come back this to Terry's driving. Episode, yeah, this is, this uh, is, part... this is an added episode. <laughs> yes. Um... Sort of an added episode. We had these ideas. We just didn't have a place to. Yeah, fit them. I think it was more like re redoing our time on stuff because I think the the finale was supposed to be a three parter, and we're like, we could do that. That could be a two parter, and so we shuffled it down, and then we realized we had some missing scenes that we could add in and make an ep- episode from. Yeah, and the what, what's enjoyable about this to me especially is it it has sort of weird character combinations. You have Tara. Ruby and Nora in a car together, and that's like, how does that dynamic work? And we just we ran with the idea of Tara having this awful road rage, yeah, and Ruby and just Nora more. just being horrified. Oh, poor little Ruby. The help me at the end of this help idiot. Me. I can hear Lindsay saying it. I'm just like, this would be such a, a birdie no moment. Although, although that art is pretty funny because they're in the middle of a grassy field with a one-way street and no other cars in sight. <laughs> <Move by. laughs> Pay no attention to the what art actually, behind the curtain. <laughs> what it does do, actually, is it does link into that uh, theme that you identified, Coffee, which I think we did instinctu- um, instinctually, where Ruby doesn't really know how to react to strong female authority. She's very lacking in a mud, like that aspect of her... I don't know. A little bit, toolbox? I guess. I just mostly associate with Tara just being so bad at driving. Yeah, <laughs> so bad. Yeah, that's just scary to be in a car with the, what, someone who doesn't know how to drive, or just very, you know, tied to their emotions Aggressive. about it, and like will cut people off. And of course, <laughs> anyway, Nora development. Yeah, Nora development, which was uh, an interesting little angle to explore because this is the area from where her entire family hails, which she doesn't really know anything about. She's an orphan. She she was orphaned probably what, five, six years old at at most, maybe something like that? Probably or even Possibly earlier. Even yeah. earlier. And so she doesn't know much about her, her culture, and here she is meeting these, these two guys that are not just from her culture, but they are goddamn proud of it they are they are so excited and i know a couple people in my in my own life that are very proud of their 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 cultural heritage they they just love love their culture so the idea of channeling that into these two characters and trying to inform someone on their own background has this very like i think relatable element to it
I'm keeping Nora's reaction to it very Nora. Enthusiastic, but like, uh, I don't know. Like, just sort of uh, a lack of... Not enthusiastic wasn't the right word, but that she's she's both interested in it, but also I have no frame of reference for this, so this is new and interesting information, I guess, to her. Yeah. She's more just kind of, like, open. She's just open to just letting them talk about it, but she's just kind of like, okay. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, think that, 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 that tied into also the fact she doesn't really get along with them. She thinks she's they're a little too yeah. stiff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is funny, because Nora gets along with everyone. I'm still bummed about the... Uh, James Hammerin's avatar didn't make it in. <laughs> <laughs> Was my favorite note I left legitimately. <laughs> oh god, that one uh, frame that <laughs> Floof wanted me to put in <laughs> the smear <flame. laughs> He was so insistent. Yeah, yeah. Not enough. Coffee lore. Not- <laughs> Blake coffee makes lore. sweet coffee because Ruby makes sweet coffee. Now, this goes back to the interesting uh, character pairings, but before we talk about it, just to prove that Floof is insane, these are uh, geographically correct based on a map we yeah. designed. He actually sat, he down, sat down, used a map, and made all... He just basically threw me the map and said, point to where you want them on the wall. And I'm just like, oh, I guess here? And he's like, great, thanks. Came back, and every single shot in this is completely geographically accurate to that. But yes, uh, interesting nice. character combinations. A lot of people really, really commented about how they found John and Blake's interactions just really nice and wholesome. It's a sort of different relationship, not explored in the show, so we got to do whatever we want with it. But yeah. they have this such mellow reaction, because they don't really have like a plot or an arc with each other, they're just essentially... Uh, but in Fruby they did. Well, they did, but... Like, yeah, yeah, they, it, yeah. they did. That wasn't really but... an arc they had necessarily... No, together. but they've, like, enti- interacted yeah. before and, like, are acquainted yeah. with each other in a way you wouldn't say in canon. Like, I don't think you could see them chatting about feelings or team dynamics in, in canon. Yeah, you, you blackmail a guy together and it just forms a bond. Yeah, yeah. And they, it's, it's, people thought it was a very sweet scene, but it was, it was a lot of, Blake doesn't know what to do and she's gonna put her foot in her mouth later. Yeah. She's gonna, she's gonna voice out her, her frustrations in a not so healthy way. A lot of problems get set up in yep. this episode. Uh, one thing yep. during the Nora yeah. scene was certainly setting up the, well, uh, the seawall. Which I, we hadn't intended at first, but then we were like, oh, we have Nora moving these boxes. Can we just... And we just a insert a, a very quick reference a there. A line and that it, it's the equipment. It's the first time you hear about it. It's like this nice little subtle thing that no one picked up on. Everyone's just yeah, like, no oh, did. it's a that's a thing, I guess. It's kind of skimmed over. Yeah. It's like they literally helped get rid of the equipment they needed to keep the walls up. This was a, this exchange between uh, Hazel and Emerald. It actually got a very late edit that required a little bit of re-recording for this episode. Yes. This right? was... In the original version of this scene, the original version of the scene was supposed to be confirming effectively the the death of Oscar, basically kind of establishing what we initially planned with him. As we mentioned, we had plans to kill him off, and but now we have further future plans. Again, kind of nebulous, but we're, 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 we'll get there. It, thankfully, it didn't change the, the outcome of the scene. Yes. I, I really like the scene. It, the idea of Hazel being a parental figure was like on our minds for a bit beforehand. Yeah, it was more just about like changing the tense with which Hazel talks about Oscar, making it more present tense. Yeah. But I feel like it adds a lot, though. I feel like it. Ad- I feel like it really changes what the perception of Hazel's character, because now it's not just that he's still serving Salem out of some sort of. Uh, this is getting into stuff that we haven't revealed, but some some sort of connection with Salem and Oscar is related. It's no longer a past connection that he's still honoring. It's a continuing connection that he is working towards still. Yeah, and I I like this because this is very much. I, I appreciate him as a character because he's so much more emotionally resonant and emotionally com- composed than, say, Cinder, for example. And since Emerald was recruited by Cinder, Cinder's not going to give her the time of asking her what she really wants. Cinder's going to manipulate her into doing what Cinder wants her to do. Hazel, meanwhile, is like, I don't think we should have people on our team that don't know exactly what they want. 
Uh, and he's like, maybe you should have started really asking yourself these questions before you decided to join up with, you know, the grand mommy of all Grimm. But it also yeah, asks but... the question, what has Salem promised each individual person? Because you sort of get the idea that it's a sort of deeply personal reason for each person being there, but a very different one each time. It's not about power for uh, for Hazel, for instance. Yeah. I love the edit here, uh, where I had like this really yes. nice music coming in through the entire Hazel scene, coming into this scene, and then just bonk, cuts the music. <laughs> such a simple edit, but it's such a great effect. And here's Redlock's infamous wall that has every single unique name on it. Oh, the crazy man. <laughs> I mean, it helps. Doesn't Crow say something about morning? Oh, yeah. And it's not just the people on the wall. <laughs> uh, this such an important scene. This is this is basically the turning point for Crow. This is him at his lowest. He's basically been BTFO'd by Ruby. He had everything about his life questioned. And now here's Maria coming along, basically giving him some advice. A bit, but like in her own kind of way. She's not very, she's not super forgiving. You would expect her to be maybe like nicer, like she was with Ruby, like in Brunswick, but she ends up being quite like, hey, fix it yourself. <laughs> You're a grown man. Yeah. She, I can, there's only so much I can say. Now, we really wanted to be very careful with, I remember uh, with the dialogue about alcoholism. Not that we wanted to have like a, was a PBS, uh, after school special about it, but I wanted to make sure that it's both in universe correct, because you, know, you know how fantasi- fantastic characters don't experience like alcoholism the same way that regular people do. But we wanted to find that balance between like under- explaining like rock bottom, explaining like what your relationship with, your f- with like what it does to other people around you, as well as still being a fantasy story where like. You can just pull yourself up by your bootstraps, which is not necessarily a, a real-world thing you can sometimes do. One of the more important elements of this was Maria is not just here to say, hey, Crow, stop drinking. She's here to say, look, you've got some things going on that are... Le-. like She's kind of insinuating there, there's more going on here. She's trying to address the actual problem that's underlying the drinking. The, the drinking is a symptom of something much deeper wrong with Crow. And she's basically challenging him on this self-perception of himself. Challenging him on, like, everything, how he views the world. And just being like, hey, if you keep going down this path, it's just going to destroy you. It's just going to eat you, and you're going to have no one there to take care of you. No one there to help you. And at the same time, you won't be useful to anyone. You won't won't help anyone. The people you care about are going to get hurt. So it's like she's she's trying... Which is... Yeah. Yeah. Which is linked back to, I think, uh, I can't remember who made the, the exact line, but when we whoever said it, we were like, that's exactly it. This is the comment, um, I don't know who your team members are and you don't know mine. Like, that just sort of gut punch works really good for what we carry. Yeah, it just, because you just assume that Miria's always been alone. But no, we established in a lot of background elements, which you can see in the later scenes, that there were more, there's more to... Maria, in, in, in her past. Yeah, She's not just oh. talk. All in Ruby, it's all about these teams, like these partners or these groups. And so to have this kind of one lone huntsman, um, just like modern day infamous, and you don't know anything about the rest of her team, or like she's had to have a team by like the standards of the world. And letting that kind of open and breathe to people of being like, oh shit, I didn't think about that just because of how like canon was set up. And the the other thing to it was definitely we we had to peel back on things. I know people were disappointed we didn't have the talk fight. When you actually look at the talk fight in the context of Volume 6, what does it add? It was one of those really hard questions that we kind of had to ask ourselves when we were trying to, like, fit it in, was what does... Could have asked it a little sooner, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't there to start. We We added the little flashback in. It, it, it was originally fully cut. But yeah, I think it was mostly like one of those things of we kind of need a fight and this would be cool. Yeah. But really, it just said it's like, oh, she lost her eyes. It's, here's a neat, it's a cool fight and she, she loses the so eyes. So we just cut it down to a little bit of a flash sequence so that it can be 
it, we can convey the same information, but without taking up half the episode. I am glad that we did get a flash sequence in the end, but it wasn't there in the script, in the version of the Correct. script. Correct, yeah, read. it was not there originally. Um, now we hear, Here's yeah, <laughs> episode 15, Joyride, where it just adorable. this adorable <laughs> opening by Ruki, but with Ruby on the moped, which was... How did we come up with you? It was you, Jay, wasn't it? you? You said it was Jay. Said, yeah, so <laughs> Ruby the on moped, Vespa. <laughs> yeah, mo- the, she legitimately only has the moped because I wanted it in the opening. We yeah, he it wanted it hard screen. enough. <laughs> I love tiny little cold uh, Blake. Look at her. <laughs> yeah, selling selling uh, Blake being so fucking tired also for this scene. Um, all of them actually. This is a very cute sequence, but all of them are like definitely like tired and a little like out of it like they said everything's still awkward at the the terracotta home because they've essentially been working nine to five jobs um you know during this period if it was animated you'd sort of see maybe a quick montage of them getting up or that kind of thing in the previous episodes but the idea is just that they are run ragged blake especially and i don't know if a lot of people uh visually understood what why blake was on the wall all the time it's because Cordovan's racist. She just gives her, yep. like, the worst job, the most amount of hours. Uh, plain and simply, that's the answer. And here we are pulling up to Maria's very normal home that's actually, like, properly sized, because we, redes- we designed Maria's house from scratch. We didn't have real time to go back and we? redesign... Well, you. <laughs> yeah, you did. Me. You should go into it. I did. It was a joke, and then I just did it for realsies. Oops. Um. I-, I wish she had redesigned the, the, the Kata Ark household, but at the same time, I'm glad she didn't, because I-, nah. I-, I wouldn't have been able to pull from visuals otherwise. Yeah, you gotta know when to stop. You gotta know what's reasonable or not. Uh, um, I hated so putting this coming together. Out and everybody being mad. <laughs> Every well, be, well, not mad, but still not getting getting along. Well, they're getting along here, I, I okay. Love- but like, it, what's going to happen very soon is going to be picking at the 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 very thin glue that's holding them together and just ripping out all yeah. the rotted core to it. Oh, I want to say so. We knew this, like that Blake was gonna like blow up. And and I think we were all a bit worried on it. Like we thought it's like okay, this isn't very fair, but we felt like we touched upon something that was like very good, like the scene, the dynamic going on. Um, and there was like a lot of pull on the writing. Like even towards the end, you were like changing stuff. This was yeah. This is one of those scenes. I mean, this is also one of those scenes where I thought the lead up into it was a little. I I didn't edit before I even managed. No, I recorded it. Felt it wasn't right, and I had to rewrite it. To, to properly record it again because I felt like it didn't flow naturally between like the dialogue, and before anyone else. Oh, also, shout out to the frame photos, real quick. The, we passed them, but whatever. To the what? Maria's team. Oh yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, More of an art thing though than a writing thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but um, it wasn't. Was it in the script or was it just mentioned that we wanted it? I think it was in the script. I think because we wrote. Um, I think we wrote or came across this episode first or something, but on on the here's the part where we stole from Volume Nine. Yeah, legend. Uh, yeah, that's actually. I was I... going to say, like, we had this. For the record, the part that I rewrote was not the explanation of the Silver Eyes. That is untouched since we finished it back in September. And the section after that, yeah. where they get the fight started, it, that's it was a lead up of the fight. Yeah. Um. So that was. Oh, I I want to talk about Blake because I think. We had, uh, what made it hard was we had this kind of, like, thought process they're going through on, like, what do, do your memories make you, how much, how much is that give and take, um, and then also, like, what it was, I think the intent of the scene was Yang is kind of, like, starting this beef with Blake, and Blake just doubles down on it, and I think in trying to, like, make the thread of the conversation, um, like the idea of memories like making that like a follow through it like lessened the fact that like yang kind of started this are you saying this version or the old version uh no the new version because the new version is more coherent on like the 
the d- 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 the memories and who makes you kind of things like wouldn't you get rid of your old memories of your mistakes and bad memories sorry yeah yeah um so it made more sense on that like conversational standpoint but we lost like yang has started the fight and blake has finished quote unquote finishes the fight yeah that was a i think in trying to fix it i accidentally made it a little too heavy-handed on Blake's end. I, I feel bad about that. Yeah, you made Yang a little too reasonable in trying to keep the conversation. Part of that was on delivery, but like, because yeah, think- like delivery-wise, that was the issue I rewrote it initially. Because delivery, it just wasn't working. I wasn't getting the sound that I wanted out of any of the conversation. It just didn't make any sense. Because I think in the original version, Yang was, you know, as as Coffee said, like started it a bit more unreasonable, and her way of 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 in the original version, rounding that off was her to realize she's, like, about to say something far beyond what she should, and she, like, controls herself and then ends the conversation and leaves. That's sort of her... was her original arc in that conversation, but now she just seems more reasonable overall, and therefore made, makes Blake look less reasonable. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think that's what we lost, but I think, functionally, it was far more important to get the silver eyes set up with, like, meaningful consequences. So, overall, I think the scene is is good, but a third rewrite would probably, you know, maybe we could have got a bit more, but we were pressed for time. Yeah. It places a lot of agency on Blake that... It places a lot of agency on Blake in that she's the one who misinterprets Yang's words and takes it very personally, and... It just kind of, she overflows with everything she's had yeah. pent up. Yeah. Thankfully, it really, it, it does fit for her character. Like, she's in, she's tired, exhausted. Yang has been, like, rejecting her, kind of trying to make amends this entire volume. It's not out of character for her to assume the worst from Blake's, uh, from Yang's words. Oh. On to more, the, the actual Silver Eyes thing before we get more into the, because uh, we're going to be talking about that argument forever. Yeah, yeah, hit it. Hit it. Um, we go into memory. We we had this idea. I think Jay was the one that came up with the analogy about the book, which I think is a great analogy for the the idea of the silver eyes and the type of memory loss that it causes and the degradation. We have some fun ideas how to play with this in the future. That's for sure. It did surprise us. And I mentioned this again and again. It completely blindsided us by the fact that that volume nine started touching upon almost the exact same thing in a completely different way, mind you, because re- the reincarnation featured in volume nine is not the idea of slowly losing your memories, but touching upon the idea of what makes you you, including your memories, is such an integral part of this conversation. And hey, guess what? Our car- characters here actually have the conversation. Uh, as opposed yes. to like, it's a very interesting conversation. Oh yeah. Yes. Can you really say you're only your good? And I like the different uh, aspects. It's not like there's the good version and then the the incorrect version, like the duality argument, where it's not really a choice. It's there's obviously the right thing to do and then the other thing that you write just to make sure there's two things. Like both points are well reasoned. Like, is a person their memories or is a is a uh, are a collection of memories a person? Like, what are what makes a person themselves i remember we actually got off into the weeds talking about this just on our own because it's such an interesting topic um and of course shum came in another person that just came in out of the blue and just like hey i'm animating this and we're like she she shum didn't even have my audio my audio didn't come until like i think two weeks before uh about there like i i was very lazy on audio and i feel very guilty about that constantly but Shum basically did did an online generator like Microsoft Sam to do it, and it just came out brilliant. I'm not sure. I may have given her a link to one of those. I think that's how she may have timed it. I can't remember. I know I helped someone do one of those. Oh, the finger quotes was in the script. I just want to point out. Like, oh yeah, that yeah, that definitely. It it fits the way this descends into like. Panic, I feel, is very Shum good. actually goes a little yeah. overboard, I think, I feel- with, like, oh, they're gripping each other's clothes. Like, I, I don't know if they got physical, but oh, it, I love it, that. It, it, it helps. <laughs> it actually feels great. It, it definitely mm-hmm. helps, yeah, yeah. That was a great animation from Shum. But also, I feel like the way she presents it here, it kind of... Because Yang is being a little bit dense in this exchange as well. Like, Blake is taking it personally, but 
Yang isn't picking up any of the signals that Blake is putting down either. Which I actually like. Like, I hate characters that have the script. Like, I absolutely hate characters that have the script and know how to act. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but Yang, I mean, like, but I feel like even if without the script, you could kind of tell that Blake is saying something a little bit more than what she's yeah, saying. Yeah, she's trying Which to get is, across I guess more. it's like, it's just kind of a personality difference, I guess, because Blake is very introspective while Yang is... Not. Extrospective, and of outro. course, the <laughs> what's great there is also then the immediate pivot into Ruby at the very end, where it's like yeah. she has all this anger built up towards everyone, but she's directing it at, at Yang. But at the last second, when Ruby and Weiss try to interject themselves, Blake just turns and backhands Ruby with her words. Yeah, she's she's already kind of let loose, and and she, it's Ruby ends up being a, a target of that. Um, but I, the the immediate regret I think is, is palpable. Like she, oh, she especially because then Ruby has claps back, her. where she's like, yeah. "Yeah, no, Yang wasn't the only one hurt that you left, Blake." And it's like, yeah, like, which people don't talk about in canon because it's all about the bees yeah, it's, for the writers and the fans. Blake and Ruby were friends. Mm-hmm. Like, if you want to presume that Blake, you know, Team Ruby were all collectively friends. Blake left Weiss and Ruby as well. Like, it doesn't matter that Weiss yeah. didn't realize it at the time. When she comes back and learns, oh yeah, Blake left of her own accord. It's like, oh, ow, what the hell? I thought we had something more yeah. than this. Mm-hmm. And so having having that come back at her, especially after she does say the very mean line of, uh, you're not replacing Pira, because that is harsh. Oof. Like, when we stumbled yeah. across that line, we were like, oh, this is gonna hurt. Yeah. <laughs> I think we went silent as well. Like, whoever said it, said it. And then we just yeah. quiet for a minute, I, like the scene I, I itself. I want to say that like, was me that said it, but I can't remember now. Oh, really? I wanted to say it's me, but who knows? It's been, like, so long since we finished the script. I, I, okay. That it is it's one like, brain it blurs syndrome. in together. Oh, we can both agree. It wasn't Jay. We can agree <laughs> that we all wrote a really fucked up scene. Everybody, <laughs> we did it. <laughs> Emotional damage. Clap, clap. I love the joke about uh, the seat's not even adjustable <laughs> for some reason. I just, it just, it resonates. I was adamant that stays in the script. Yeah, yeah. So I think that was a little remnant of like the seat isn't adjustable, and by the end, Yang realized it's always been adjustable, and she's never seen it. Kind of a little bit of a parallel to her not seeing Blake's efforts because she isn't like being open to them. Um, but the I think that later half of the conversation got like got like we got rid of it because it was hard to get Maria. It was supposed to actually happen before they went into the house. So it was supposed to be a conversation out in front of Maria's house that we ended up cutting. Mm. Um, and of course, people got kind of get. Well, there, there are one or two people that actually got irritated by the way Yang kind of has this moment of like, oh, she's trying. And everyone's like, well, of course she's trying. But it's like, you don't understand. There's a difference between knowing something and like understanding. It, it's the difference between tasting and digesting food. It's like, you, sure, you know it, but like, it, it, it's different once you kind of have it completely completely in mind i don't know how to describe it better than that really can anyone else make it's it's kind of like um fundamentally you can like you see a video of like people getting a cord stuck under a thing but then they do some fancy loop with the cord to get it out from under the thing without even like moving the thing itself if you've ever seen those kinds of videos and it's like fundamentally you can understand they're doing some kind of fancy mathematical knot trick and it's like it totally makes sense but it doesn't click unless you do it yourself or, like, if you see it yeah. in person or whatever. Which fits in with uh, Yang really good. She, I, it was after we wrote the scene that Raymond was like, oh, this fits really good with the talk she had with... Yatsuhashi, um, back in volume one. At the Yeah, in volume one or yeah, two. It was volume, it was volume one where she was basically trying to figure out how to help her team and where she's, like, really frustrated with everyone's out. Very much a lot of mirrors to the dysfunction of Team Ruby back in volume one. Yeah, but ultimately, is Yang needs someone to kind of talk at to work through her things. Yeah, she, she's more verbal in that sense versus like Blake, who's more internal. I feel. Yeah, as as seen here, Blake coming to apologize to Ruby completely on her own volition because she 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 started to like really internalize exactly what she said because she had been pen just penting it up. 
Yeah, when she came off of the high of it. Like, she knew it was bad in the moment, but coming off of it, she was like, okay, <laughs> need to <laughs> need to do some things about that, because that was not fair to her. Um, to a certain degree, though, because her observations weren't necessarily wrong. Um, no, and that's the point. That's, that's the, um, I think, a mark of a good argument, where both sides have a point. If it's just, like, one-sided, you hear the bad things that you've done, and there's no reason that that it's a um that both sides could be fighting well then it's, it's again it's just someone has the script but the idea that ruby has made substantial strange calls and has a lack of judgment in certain areas helps yeah realizing there's an issue helps with like g getting better from it um even though it's not like a blatant issue like it's not ruby's fault the things turn out the way they do but keeping in that in mind i think is useful i, I like iliac doing the the parallel images here where you just we slide over and show the <laughs> <laughs> ruby being crushed it's perfect it's great yeah i i, li I like i like this bit a lot because it kind of rings true to it what i think callie says in um is it the end of volume four or is it five? No, it's volume four, where she's like, the first thing about making mistakes is stop making old ones. Yes. Was it? Yeah, and I feel like... Five. No, 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 volume... I, no, it's volume, volume four, because we condensed okay. four and five Blake's arc. Yeah. Um, ah, yes, so, sorry. So Blake ends up being like, she realizes in the moment that Ruby's like, I'll get us back to where she was, and like, to try to prevent, I think... Or at least how I see it is, she's trying to prevent Ruby from making old mistakes that she has made. And it's like, I want to kind of lead you off. Because they make a lot of effort in canon to, I think, show that Blake and Ruby are very similar kind of characters. It's just Blake has gotten... She's lost that optimism about her. She's let the world kind of get at her. And so in that way, I kind of like seeing like Blake as like... Not a mentor, but like an older person. Like she's been there, and she wants to kind of like you know, guide Ruby or be there. It's weird because in that way. Uh, it just made me realize: it, does that same apply to Weiss and Yang? And it kind of does. They both have very strong parental issues. Now that I think about it, They're, Weiss yeah. and Yang are a little bit a mirror of each other. I find that just interesting how that that works out. And which one of the parents is the is the negative influence? I mean, Willow's not great, but Weiss's problem is with her her father. And, Primarily, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and obviously Raven for Yang. So it's a sort of I don't know, oh. difference between. Oh my God, no! Yeah, <laughs> it's such a beautiful. Piece based of art. upon art she did back in Volume Five, uh, which she yeah. and more of Cardo's racism. Yes, it, this entire <laughs> wall like, needs yeah, to be scrubbed. The... We, we must see this ugly. Yeah, yeah. Concrete. Get rid of that faunus graffiti. Meanwhile, <laughs> the most beautiful mural you've ever laid your eyes upon. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, this was episode 16 was originally supposed to be what episode 17 became and we were very yeah, frustrated stuff got shuffled we, down. we had a running <laughs> gag uh or at least we had some running gag we wanted we to. wanted it to be 16 <laughs> because then we wanted it to line up with onsen 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 back in volume five where we we have the the swimsuit onsen episodes like we have those kinds of episodes in episode 16 but we just we couldn't manage it we couldn't manage it we we can we can get back on track. You know, there's always future volumes. Yeah, polar sunbathing. Ever heard of it? <laughs> oh Jesus! Oh Nora with the sand. Anyway, blasters. so this is <laughs> this is a cute start. You think it's going to be like another casual bit, and then wham! Pierre's mom is here. <laughs> you thought you had seen the last of her if you were dumb. <laughs> this episode was so long in the making. One thing that I definitely set out to do at the start of volume four was after especially reflecting on how poorly I thought I handled Nora's and Pyrrha's falling out in volume three, um, which I, I don't think was terrible, but it could have been handled a lot better, at least lead up wise. I wanted all of team Juniper to visit the Arcos household and get their, get some kind of closure on Pyrrha. Like, especially after Vol the canon volume four had John integrating Pira's freaking equipment into his own without a single shred of guilt about it. Like he he, ta he, so he takes one sad look at it and then never comments on it the rest of his time. True. We wanted to follow up on it. I think very briefly we were like, what if uh, Pira's family is not okay with ha him having done it? But like very quickly, we, I think we shifted into Nora. Yeah, and well, it, not just Nora, but like the idea is, what if they were okay with it? Like we, we all wanted to be like, what if they like the sad moment? 
but we, we struck upon the ideas like these are very well adjusted individuals these are very well adjusted parental figures they 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 grieved they they are still in some ways grieving but they're they're very emotionally intelligent they wouldn't be this they're this very calm presence they're not so hurt there's not they're not so hurt to have lashed out against peers teams yeah. and like only they friends. know how to compartmentalize yeah Oh, uh, can, can, you know, there's a line early in the volume where Nora's like, you don't cut a good figure in a dress. And there was a joke here where Pierre's dad was supposed to be like, yeah, your shoulders are too big. <laughs> oh, I forgot about <laughs> it, that. It got cut, but it was it was such a, like, a goof. Because <laughs> uh, he is a goof. You know, he's just a dude. He's a dad. <laughs> I, I love how much because we, i think we were trying to struggling with how like we were going to get so much information conveyed to them at some point but then we just struck upon like well no they would just naturally know a lot because pyrrha would be very forthcoming about all of her friends she'd be very like yeah at least all the 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 honest things so the idea of mm -hmm. the idea of troy walking up to to john and being like john ark uh short sweet rolls off the tongue ladies love it <laughs> just god i love that moment so much <laughs> If 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 John was alive and dating like Pira, I I think you'd be fully mortified. Be like, oh god, <laughs> oh my god, I. <laughs> but, but he takes it very well in this context. It, it, god, I I if only there were another life where I could have kept Pira alive and have them meet. But like, oh, that would have been so much fun. <laughs> uh, but this episode's already so much fun. Oh, yeah. until it isn't. <laughs> Of course, uh, uh, Nora throughout the entire thing being quiet, and it, it's one of those things where you, you really do feel that Nora is not out of character, but just out of, well, I guess, quote unquote, out of character. Out of her element. She's uncomfortable. Yeah. She can't really keep up the cheerful persona that she usually does quite so easily. I think, here. like, every single scene in this episode, it was like, Nora's uncomfortable, Nora's uncomfortable, Nora's uncomfortable over and over again. <laughs> Nora's mad, Nora's sad, <laughs> Nora's very sad. <laughs> Nora does the good thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, but it, it's nice to get some dynamic range out of her. I, I, also, should we talk about the design of, of Troy? <laughs> we came to should we talk about his name because his name was not meant to be troy that was just a placeholder <laughs> We're like, it, would, it would be too goofy if we named him troy because of helen of troy and then it would it's stuck too I mean, late stuck. oops it's yeah. oops never use a know, never use point. a goofy placeholder because you'll probably nice end reference. up with it oh we, we didn't even get to talk about <laughs> nora's sem oh, sorry pure semblance activating just how goofy that was oh yeah oh yeah my god we just wanted more nor like normal pure shit like it's like oh i didn't do it in the blaze of glory in the tournament like it didn't come to me in the moment it was just like oh it was it was, it was like a saturday and she, you know making breakfast <laughs> Her being a prodigy has... Oh, yeah. I was going to say, I remember Maud had mentioning that people were surprised that everyone was calling his detailing of Roman and Dio here hot. Like, he was like, wait, what? <laughs> they all look like supermodels. <laughs> Everything he draws just oozes sex appeal. The man just needs to realize. <laughs> yeah, he just draws. I'm not pouting. Again, I, I just love her. Cute. <laughs> yeah, the characterization between these two, I mean, without trying to flanderize them, is always just fun. Like the idea he used the way the the way that Roman describes not being able to hear Neo because he wasn't looking at her it was just yeah. oh, I love that visual reference. And then like the throwing of stuff at his head has just been great. Like that was an almanac is my one of my favorite Roman lines. Yeah, they're so full of personality. It's again it's fun to see them bounce off. Very each other difficult just by to not overwrite them. So incredibly hard. Because <laughs> yeah, you just want to keep yeah, going. Like if you ever write a character like this, you'll understand. It, you just want to keep going with them. You just want to keep having them like zing these lines out and make these jokes and wisecracks and do silly things. And apparently, my was that image grainy for anyone else? That uh, yeah, it was. A, it had a weird thing. I don't know if the, if that image will appear that way. In the final commentary, but for that a minute there, weird. it was weird. Why did it do that, I wonder? I wonder if that was a rendering issue. Maybe, or maybe it was just like a display from the thing we're watching. Yeah, so, fucking Neo going a little, <laughs> a little serious at the end of this thing. Yeah, they, the... Foreshadowing for further points that we want to do with it. Oh, totally. 
<laughs> yeah, definitely hardcore. These but, no um, spoilers. Yeah, but the, these two. There are no links. These two have a roller coaster ahead of them. It's it's exciting. Yes. He looks up into Neo's eyes. The there are I also no links. Really love Neo the convo here. Them just kind of be like, R- Roman's doing the reasonable thing. Is like, how do I, how do I go to figure shit out? Doing research. Every book is written by Oz. He's like, I'm fucked. And Neo being oh, like, actually, we gotta go back. That reminds me. This scene was originally. Don't, we'll get to this bit in a second. But this scene was originally in Volume Five, a library like investigation of of uh, trying to figure right. out about the, the ghost Oz. Was a Volume Five scene we wanted yeah. to do. It, Haven. Yeah, you also you guys also talked about him like actually going to see fucking An charlatan <laughs> psychic yeah, <and> yeah. yeah. <laughs> mistral. That was like, a bit more hey, goofy, but here can you do something uh, for, for me. A little for the more record, serious. in that close up on Neo, I just wanted to point out because I I went, did my research on that. She's signing the word for nothing in sign language. Like I wanted to actually, she's not just holding her hands like that for fun or for posing. Like, it's actually what she's supposed to be saying. <laughs> I would love Ugh. that as a visual element going, like, I, I wish Rooster Teeth did do that. Like, it's not even like a complaint against, uh, you know, Ru- Ruby's awful, blah, 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 blah. I just think a sign language character, one, is fun, but two, is also just, it's good to see, I think. You know, it's more, you know, It's entertaining. It's There's a lot of characterization yeah. and speaking literally with your hands with, with uh, sign yeah, language. Yeah, having those sorts of varieties of characters very off of the beaten track for unusuality. It's kind of, it's one of the reasons why we didn't change Cordovan's design, which I know some people were probably questioning that, but I, especially and some others in the sketches thought it would just be flat out interesting if Cordovan was just literally a little person. It's like, no, she's not small because she's old. She's just small, small because she was born that yeah. way. It's just genetic. Yeah. And so it's just, it's just having that sort of variety in person. It's like, oh yeah, there's there, not all the people here in this planet look the same way. Adds more to the world. Oh god. Yeah. Like like this room the, does. The, 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 <laughs> yeah. the odyssey that was this room. Jesus Christ, I think. <laughs> the poster. God. The Odyssey, oh. good one, good one, good joke. Uh, oh my god! <laughs> oh shit! My... I didn't even mean that. <laughs> but, uh... Oh god, no. Uh, so I think part of it was like, I definitely wanted to show that poster. I worked really hard to make that poster, uh, but then I made a really shitty like mock up of the room, and then Coffee was like, "This is terrible. Let me fix this." No, 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 no! Well, Don't forget there was, a J. Oh, yeah, there was a J in, in the in middle of that. Jay was like, "I'm gonna fix it," and then it went down to me. It's like I'll fix it, which is the the general course of things. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just love you know, little background. Good. Before before we get into like the actual amazing choice uh, and why that was made for the voice actor, I just want to point out, does anyone remember that there's this big long conversation we had that in Pura's closet is just reams and reams of pumpkin peat oh, promotional so material? Sad. That yeah, that in. it's because I put pumpkin peat on the bed. <laughs> <laughs> like she, she, she's a girl. She would have had like a stuffed animal or two. It makes sense. But the idea is that because of the like the contract, she was just given like eight hundred a lot of or, merchandise. Yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh, you're right. <laughs> she's given a lot of p- pumpkin peat swag. I really like the scene because in the back of my head, one of the big elements of Nora and Ren that just doesn't really get touched on is their orphans. Ren at least had a mother and a father that seemed to be relatively well adjusted, but. Nora never had that. She's never had that. And this is the first mm. woman, I think, in her life. In a similar way to Ruby, that Ruby has a little bit of that kind of starved nature of female authority figures. Nora has almost no reference for what it's like to have a mother. So yeah, it's, it's it's worse for her. No no parental figures. No parental figures, figures period. So this is like the first time. It's not even want for a mother. It's a want for somebody. Which makes hurting losing Pira so so fucking bad. <laughs> Kitty just knocked all these images out of the park. For the record, yeah, Pira's I, holding I, this I, picture. I, She's holding the camera in that picture. Yeah, it's like a vertical photo. But um, one thing I like about Pira's letters, her implying that Nora is like a sister to her. It's like when uh, when you and Auntie Cass, Cass had like fights. How did you make things right? Uh, did anyone guess who Anti Cast was? Did anyone else guess that reference? Cassandra. No, that's also another <laughs> reference. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Cassandra, I think. Uh, some other Greek thing. It was I, can't another, think I think it was one of the other like major wives in I, the uh, Trojan War. 
Is it Kasuka or something? I don't know. I literally just shouted the name out now because as well, soon as Cassandra, you said, like, did anybody get the hint with anti cast I was like, wait a yeah. minute. <laughs> I don't, like, the thing is, like, we did our research back then, but my brain is Swiss cheese. I don't remember who uh, she was in the <laughs> Yeah, we room. did do an effort. Write it in the comments. <laughs> but yeah. Um, uh, oh, who was, what was the name of this actress? Um, Coffee. Uh, Ken Koi. It was Ken Do you want to talk about so, it? Yeah, uh, Coffee um, was the one that got her uh, through Saito, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what it was is it was if there was ever going to – we've always said, like, we're not going to do full voice acting, but if there's a, a, a string of lines or a small thing that we feel like would be enhanced by it, we would. Um, and this scene, I felt, was, like, probably – Now or never perfect for it yeah i was like if we're not gonna do it for this scene we're not gonna do it for anything because this is like pira's dying letter <laughs> like the letter she wrote before she died um and so we were uh the weekly uh the weekly schedule was like a little hectic so i was like hey kel i really want this to happen i'll just do it so i got in contact with saito who is a sketchy and, and does shit and also remnant um, and he got me in line with some voice actors, and we ended up with Ken Koi and like working through that. She she was a joy to work with. I think I could have been better at conveying some stuff, but we only what she turned we out only was had to amazing. do two takes. I think ultimately, I think it was like two, but I think the second like course had like multiple yeah. takes in it. Yeah, and oh god, we Frank and edited a bit of it. Like we took different different versions and made the perfect version i believe didn't we right i, I had the frankenstein some things together but that's just that's just the nature of audio editing yeah, yeah oh yeah just a little bit here like a direction also coffee now, god you, damn you pitched for this beautiful yeah yeah but the um, scene is your idea too so it's like a follow-up of nor crying into pierre's mom and then like ren being like supportive like uh, initially not like he's just like i'll just be here and then it's like okay and turns around and gives her the hug she needs. You know, that's an advantage to having Renora Cannon is that they can have moments together. It's also nice to see Nora have her second big emotional outburst and then this time for it to end on a much more positive note for her instead of how negative it was the last time she outbursted. Yeah. Hmm. A little catharsis for Team Juniper. And now we're going into the catharsis uh, episode beach. for Team Team Ruby. Ruby, Ayo. And what, what I like is like, uh, what was very important, especially, I think it's the line that some of these were already crossed out, where she's like describing some of the activities. And the idea that like, she's already done these with Team Juniper. She stumbles over herself. We, we, as fun as this is, there's still that underlying current of like, things aren't quite right. You know, it's like, are things going to kind of stumble and fall? And, but you can see that that yeah. Ruby's really intent on making things right, and everyone else starts to kind of get behind her, and that's like kind of infectious. Like, all right, guys, this is going to be tough. We can do it. I love that feeling. Weiss's delivery, your delivery of Weiss's, oh god, not this again. Just <laughs> oh, it's so self- real. <laughs> like, I feel it in her. I was like, oh, oh god, god this yeah. Again. <laughs> and of course, this leads to. The infamous, the legendary, the perverted swimsuit scene. Beach. Beach episode. Beach episode. <laughs> this was... Uh, uh, we got a lot of flack for the onsen episode from not an insignificant number of people. There were a lot of people that didn't didn't like the onsen. Some a little more vocal than others. Cowards. Cowards. Yeah. But uh, this, this is us poking fun <laughs> at them a little bit. Um, <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah. But still within within reason. Yeah. We're like, oh, best day ever. They have a whole laundry list of things they want to do. And Ruby just puts on beach. Yeah. Um, beach day. And it's, guess what? Uh, you're fucking way up north, <laughs> girl. It's not going to be good. The beach fucking yeah, sucks. This is, this yeah, is the... the beach is made of pebbles and gravel. It's a pebble like, beach, it's not... like an English pebble beach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we you talked can't... about it in like, like it's oh yeah, it's England, it's grey stones and like cold. <laughs> not good at all. It immediately catches near hypothermia by going inside. Yeah, yeah, the only one not to get hypothermia this volume is literally Weiss. <laughs> <laughs> now, Everyone we were talking else. About... Oof. Did we want to talk about, some people got really weird and do we want to have to hyper analyze the the summer autumn dateline thing? Like people were like, but she would clearly know that. I'm like, 
we had a big discussion about it when oh, we yeah. wrote it about the joke. And if you ever have to explain yeah, a joke, yeah. then it's not funny. But the idea is, yes, Ruby is an outdoor survivalist, but she's still Ruby. She has like Moments. these weird gaps in her enthusiastic knowledge. She just it never occurred to her that there's a like the difference summer uh, yeah. and winter dynamic. It just yeah, she forgot. It's, it's thinking about hot Christmas for Australia and being like, yeah. oh yeah, I guess it would be cold during it December. Happen- it literally happened during <clears throat> production where like I mentioned that it was like cold out and like Jay is like, man, it's really warm today. And it's like, wait, what? How? And, like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's easy to lose track of that kind of thing, no matter what. Like, no matter how much of a survivalist you are, you yeah. can lose track of also, the seasons. Also, I'm traveling menstrual for like six to eight months, so. So she's she's gotten used to being on like the the the, the hemisphere the, that kind of time pace. Also, Southern they literally equator. just went to a spring festival before they left. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody forgets it's Haru Matsuri. That's why. Come on, guys, the, um, let it click in. Re- reoccurring gag here: no one has money. <laughs> Yeah, everyone's poor. They got paid out, but they still, it wasn't like a full payment and they had to split it several ways. And the only so person like, been here for a in month this group two. that has had a consistent job the entire time is Or Blake. income. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And she's just having, she's, she she got she's them, fun yeah. with it. It's great. Yeah, it's I mean, very cute. <laughs> I really do love how, like, you made Blake the best character in the show. <laughs> hey, yo. <laughs> It makes it hard to write for her, but goddamn, it's worth it. <laughs> you see, this is the Blake we should have had, damn it. <laughs> yes, Delightful yes. bookworm. Uh, also, Yang, uh, Yang called back to uh, Cardin's line. Yes. <laughs> it's like, ooh, that's a bunch of zeros. Oh, God, the dance floor. That was a cute little callback. Oh. I love this entire section. It was so much fun to write. I, I, I wish we had gotten full art, full disclosure. It's one of those scenes that I really wish we had gotten full art for, but it wasn't vital compared to other scenes in this episode, so it was kind of left more to the wayside. I so, so wanted to see Ruby running around trying to spell her name. Uh, and we, 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 had to, we had to jury rig a lot together, Jay. I remember me and Jay worked on this. This was fast start, as yeah. we call it. Just like, uh oh. Yeah, this was. We just got to fill the scene, and we didn't want to do popsicle sticks. Uh, it's also very important to show that Ruby's back on her feet, for sure. Very important because this that was one of the things that we struggled the the level of where Ruby's healing is at, and it's very important that she is pretty good right now. She's basically like healed, ready to go. You know, a little bit stiff, yep. probably. Yeah, um, just stretch and don't do a marathon. <laughs> just before she gets fucked up again oh god over protective wise we give you one white rose per season oh. no kidding there's been multiple white rose moments but you're at a deficit you're, you're, you're gonna have to lean into like <laughs> gotta feed the shippers what? we give us a freezer burn too yeah. you know everybody gets yeah, a little I was gonna moment. say man coffee is big chant through this entire volume once we finally got like a very good picture of the episode <laughs> of the, the entire volume on whole was a uh, bumble it's a Ladybug season, ladybug season, ladybug season. I was, yeah, I kept saying it was the ladybug season. <laughs> and you might think that's weird because it's so late in the series that Blake yells at Ruby, but I'm just like, no, 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 but they got so many good interactions, I swear to God. It's the ladybug season. <laughs> Listen, having a fight is healthy for yeah. the developing romance. You gotta have the ladybug fight. Mm. Uh, this was... And then makeup. Hoodie did... did <laughs> uh, this was a another legendary... It's coming up soon was a legendary image because... We had to help. We had to tell Hoodie that she like goofed on Ruby's. Like it was another one of those like everything went wrong where like the character design. Yeah. Just because again we didn't have like our notes weren't the most consistent with things, but like Ruby was missing her no Weiss was missing her shawl. I think Ruby was missing her cape in one. Yep. Blake was, was in her old the outfit. The one where Blake, Blake was, was also her yeah her old outfit. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we cannot keep her and, like, in the, the right the time place. of day. She didn't know what time of day it was. She was making it like way too late. Yeah, it looked really dark, and it was like, oh, it's not, it's not that late yet. Which is a learning experience, not for the artists, but for us. Like, it's yeah. seventy people and make getting it, making like, more yeah. notes. Mm-hmm. I, 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 whenever I make commentary like that, I'm, I'm trying to make it clear it's not typically the artist's fault that, that something like that happens. No, no, they get a <laughs> script and they're like, okay, I'll do my best, and it's, it's. It's us. It's up to yeah. us to like answer questions and like fill every them with things. Volume, even if they would not Every volume, we had. Oh god, I remember everyone was terrified by adding that sound effect in. That was 
that, that was a great effect. Oh, the sound it effect. Immediately signals, hey, fun <laughs> time's heart over. Effect. Heart attack. For me, I, that's not the sound in our country, so I'm like, it's just a sound. It's so fine. It's, it's just funny. Yeah. For um, <laughs> yeah, it just freaks out Americans. <laughs> yeah, very Pavlovian response. Like, oh god, not again. But, but if so is really it the tornado? Good. Like, what is it? it tornado, tornado child, yellow, or... yellow, Amber, Amber Alert. alert. Yeah, Amber yeah, Alert. It. It's, it's uh, which, yeah, a yeah. lot of alerts. The Amber Alerts. But, which... um, and then we have Rolling Girl, which is kind of low-key confirmed on the, that's Ruby's uh, Ruby's phone. a nerd. She, she, she's a no-talker. Yeah. Hot- yeah, Hatsune Miku exists in all universes. That's yeah, she's word. kind of a constant. The world is hers, so it adds up. Yeah. She's um. a pop star by day and huntress by night. Um, <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> you know someone's drawn it. Oops. You know someone's done it. No, I was just being like, you're just describing Penny at this point. <laughs> um, but no, the... Uh. Google Street View. I love, sorry, DeLoreans. I had one DeLorean model for one slightly futuristic looking car, and it's in every 3D I did. Also, there is a hidden Saddam Hussein reference in here, and I'm not going to explain what that means. It's, an, it's a meme. It's a meme. It's not that bad. It's a meme. Look it up. The, uh, I was going to say, though, kind of following, following the earlier conversation... Every volume of Fixing Ruby has proven new and newer problems. Like, we fix the old problems and the new ones crop up as a result of them. Like, as things go yeah. forward. In terms of production. Yeah, yeah, it's just like, like every time the, the production grows any significant, it jumps. Yeah, we try out new things. We realize what's better, what's, like, what we should improve on, what what things aren't as useful to, like, the production of things. Got uh, the Adam I, reveal. I remember... Yeah, I remember when I read this scene in the script, my exact comment was, uh-oh, bitch, we're in danger. <laughs> <laughs> exactly the vibe, though. That's the exact I, vibe I we wanted. I think you drew, um, the go- like, technically speaking, the goriest scene in this volume. Like, you had a guy being cut yeah. down. Yeah, probably. I think we imagined it, or it might have even been in the Smart. script, that it was more silhouetted. Yeah, it was much more like black but, um, and white silhouettes. Uh, I mean, I asked about it, like, hey, what's the gore level we're feeling here? How how deep do you want me to go in on this? And you kind of gave it a little vague, like, you should probably hide some of it, be a little tasteful. I was like, okay, I'll hide it with red. <laughs> I'll hide this gore and It works. It fits the, uh-oh, we're in trouble thing, which I think was really important. Like, we did want a string of Argus... Like, it was very intentional that it was, like, eh, a lot of more emotional stuff, just kind of, like, a little lay down. And then at the end of what you think is, like, the best day ever, the beach episode or whatever, Adam comes along here to fuck your shit up. Yeah. Um, here to kick in your sandcastle. I, I will say, though, we, it, the weekly stretched it yeah, out. Yeah, <laughs> and I feel yes. really bad about this scene, and this action sequence, because Aiden, for the full version of this was working on a fully 3d modeled action sequence for this and it was starting to look really damned good but because of just yes. scheduling conflicts and the things he couldn't finish it by the deadline yeah but he made the trailer he, he ended up making the trailer for the full version which still looks fantastic mm. which scared me he, he, he literally i was like uh, what is this <laughs> And before you say, it's like, why don't you give your artists more time? We give them plenty of time. But you also need a deadline, or else people will just continue making it, stuff forever. We're, we're having that right now. Yeah, yeah. we we'll procrastinate forever. Like, Aiden, Aiden himself worked on, like, the Volume 5 fight, like, the first 3D fight, for months after the volume was finished. And, like, months he's, after the full version was out. He's still working I think, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. So, at some point, you gotta kind of be firm and be like, here's the structure we're working with, but you need to deliver. Yeah. Because it's an interesting thing to talk about while this fight happens is what the sketchies get from it. Because, yeah, you Celtic's not paying us is the old joke, but what we are getting paid in is, like, experience for <laughs> ourselves. If, if you can follow my logic there, where I mean, like... No, yeah, get, let, me, let, me, let me word yeah. it. A lot of sketchies take it more as a personal challenge or, like, yes. work, place to yeah. work creatively. And it's like, ooh, this is interesting. How do I convey this? How do I draw this? Oh, like, what kind of art direction I want to go with this? Yeah, yeah. here's an opportunity to work on this project just for fun. Mm. Yeah, like, not, not all the- of Fruby's people are like, oh, Fruby all the time. Most of them are like, okay, I did my one or two things. Yeah, and then just, they just like, opt out. It's fine. Yeah. Um, with their life. Um, mm-hmm. Now, this fight was long in the planning. We really wanted this, this downhill fight with Adam from, I think, the, this was a little bit before pre-production. We kind of had this idea. 
Um, we didn't quite know how it was going to take, and we didn't realize the exact character beats that were going to be in it, but a lot of great things came in. Obviously, there's a lot of collateral in this fight that's very important to convey. Um, it was more conveyed in the audio because like, you couldn't cover everything in the visuals, but a lot of the character yeah. beats were touched. We, of course, had the goofy moment where Ruby pulls aside a little bit, and she's like, we literally can't afford to lose this. I... I Oh, there was more she, to that. There was originally. a lot Yeah, more. She, they can't lose the deposit because no money. <laughs> if anybody was wondering why she said that, it's, they have no money, they can't lose yeah, the she, she, deposit. Well, she meant literally can't yeah. afford. She meant literally cannot afford. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so Although poor. that line was uh, criticized by, I think, myself and Fat Man, like, bitch, your sister yeah, is in no, fucking that's, danger. That, 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 that's a little bit. Criticism, it's a bike. I think. Uh, yeah, that is. Uh, but also, it's funny. It, it, it's, we were trying to. Uh, it's one of the times where <laughs> volume two. Yeah, it's fight. it's completely fair. I just mm. it was too funny to pass up. It's one of those moments that we let it slip. I, yeah. I, I also did like making the point that Ruby was faster than the scooter. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so like leaving it by the by the roadside is like the the right thing to do in both instances. <laughs> It's right, but it's still a little risky. Like, she, her leg is healed, but she probably shouldn't be carrying another person yet. <laughs> and people um, were mad that Cordovan came in and got the final the final defeat here on Adam. Yeah. I mean, the man... And I don't think people got the reference. Like, he's a bull. He's seeing red, and he's taken out by a cattle prod. The point is, he is basically gone wild. No, I'm not saying yeah. anything about... Oh, I won't go into that. We, we've um, been going. He's been more, more unhinged and bestial, leaning up to everything. So yeah. I, I also, I it, there's an interesting parallel which I didn't immediately see with um with that fight in which Adam goes for Ruby is uh, Ruby is saved by Blake and that uh, using her shadows, Ye uh, Weiss does a glyph moment and Yang tries to go for a punch. I think. It yeah. ends up yes. paralleling like the literally last combo move or like last string of moves. They're, they're not quite on there the, yet. The actual they're Adam not fight quite unified. Mm. Yeah, there's still some things that aren't. Yeah, quite because working. the bees aren't made up yet. They haven't made up. Even though. Yeah, what's uh, it? Sorry. Uh, Although Alex, they're about. Go ahead. Uh, I was about to say they're about to be unified because of what's about to happen with Cordovan. I, I don't know if a lot of people necessarily picked up on what was what she was doing with this scene. Like the subtlety of how like she's getting this report of damages and it's just like I don't care about Argus, but yes. then later when she's like dressing down Team Ruby, she's like, "Look what you did to Argus." Yeah, yeah. The hypocrite <laughs> aspect of Cordovan was explicit. Like that. If anyone yeah. was to call that out, like thinking, "Oh, well, that doesn't make sense." It's no, like, that's no, no, characterization, right, honey. That's exactly correct. Yeah, uh, you know, I thought that Cordovan moment where she where she uh, shocks Adam. Was like you. You guys remember Red versus Blue? Uh, when uh, Tucker like runs from like the inside the base, and he's like, "Guys, wait, wait!" And he gets there all out of breath, and he's like, "Patrick Bauer." <laughs> <laughs> I imagine Cordovan's like sixth sense activated, and she's like, "A faunus is going crazy." <laughs> I must get the final blow. Oh god. <laughs> But yeah, um, here we go with uh, Cordovan. We're, we're we're leading into Cordovan's big shutdown of all of Ruby. I remember I talked to you about the specific way that this conversation would go. Again, I hate when people say this, but speaking from a military background, like a close the door conversation, it's just a quiet, calm, the shouting doesn't start. It's very yes. specific. A lot of movies yes. depict bombastic, think of this, um, the, the, the 1980s cop drama, like screaming at you, like you're a loose cannon, McGarnagle. Yeah. It's not how Although, that goes. Uh, like, it starts I, we just, I completely forgot what scene came after that. And um, we, we, we do oh. need a conversation mm -hmm. about this one. Um, no, yeah. I think we're uh, good. Yes. So, I think we're good. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, people were, were notably controversial about this particular, and we knew it was going to be controversial going into it. It's 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 not explicitly spelled out. I don't know if I should explicitly spell it out here. It's not? We, no, 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 there, 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 there is some, there's some elements to it that aren't explicitly. Uh, but basically, the, 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 yeah. the idea that Adam's mother wasn't exactly willing 
we can put that out there. There were some elements that go into exactly well, how Adam yeah. was brought about. Well, some when pressure, you put it some like that, the, 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 the idea is that she was yeah. in heat when her landlord, quote unquote, seduced yeah. her. It, it, there, yeah. there is some, it's a very messed up situation. And it, it learning that kind of was... I don't know if that was really the start, the thing that started breaking Adam. I think maybe the face thing was probably the first real, I don't know. He was already kind of in a bad place, uh, but then gets the eye injury. Then he finds his mom and this guy that basically has been nothing but an ass to him, complete monster to him. And then learning, oh, you know, this guy's your father. It just, it, it, those compounding things are what led to Adam starting down his his spiral and it just it never it never came up in terms of like it never started well he's become self-loathing yeah. like he one of the main things that adam hates in the world is himself yes very much so yeah just, sudden, just so we have something in common with everyone else <laughs> i think you said this line somewhat early on there's a lot of wrong with adam before he even meets blake yes um it's a it, it yeah, because that whole... Well, yeah, no, it, it it was just, like, a very delicate thing to hit on. People people have criticized me for putting in the heat element, even though in the lore videos back when I wrote them were just elements that I could pull from if I ever needed them. That was sort of the intent behind it. It was yeah. never a, oh, no, we're going to have faunus orgies all over the place. No, what the hell? It was very vague, and it wasn't really detailed on. It was just mentioned, like, oh, yeah, Vifanas also have this other thing that makes them different yeah. from humans. And well, it's plain and yeah. simple. If you have characters that only have positive attributes to having animal additions, then it, the world wouldn't make sense. The base human would always lose to a night vision cat or a strong bear man. Like, it, unless there is some downside, some something that makes cute anime girl cat boys not the dominant life form on the planet then <laughs> it wouldn't make sense it fundamentally doesn't they are better than humanity because they have these traits unless there's a downside unless there are so so things. basically when it came down to trying to figure out adam and try to basically piece him apart i looked at that and i'm like you know that's that can lead to some very dark things that can lead to some very uncomfortable things and i started just kind of exploring that conceptually and what I landed on was the story of his mother, his father, his parentage in total. And, yeah. like, I was like, all right, we're doing this. Got to be very gentle with it because there's a lot yeah, in there. So, like, that's a very sensitive topic in in the real world. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, even though you know, we don't have that. Like, in, uh, well, even, my words are all over the place. That was I mean, a pre-established idea we, you had. And I, I remember me and Jay coming into it and also being like a little wolf. Yeah. So yes, I will playing admit. it out was very like, okay, let's be very cautious about it because it was a thing you wanted to commit to in the script. And I think it ended up yeah. coming out pretty good. It wasn't too like graphic or anything. I feel like it it didn't overstay or overstate itself. Yeah, yeah we also, over time, more recently, we've been like sort of developing the concept of Fauna's reproductive health and sciences. So we oh. have more plans for yeah, that we in need the it. future. Definitely we Mupa. Need it much more Mupa nuanced. went on a research day or week or month. I don't know. Uh, listen, I, I'm just very interested. I'm listening. In <laughs> I'm listen- you know I'm always listening to you. All right. Uh, all right. Well, <laughs> let's, let's, let's stray away from this before we Cordovan. get canceled. Cordovan. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, so this yeah, is racist. her backstabbing. This bitch. I wrote in the script in my comments like, "Can we kill her now? Murder plan." Hey, murder, murder time. <laughs> Every literally when this premiered, I think that was everybody's vibe too. It's like, how dare you? How fucking dare you go back on the deal? It, yeah, it's it's one of those like, this is where I really wanted to kind of highlight. She was looking for an excuse, and this is perfect mm. for her. And her she has this great like ability to carry herself with such dignity and quote-unquote respect in terms of like oh i am completely in the right i know exactly what i am talking about and you are wrong like it's part of what makes her so much fun to voice um she is like this she is so so unable to self-evaluate and and self-criticize She's she very self possessed. Mm-hmm. She's very self possessed. It's it's it. She's wonderful she, as a character to both write and voice. Also, the ladybug Blake defending Ruby. 
And, yeah. then, and then, and then I'm, that I'm changed into it's Cordovan canon. insulting Blake, and then <laughs> Yang defending Blake. It's yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Another Delorean. <laughs> Delorean. Uh, that's GMC, right? Isn't that that, that the company? I didn't, yeah, I, I, yeah, I didn't yeah. wear GMC. <laughs> we should have changed that into uh, Schnee or something like that. GM Schnee. <laughs> <laughs> here's here's the beach we coming back to the shoreline this came out better than i thought i i i worked really hard on this scene in terms of trying to get like lighting yeah. and stuff right. it, it's not the best I, I that back in brunswick but it's not the worst work i've done this volume we collabed this and also that's coffee's moon but not art stream um the <laughs> idea was to and get also... go no you go you go I was just going to say, and also just like the scene, how it turned out writing wise with like Crow and Ruby reconciling with each other finally. Yeah, yeah. that was just so important is where Ruby just needs to vent. Like, that's one thing that was so missing from I we get certain critics that are like, oh, we can't go through a volume of fixing without the girls being at like edge on edge or angry with each other or like, which is hilarious because. One of the best moments in Volume 9 was Ruby having a breakdown at everyone. And, like, it again, the weird mirror going on between us and Volume 9 where we have these moments. Uh, I love Ruby venting at life. Like, she's having this, like, even as much as she understands about the difficulties of being a hero, actually facing those difficulties, and especially when you should have technically won, when you did everything right and still lose is one of those most brutal... Le- Foreshadowing. Yeah, it's, it's one of the most... <laughs> Sorry, I've got a cough. Again, I wrote this before Volume yes. 9. <laughs> yeah. It's one of the most brutal lessons you can learn when you're along that journey. So Ruby coming just like running headlong into it, it's it's great. And then having Crow, who's this figure that she's been on the outs with, come in and acknowledge his own issues, problems that he's caused, that sort of thing. And then also saying, hey, look, it's tough. You just got to keep on pushing forward. And as sort of a symbolic part of that is like, I'm pushing forward too, without, without liquid courage. Well, I think it link, link, uh, links back into the attribute that we wanted to assign Ruby, that she is a paragon in the best way that she can, but her, her real superpower is through her, the, her own like belief in others and herself when she can do it is it changes people like it it makes crow want to be a better person it, it, it eventually saves the day not in the way that people would expect but feels completely right for like the protagonist speech that she's supposed to have um i think it's, it's, it's a, really a very protagonist kind of like thing is is being kind of the thing that instigates change change in others which works really well for your protagonists and like just leader figures in life like bringing the best qualities out of people What's interesting is this This proves that art can make a scene better. Well, of course we know that. But, like, <laughs> I didn't imagine, like, the sunrise scene like this and the impact it had. But when it's married with the art, like, it really punched up the scene. Yeah. Like, I don't specifically... Was it in the script the sun was coming up no, at this point? No, it was not. No. No. And yeah, so fact, that's there, artist. There's a bit like, of discrepancy between, like, what time of day it's supposed to be between this and the, and yeah. the finale. Yeah. Just imagine a, a Ruby and Crow ended up hashing up all these plans that they need to pull off for the next episodes. Which is nice for them to actually be planning together on how to handle this Cordovan situation instead yeah. of what happened in canon. Where Crow's like, maybe we shouldn't do crime, and Ruby just, no, we're doing well, the and, fucking and it was crime. Yeah, we're doing the crime. Fine. And then later... And then later, when they end up doing a totally different plan, she's like, I had a great mentor. (laughs) Like, what the hell kind of arc was that? There wasn't, like, a a clear breaking moment. It was just like, I guess I forgive you for being, for me being a bitch. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So, a little break from what is the lead up to the finale. Yes. uh, Our our last real visit with Cinder. Reminding... Reminding people that Cinder still exists. Yeah. Because it had been a while since we saw I think her. back in what, episode 8 was the last time we saw her, to any significant extent. Which works really well for the fact so. that Cinder's frustrated about having to wait. <laughs> it's like, I'd be, I, she wants to get to Argus or Atlas Take already. Note, Chief, we like... had Cinder waiting in a house for a prolonged period of time, and we didn't feel the need to show <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that begs an interesting question, which I don't think we ever sat down and hashed. The time frame of 
uh, Cinder's story. I think it's only a, it's only, only like a week or two. A week she's or so. actually she's yeah, time it, it wise happened. way ahead of the curve. She has been in Atlas for a hot minute. Already. Yes, and that we want to play with that for sure. The girls do not beat Cinder to Atlas. She has been there for a while. Yeah, yeah, but le- letting I, I like letting a character breathe, so not coming back to them every once in a while. Like I feel like in Volume Five, we came back to Cinder a little too much. I feel like it was definitely necessary, but I was like, there's something nice about having a character on the back. Burner. Yeah, and it kind of it kind of rings to me also of like Volume One, where we didn't have Cinder at all. She was just kind of there in the background doing her own thing. Yeah, early volumes had a lot of like subtle time skips. Yeah, I think Volume in. 1 takes c- course over, like, a large period of time, too, because it's, like, the different phases of the moon. Like, you literally well, see the time progress over that volume. You could you could call it subtle. You could also call it slapping you in the face with a fish when you suddenly realize, oh, there's been a huge time jump. Yeah. <laughs> we know Ruby. Ruby's Can we Ruby. just acknowledge... One of my favorite Cinder lines, uh, Cinder lines, is "Why are you so damn poor?" <laughs> oh, dude, I like, love yeah. that. That's so perfect. <laughs> Why are you so damn poor? Oh god, uh, mad at the people she murdered. I think that was a yeah. joke line one of us said, and we just like, we know that works. That yeah, absolutely. It was just it, it just felt uh, good. <laughs> Floof loved doing these faces. I know. <laughs> you, <laughs> Tyrion's very fun to draw. Oh, and it's so good how the. The, I think it was planned, or at least it's something I liked. Is the she got hit and Cinder com- or Salem comes in with the who hurt you, like the little double meaning on that. Like she, yes. not just literally on your face, but like what has made you this way. Yeah. I actually I did I did also not even think joke. at all about the Tyrion <laughs> slap in that context. So I'm going to pretend that I did. You and Jay, I swear to God, y'all were no. like what. <laughs> Like, no, imagine, imagine if Cinder in that moment just pointed straight at Tyrion. She took Salem's question literally, like he, she's like he did it just now, five <laughs> minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, the, this scene would play out very differently. I honestly, I would, I would be Salem, would be like, well, he does that. <laughs> she, she just, yeah, you he, get he, trust to it, he tries to do it. He, he does it all the time to me. Uh, no, that'd be that'd be stupid. I don't mind. I like it. It's the only time I ever feel. <laughs> so people forget you do see Salem's face. It's just we. Pl- she has. She's so intimidating and is so much more memorable when she isn't, which is a thing we go for. So I love that. Like te- we technically have this thing about Floof does show her face, but it's like she is so enshrouded. Like she is so covered in shadows and so intimidating and just like. Her silhouette and stuff. And then Ninja comes in with this excellent art being just conveying this intensity of this motherly presence that, that Salem has. The overbearing, <laughs> the comforting, the smothering, maybe. Yeah. yeah. We argue, we didn't argue, that's not the right word, but every line of dialogue was a conversation. Like, we yeah. had to get this scene right. It was a discussion, yeah. A lot. There's there's also interesting, like, there is a note in here that, like, Salem says the line, like, Oz says, you have silver eyes. Um, I'm not sure how clear that was in audio, but we wanted to draw parallels from Cinder to Ruby. In I tried my damnedest as Salem to deliver that line. Yeah, I, I hear it, but I, it's, uh, I'm not sure for, like, new, like, I don't have the clean eyes on it. But yeah, just, just both being kind of like thrust into a thing they weren't really like known about from a young age. And then, of course, so this is actually a really oh, good you point. Said. Oh, you go. Well, I actually think this is a great way to actually get Mooper to talk about something that we wanted to integrate, which we specifically wrote about Mooper's design, is the openness oh, yes. of her organs. Yes, she's like, I mean, I talked about this uh like last year or a couple of years ago, even I uh, forget how long it's been during the artist dreams for volume five, but like the psychology of Salem and how she presents herself to the world and how that has changed over time. She's at the point now where she is so beyond caring about anything. She's like, if you think you can kill me, come and try. I'll present every vi- vital organ that I have just see what happens. I, it's almost like she's begging for anybody to kill it, her. It kind of ties yeah. back to something that Fat Man complains about constantly in Ruby in relation to Aura in specific. 
is that none of the characters act like they have aura where like mm-hmm. you you have a force field around you and no one acts like that's a thing that they can they can take advantage of that they ever try to use no one plays into it like oh i've just force field i'm just going to power on through um salem we, we try to keep that in mind with all of our characters even though aura works a little bit differently like they they are aware of how durable they are salem takes that to the most logical extreme where she is literally immortal she cannot die she has no She's almost like completely shed her self preservation instinct because she doesn't need it. And also, <laughs> interestingly, she doesn't have aura. You could just sca- like stab her, just beg <laughs> yeah. it again. The, she she wants people human. to fuck around and find out. She, well, she's not a tuman. She's a human. Like she is not humanity yeah. two point oh. We haven't really established what they are like and what that they entail. They mm. may be powerful magicians, but do they have aura? semblances are a semblance of magic so what does that really mean so yeah there's this idea that salem may not actually have aura in the way that we yeah, understand she's just it's the idea that with salem she's just flat out built different yeah a different beast literally especially with the model as we deleted her legs mm-hmm. i like no the bling also in that scene i feel like it's a nice display of salem's kind of like intimidation and warmth is is something that yeah. kind of Cinder early volumes we see like a a, a glimpse of like a, a pale image of like that's where she gets. I, it I from. love Cinder's ability to just casually stab someone. That's one of my favorite elements of her yeah. character. Yeah, Luby nailed it. It's so she casual. doesn't blink. She just stabs him and keeps on walking. He's just tying his thing in the background. Honestly, if I could make a glass shiv whenever, like wouldn't you? Like wouldn't I, you? I don't know if I yeah. would stab people randomly. <laughs> that makes me cut. <laughs> I might, especially not someone like Wilbur. But if we you're like, like Wilbur, if you're part of the like the evil Illuminati, but, come on. <laughs> I mean, in a world with aura, though, like, is it really that bad to just casually yeah, stab someone? It's fine. <laughs> but of course, this scene is the intense moment leading up to the reveal of Malachite being here, and of course, being Little Miss Malachite's daughter, which. I was surprised by how many people were confused by that. I didn't realize not enough people knew about that, but I guess it's just being so invested in the fandom for so long. It's just something that... Yeah, I mean, it's like a random factoid from, like, a book that most people haven't read. It wasn't even that. I'm pretty sure it was confirmed behind the scenes years ago, but I mean... Yeah, that's true. I think it was. It it was such, like, a a weird fact that you wouldn't connect naturally at all. So it's kind of yes. like, we had kind of forgotten about that. So when people were like, what? <laughs> and it's like, we, what? Yeah. <laughs> we might- Especially since in the canon show, they don't look like each other at all, which is yeah, why we changed Malachi. Yeah, I was just going to say, we made the, the effort to make them more look even more like each other. So it'd be more apparent. You keep saying one. You got to talk about both the Malachites. Oh, you're right. What are you talking yeah, about? The, right? the Malachites. I, 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 Malachite, the entity, the possessor of both <laughs> Melanie and Milcha. Um, <laughs> Which, yeah, there's going to be more record, on that. We'll explain more I of her situation. Still to this day, do not how to know, do not know how to pronounce Milcha's name. Which is Milcha. Milcha. It's Milcha. It's like a it's like a softy. Milcha. It doesn't matter how Milcha, many times yeah. you say it. I'm always going to screw it up in my own personal way, <laughs> and that is why she's the dead one, and Melanie is the one that survived. <laughs> <laughs> That's why she's. Is that <laughs> really why she is? be the reason I chose her. I mean, be the dead my, one. it's as good as. Is that actually it? <laughs> I think subconsciously there's a little <laughs> bit of it. A little bit, okay. I, it anyway, backfire fight. because we need she's little the one that fighting. Melody talks to, so she's the one actually saying the news. Yeah, so you mention it. But yeah, it's mentioned more. <laughs> yeah, Melanie has, well, Malachite has uh, become a bit more complete in her duality. She's much more competent using both weapons now, and she's also a lot more in sync with both personalities. Yes. Yeah, apart, I think probably because of her kind of enabling mother. She's had a little more time to sit yeah. in it, but her mother has definitely enabled the situation instead of correcting yeah, that it. Yeah, that was a background sort of characterization thing we talked about a lot, that Little Miss, it's hard, it's hard to tell if she does it because she cares about Malachi and doesn't want to upset her, or if because, I don't know, she just saw some sort of benefit from uh, yeah. allowing Malachi to think that yeah. way. 
I, I like to think of that she's kind of she's personally buying into the illusion. Like she she is herself in grieving and just doesn't want to like she's been presented a way not to grieve. And so she's kind of like taking an easy way out. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah, leaning into it, even if she's aware subconsciously. Well, she's she's a technically aware consciously, Arslan. but it's like weird. <laughs> yeah. She's choosing to believe of... a comforting lie facets to yeah you. it's like a i mean i guess like she can have both daughters you yeah know? um now now looping into yeah Arslan. arslan's final fight here which uh I, I wish we could have gotten more art and we could have had a longer a little bit of a longer fight to actually show how long it would have been it would have been like yeah. 15 seconds people complained it was a short like fight and it's like it's just because of script limitations yeah, in art. It, it would have still been yeah. relatively short but it would have been 15 30 seconds of actual like combat and then cinder's like no i'm tired fight end <laughs> yeah yeah people were also like surprised with that because they like to think that raymond's like a big power level like guy because he mentioned there's a system for like uh understanding aura yeah that was really weird on. like it's and like it's aura I, I very made it very clear that at a certain level aura doesn't really it's all about self knowledge. It's not about like power levels. I, I think other people get on me because I power level quote unquote. I dropped that phrase back when I was like trying to determine how strong certain characters were in in relation to each other. But that encompasses skill as well. Like it's it's like I don't mean it in the sense of like you actually like have a a battery inside you that's more powerful than anyone else. I never intended that. No, yeah. <laughs> we're not buying into the Saiyans with the Scouters. <laughs> <laughs> also got to blow past that scene of Cinder seeing something of herself. Yes. In oh yeah. And the the purposeful being... scratch. I, I remember working with the ninja on that to make sure the 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 damage, like the bruise side of her face, was the same for Salem in the flashback. So the parallels Ooh, would be nice. even more like apparent. And of course, this scene we yeah. wrote. Bef- this scene we wrote pretty early. Like this is a one. We, this is the first in scene in the ep- of, this episode. In fact, we might, we might have skipped ahead a couple of episodes to write this scene because we just had like we because Cinder didn't have a space. Right, that's and why we, Cinder was placed. We into figured the out the Cordovan storyline effectively first, and then we went back and figured out where everything fit with Cinder and everyone, uh, including the the like the Emerald and Mercury scenes. That stuff all came very much after we had more of the backbone of the story written. Um. This image, I, I I love when I came up with this idea for an image, and, and uh, I believe this is Gamps, right? They yeah, it pulled is it off. Mm-hmm. It, was a, it was a big decision, too, wasn't it? The the decision to not have a big sea monster as the final fight for yeah. the volume, Ooh, but yeah. to have many sea monsters. That was a big monsters. one. We, we did actually have a lot of like ideas. Some awesome ideas, and some that we, we might yeah. bring back later. Who knows? We might revisit, but ultimately, it was one of a. It was kind of like a brain blast moment of like, what does it really do for us? Um, and we just and we got rid of it in the script and decided to focus more on actually. Adam and just the threat of yeah, Grim, it, which is nice because Grim are. Yeah, uh, I made a point. Even the weak Grim are dangerous. Like they, they, these aren't the most sturdy yeah. Grim, and that's one reason that like later on Roman's able to like actually hit one aside when he earlier wasn't really able to fight a Manticore. These these Grim on their own are not all that terrifying. Like uh, an, an inexperienced hunter could probably fend them off, but they come in a swarm. They are a swarm mentality. They're a lot like. How the um yeah the, the like goblins from goblins Goblin Slayer. or uh, the wasps from from Volume Five in how he modified them yeah it's just like it's re-emphasizing and reorientating hey there's still this basic thread that was introduced at the at the beginning of this series there's still like something to take seriously. Mm-hmm. Also, just adding texture to Grim. There's different Grim everywhere. Yeah, I I, yeah. I love coming up with the mermaid Grim. I thought they were just a lot of fun. Yeah, like when Ruby also calls in with the different Grims. So like, here's what's in the area. The I love that also. She's like, hey, uh, not Grim aren't gonna be the same everywhere all the time. And of course, Weiss getting to acknowledge Adam's Adam's scar, which everyone mm. everyone under the moon cites as a massive missed opportunity in Canon Ruby. Um, having having a little yeah. bit of a dynamic between Weiss and Adam. It was very interesting because um, uh, Coffee always brought in this really uh, good point. Now I, I always like keeping it in mind when we do a Weiss 
uh, storyline, and one about Blake is we don't want to write ex um, characters that are pat Weiss on the back and go, "Don't worry about your past." Yeah, you like, mentioned this earlier. Uh, we, we we don't we want to stray from that. We want to give some some perspective. And as as the token minority, I'm here to be like, <laughs> "Stop it, stop it, you two. <laughs> I just like giving some some boys the perspective and 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 something refreshing for Weiss and being like, "Here's." Here's some pers and like enriching her dynamic also with Blake, because you know Kenneth does abandon a lot of that nuance and um I think their dynamic they could have. Making sure that checkboard is still there. Uh, for for some reason yeah. the Yang line of no she just hates us uh, that just I I felt very happy with that line in that reading it's just like it feels very Yang. <laughs> Oh, hey, yo. He finally returns the main character, <laughs> the, the R in Ruby. Ruby. <laughs> um, yes, uh, Roman returns, and he and Neo have redesigned outfits for Volume we Seven. Got threads. Showing their new perspectives and psychologies going forward. Or less Neo. green. At least the new outfits. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, less green, but still green. Yeah. yeah. Still <laughs> green, still very well, green. It's not denial. I feel like they should know something is up at that point. <laughs> you, you just a little. <laughs> Mostly, like, the stuff of, like, him pushing his bangs back kind of in defiance of Oz, who had his hair in his face. Yeah, shortened in his face, so he's like, nah, fuck the shit, it's going back. <laughs> and and also just generally Roman deciding like, okay, I'm going to face this shit head on. And Neo basically picking up where Roman left off and being her own continuation of like what Roman originally was. And essentially like keeping him in check because she's sort of like an emotional and psychological anchor for yeah. him at this point. Uh, I can also say I just I love that it's it's Nora that's the only one to actually welcome him back because like she's. And she's yeah. the one who's punching him oh, in the we stomach. Love that. Like the idea that her dynamic with Roman is so much more satisfying than with Oscar. Punched him in the stomach, threw a coffee table at him, tried to smash his head yeah, with she, another she table. Is, she's come so far. It's great. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> from outwardly hostile with trying to break his back with the table to like yeah, it's like, like you're, you're I guess I guess Welcome you're back. kind of a, the same road boat that we are. So I gotta be. She's the only one being I mean, mindful that like he's kind of a person i feel like that's kind of what i'm getting from nora yeah everyone's yeah. just like you're a criminal bastard i mean that's just sort of what makes nora interesting is like she knew he was a person from the very start and she still wanted to beat the shit out of him uh and we love nora for that that's a great issue <laughs> oh people say nora doesn't have a character she's fucking the awesome the of miller was really people got... so people didn't so camilla is a canon yes. character real quick she is a council yeah, woman in atlas if you didn't remember people forgot her yeah because she's uh she she's the one who didn't get shot by ironwood people will... but she's she didn't get little... shot <laughs> no 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 it's the old white dude they got shot <laughs> oh you don't people think he shot confused. them both <laughs> is, is she, she actually is. in the end she, of season no, she seven is shown. she is shown yeah. She's shown? Yeah, she's, we see her, yeah. No, I didn't she, was, she was standing there and she saw the other guy get shot, like, <gasps> but then she didn't get shot for some yeah. reason. No, I mean, like, did we yeah, see her I'm pretty sure we did. Uh, I'm no. pretty sure we did Wait, once or did twice, we? but it was like a background detail. She wasn't, like, present. Yeah. I don't remember that, no. I think Our team was like, well we can have Ironwood go crazy, but he can't shoot a minority. That'd be too far. <laughs> not on oh, screen. <laughs> yeah, not on screen. <laughs> I do want to point out that some people were confused that, despite the fact that Adam is regressing and aging in this scene. Uh, not literally. Um, Camilla is yeah, at was, the boot. Uh, Some people were very confused or, or, or misunderstood what it is. This is Adam in the past in Atlas, and so is Camilla. And they're being swapped out with older Adam, and in the same figure of authority is Cordovan. But they're, they're, yeah. Yeah, yeah their scene's really running in parallel. Really bring that up. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was, it was a... A, a confusion of like chronology, but yeah, this is a flipping back and forth between the present and the past. Back in the past Adam <laughs> I'm glad I don't read the comments. But yeah, I, I actually very loved this scene for the the, the 
the flashback yeah. version. Oh God, of it. she's so she's smug. So Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh! I actually, you know, I just love this. She's scene. like, it's so she good. gives that smug energy because she doesn't give a shit what choice Adam makes. She just knows he'll suffer. Yeah, right she, away. she, what she says, like, I like when they know your place or some shit like that. It's like <laughs> so demeaning. Like, if I was Adam, I would be killing her. But thank God he's disassociating. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Like, or She's else she would lucky. be dead. She, like, if he wasn't actively reliving his childhood, like, she would be dead. Yeah, he, I mean, oh. before I know, he can break the he chains. just, like, snapped her neck. Like, she would be smeared, like, he, he would have just bit her neck out and she would be smeared on the table. If he, he would have, like, like, fucking catatonic. charged her with his horns. That would, that would have been, like, yeah, a yeah, really yeah. satisfying way to kill her, but... It really yeah. would have been, actually, damn. We, we should have entertained that longer. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, yeah. Oh, well. Everyone discussing the options they have. Back at and of everyone. course, Roman also offering the, the actual challenge of like, what are you willing to do? You can't just sit here doing nothing. You have to be willing to do something. And uh, of course, no one wants to entertain the idea of doing crime. Then boom, Ruby comes in and says, we're doing crime. <laughs> we're doing the crime, boys. We're doing <laughs> it. Crime. Before we move a little too far away from that, that exact example you gave about Roman was something that we are going to explain, uh, expand on further. Roman and Neo are not, finger quotes, the good guys. They don't do the good guy things. They, in future, they're, yeah. they may yeah. not always align themselves with Team Ruby. Not that they're going to get antagonists, but they're different they, people. They, they work yeah. with the good guys. That's it. It was, it was something... It was something that was touched on in Volume 5 as well, and bringing it up again here is just the fact that even though, like, they were able to overcome their better instincts to try and run away during the Volume 5 fight and stayed and stuck it out, even though they're sticking it out now, that doesn't guarantee anything as far as those two are concerned. Yeah, yeah, it's... But back, back to this scene, I, I do like the, uh, the, uh, the way that the different team members react to Ruby's plan. Like, uh, the... Oh, Juniper Ranger. going immediately, being like, yes. yeah, we got it, boss man, and Team Ruby still being like, wait, what? Yeah, and of course, I I love how we were like, what was our, our, we were coming out here, I can't remember how we changed this ending, but I remember we, we had to come back and change this, and we changed it to Ruby walking out, explaining the plan, and then all, I think that's when we cracked upon the idea of the, the Mermaid Grimms and the wall going down, and that being the major threat. I think, like, we, we, we had gotten up to this point, hadn't figured that out. Then we figured out that what, what what that was, and we're like, oh, yeah, that works. And so we actually like cut off Ruby's explanation. We had a we, we started actually making a plan yeah. for a heist, but like it wasn't going to work out. Yeah, and it it was great too because then we saved ourselves on time on explaining or making up a plan that Ruby would say, and it's just like, oh, she's got a plan, and she's got multiple of them because none of them are gonna work out the way she wants them to because the grim invasion. And then here we are at the finale. Uh, Maze of Thorns. Which is going to be a doozy. Which is, uh, I think, originally when naming stuff, sometimes the names for the titles of the episodes come to us like immediately, and sometimes it's like later. Maze of Thorns was a later. It was yes. like a tentative, like, yeah, maybe maybe this. Because um, uh, Argus and... Uh, just the old stories. Was it the the Minotaur? Yeah. Yes, I think. Yeah, I believe it's that. I suggested it because I was like, "This would be cool." Maze, thorns, wilt, rose, <laughs> um, petunias, bull. No, it, it's it's also like Adam's last thing. Yeah. Last stand. So it, it made sense that it would be that, even though it felt a little disjointed from like some of the other titles that we have fun with. Well, I mean, uh, episode five famously changed. It was an Evangelion reference. Tumbling down, yeah. tumbling down, tumbling down. Yeah. <laughs> we're either very goofy or we're slightly less goofy. That's our two yeah. moments. Um, <laughs> I like, ma I love making up the titles. It's really, really just episodes. one of the best things. It's like, especially after like, you get it all done, it's like, it's like the, it's like the cherry on top. It's like, man, mm, oh, wonderful. Yeah. And then sometimes you're saying, perfect. you're like, why do I, have to, I just put a placeholder in? We'll see if it lasts. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's like it's, it's, it's that's like literally Pierre's dad. It's like, yeah, but it's, it's Troy. We'll, we'll find out a real name for him. Like, nope, nope, just didn't. 
Anyway, cool. B- bursting into action. We got a plan. We're gonna steal shit. I just noticed that Kobe drew a rose in the headlight of the scooter. <laughs> I just noticed he has Ruby's name on the side of the scooter. I'm like, wait, what? why is that there? Oof. That's a sticker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ruby, you're not going to get back your deposit. I mean, you're not yeah, going to anyway. Yeah, the deposit's <laughs> lost after this goes. episode. I- yeah. Honestly, it's ama- it's amazing she didn't lose it when Cordovan fired them all. Like, she let them well, keep no, the Well, no, no, they're renting she it on their own time. Oh, no, she went but, to a rental place. The, it's rental separate oh. from the base. Yeah, it's not. I thought, I thought it was like Cordovan had, like, you raised think some Cordovan kind of permission. Cordovan would do like, anything yes, nice for them. Yes, Ruby can ride the scooter <laughs> When Ruby said deposit, she meant the relic. <laughs> 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 Anyway, oh, that black Oh, no, the, the, the editing issue. I, it's yeah, the glitch is still there. I thought I fixed that. It's fine. Damn it. It's fine. <laughs> look at the cool action. Look at it. I'm like dangling the keys. It's like, look at the cool scene. Look at it. Look at all your hard work paying off. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> look at this writing scene realized. One thing I think we really improved this volume, and a bit so with the previous volume, was choreographing action. I know you've always said that like, a- the action part isn't a part of what you're trying to rewrite, because you know action is a sort of different thing. But the effort that we went to making action set pieces in the last two volumes, I think, has really paid off oh, yeah. in getting that vibe of what Ruby is supposed it's to be. It's been absolutely fantastic. Um, it, like a lot of people have really yeah. stepped up to like chore- help choreogra- uh, choreograph. I almost a choreograph or something like that. Yeah, like, last volume, you had, like, a map and, like, little icons for do- the final fight, and this one was just, like, fully scripted. Yeah. With, I think, maybe one or two, like, questions where you, where you, like, oh, this is the general layout for things. Like, clarifying it when people were, um, confused, and it worked out yeah. really good. Also, Dawn's with us. Knock off. It's not wrong. It's, it's a knockout version of, of Dust Till Dawn in Argus. The, uh... The legendary moment of Adam finally breaking free, barehanding, just killing these people while chained up, and his first meetings with Gira and Blake, bringing his entire story full circle, where the only missing gap that we have in this, that I'm just sad that we never really got to explore, is Adam's full relationship with Blake, but I think we get enough of that story between the two Mm -hmm. of them. I was about to be like, just Kinda, there's yeah. still more to Blake. There's still some yeah. stuff about Blake. True. Especially yeah, in the wake of still, Adam's death. Yeah, we can still get it from Blake's perspective, even after mm-hmm. he's dead. Well, there is a, like, we've, we, me and Coffee have, they already had conversations about what we want to do with Blake and Ruby, and what happens at the end of this volume, and what they will talk about in future. Yeah, we, we always got threads. We're, we have a lot of running threads, and seeing how they coalesce is more of the writing process um, than anything else. Now, this was an interesting decision that we specifically wanted to make this fight very reminiscent of the training uh, initiation fight, because this is Team Ruby working together properly for the first time. It's why it works so well. They're very mobile. They're very they're in sync with each other. And that's why we even chose the same music. Yes, and it was a great uh, audit. Uh, auditory callback as well during that scene. Yeah, I it, it's very visceral to hear the OG Ruby music. Mm-hmm. It gets you hype. And like, it's kind of funny, it's because like, even though now they're, they finally sort of bridge the gap, they're having to talk across a gap still mm. to coordinate this Well, the bees. Shebang. Moop, but the bees haven't made up yet. <laughs> oh, that's true, that's true. There is still a little bit of a gap. They're warming up. They have to go through their past to go to the present. You know, they have to work yeah. through it to get to the future. And and and, and that involves you know, Yang being the fuck out of these grim and getting a little too excited. <laughs> mm-hmm. I do love that, the, the bit that's coming up. The, the, uh, the I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna beat all these grim up. Like, and yeah, no, like, you're, you're, no, get back up here, you idiot. You're gonna yeah. get killed. <laughs> Uh, leaking a little bit of OG Yang, like she's getting better even before, like probably the Adam thing, but the Adam thing just skyrockets. I was gonna say, like forward. she's getting better. Yeah. She's been getting better since Volume Four, but it's been a very slow, mm-hmm. gradual climb to getting back that playful spirit to her. Um, that the first real hints of that was back in Volume Five with her, with Neo saving her from from Mercury. Like that that was like where she was like, No, you go you go do your thing. I gotta I gotta take care of this myself. 
Also playing Crash. Also playing Crash. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> playing Crash. Playing Crash. Um, here's a nice little. Here's something to give the duo to do. Make a bomb. <laughs> it's it's sometimes nice to think about like oh they have like a different repertoire to play with than like the standard huntsman or like yeah the rest not of the not group. a lot of huntsmen with the exception of maybe velvet would know how to make an IED. <laughs> Probably. Uh, felt like excuse you, it's an M. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we love our RVB references. Memory if memory key. was, if memory the uh, fucking is the key wasn't obvious enough. And of course, we have our lead up into Maria coming in to save Crow, and the the dance. I, whose idea was it? The dance? Because I know it wasn't mine. It was Jay. Me. Yeah. <laughs> it was a hundred percent mine. The tango type style dance, like uh, the idea of these two mentor mentee and the you know, the illusions and ethnic yeah, yeah, yeah. illusions that Maria is, just that felt right. It felt because mm. Ruby's got the right. Spanish guitar or the guitar uh, in uh, red like roses, and then it's like bring it back a few generations, and we literally have Maria Calavera. So it's Originally just like oh, of course, in planning, I was going to have, I believe it was uh, the Black Knights, which was the the main theme, one of the main themes from Code Geass. I was going to use that for this scene, and then during production, of course, Resident Evil Four remake came out and did the remix, the, the amazing remix of the 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 main theme for that as the shooting range theme in that game, and it just fits so well. I loved it. Hey, yo, we love love that for us. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, John also finally starting to work somewhat amicably with Roman and Neo. A little bit. Considering how antagonistic yeah. he's been consistently with them. Also, we didn't mention he is coordinate, uh, coordinating a lot of like the, the Argus right. forces he is, here. He is become, is, yeah. Yeah, he, yeah, he's become a much more cogent leader. Mm. He, he's keeping all these threads. Like He's keeping like the soldiers, the Count, like the shoreline. Roman and Neo also on the front. Which leans into his uh, Joan of Arc uh, and Al- uh, influence. Uh, yeah. influence. Yeah. Mm. Now, I, I suggested mm. this scene and I love the sonic boom. I love that Ruby is a speedster. The the teleportation thing more than likely won't be in our story uh, moving forward. She is just Ruby run fast. But the yeah, idea if that she does just... teleportation bullshit, that's because fast and anime. Like, don't think she's actually... Yeah. Yeah, she's just that. She's just yeah. fast, fast, fast. She's not literally becoming she's, a, she's a not nuclear becoming, bomb. Yeah, disassembling. She's and not coming becoming back the Flash, which I think is what they were kind of going for. Which is because in Flash canon, he can vibrate so f- his his body so quickly. His like he can phase his molecules through matter. The phase is over. The, the Flash is overpowered for the record. Um, I would love to see Fatman watch <laughs> yeah, that show. I mean, that was. I mean, not I, at the no. box office though. <laughs> How often does he do that, though? The vibrating oh, through wall scene? Because oh, I only oh, ever saw that in a lot, single actually. episode of Teen Titans. He does a lot. Um, yeah. Especially oh. handcuffs, wow. handcuffs, walls, walls bombs. bombs. Um, Freaking the reverse flash. That's how the reverse oh, flash can kill people. He actually vibrates his hand and sticks it into their heart. Um, Yeah, the reverse oh, flash oh. is terrifying. I, I, I love that guy. <laughs> Oh, sounds fun. Is that is that the guy from the meme that like my yes my yes the yellow under, flash yeah yeah, okay. yeah yeah the yellow <laughs> right. um of course the detonator doesn't work out because Roman isn't perfect and it's an IED system <sighs> oh I just noticed the uh, making bombs is hard I just noticed Neo yeah I didn't yeah. see that the first time the yeah she's the, doing know, shit <laughs> <laughs> she's killing things she's over the losing her illusions. <laughs> I could hear the Mario noise. Uh, like, the beeping. Uh, this was so hard to like tweak in, right? Because I had it. I, I I made it loud initially just so I could hear it in the editor. But like I had to like at subsequent watch throughs multiple. I had to tone it down and down and down to a much more bearable level because it could be overpowering. Yeah. That's why those test watches yeah. are important. <laughs> you gotta you gotta get things just right. Just tune in and last like ten percent. It was interesting. Now that we're getting into the Ruby speech and. What happened when we wrote it was a stream of consciousness that the three of us can get into where we didn't really have plans about how we wanted to get the good thing to happen. I mean, at one point, Ruby actually was going to convince Cordovan, but we started to write 
and it just sort of happened. I don't even know who suggested, and D leads over and flicks a switch. Like, and then that completely changed what we were going to do. Yeah. Like from that point on, the the coup was set up completely different. The idea of like everything that we did with D and Dudley before, like built to them. Full like, transparency, yeah. we were going to try and stick closer to canon where. Cordovan could be swayed and have a kind of soft redemption redemption of some sort. But the more and more that we went into the season, the more we wrote of her, the more of that she's done, the more and more that when we finally got to the scene, the it didn't feel right for Cordovan to be It felt yeah. apologetic for yeah. someone who's bad. It, it didn't feel right for yeah. the characters and it definitely didn't feel right for Ruby. When we find these like things and we stumble upon them, I feel like they feel very genuine to the character. That that's why we have a, a very like mesh mind moment where it's like, yeah, this is almost exactly where we're going. Yeah, uh, name dropping the architect. That's a. Uh... Hey, yo, yes. I suggested that. I remember you had mentioned that before as like a yep, world, building world building thing, and I was like, you gotta gotta add it I, for, again, the, for the, the nationalism the <laughs> videos they're just things that were nice to have in my back pocket should I ever need them mm. but yeah the, the entire idea of Cordovan being so hardlined about the benefits to Atlas and basically using the justification to stay in Argus or leave Argus basically she can use her, her nationalistic pride as a justification to do whatever the hell she, she feels is necessary for her position or whatever she... she's just that good of a fascist she's so good yeah the skills she's such a nice window into our atlas yeah when we get and what, there, what's going to be difficult is like now we have to go into ironwood who is going to be so complicated on his own because he is ultimately I, at least how i view him he's ultimately a good guy but he has some severely flawed viewpoints on things and as opposed to Cordovan, who I think disguises her rotten core through this nationalistic pride. Yeah. Cordovan's like the true fascist, but Ironwood is more like he's just trying to politic as best as he can. And he happens to be in a country that leans very yeah. totalitarian. Uh, also, Saria, another person that came out of the blue with animation. Um now, not necessarily yes. completely out of the blue, because she's the one that did that fantastic animation in Volume 5 of uh, Yang crying over Vernal. Uh, but, like, she went above and beyond for this one and just really nailed, like, the intensity of this entire sequence to the point where, again, I was tempted to, like, cut my narration and just put full, like, sound effects and, and dialogue in. It's a, it's a good moment, moment but it... it... It comes together. I think if it, it was no dialogue, the beeps maybe would have gotten mm. to me. Yes. Another one of those tone in the audio. But God, is here, this this moment tense. It's good. Two years in a mo in the making too for this one joke. So long. Yeah, it's just like oh, of course her illusions are physical. Like it's an important fact that it's not so much illusions. Yeah. Or like it's a weird glass projection. Perf like uh, projection. Like it exists in the world. Um. Yeah, you can like hit it. Mm, so when it shatters, you are bra you are making contact with something. Mm. And uh, pointedly, not an Akira slide. Sorry, it was yeah, like it's not did. an Akira slide. She's like everybody does an Akira slide. It isn't one. I purposely made it not one. <laughs> and then the every single are. comment was like the Akira <laughs> slide. Yeah, and she was wow. like, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, oh, maybe and next course, time. Sorry, yeah, important for you. John. He has the maturity to be like, wait, guys, don't celebrate. Oh, <laughs> why? Why did I have to be right? Oh, yeah. Him staying <laughs> observant. You know? She nailed his face there perfectly. I love my voice delivery, but like, yeah, it, like, it all matched it's up so John. wonderfully. <laughs> What I, what I like about the deposit box for the relic is that they cut out a shape in foam to rest the relic <laughs> in. They didn't just toss it in the box, like, just on the bottom of the box naked. They Dean cared about preserving its integrity. Dean and Dudley are quarter artists. They take their job serious. Let us also yeah. not forget Jay just coming in with full animations, even though I know you, you cheated to some degree here, but... Everything, everything is cheating. Everything's cheating the more you know about it. <laughs> and, like, the... The, the tensions of the scene where it's like, okay, everything's going good, but we 
know that because of where these people are, oh yeah, that they're about to run into something. Is it dramatic really irony? Well, what I like is that like not everything is going good. Like Ruby technically thinks she's failed. Ruby thinks that her end of the the, the plan has failed, and she needs That's to like, re- But the, the safety net is oh okay, so at least we have the relic. We have that squared away. All right, good. Um. And then the bomb under the table yeah. goes off. Yeah, it's yes. so good. He's standing. Because we know Adam's up loose in the facility. He's not standing there it's... menacingly. That was, I, I think, pointedly, we actually, like, okay, we've done this joke too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's walking This is a serious moment. You know, let's calm down. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, all the times Adam shows up is a serious moment. It was also, all, uh, immediately when I said that, I'm like, that's bullshit. <laughs> but the first time we see Adam <laughs> meet White <laughs> in this volume, you say the line. <laughs> Uh, some nice, some nice combat. A little yes, bit. Everyone's struggling, and then mm. you have. I, I, I love the detail of like some of these creatures getting into the city and people trying to peel off to fight them. And John just being like, "Guys, no, a bigger problem here. It, it, look, this people are going to like. He's kind of acknowledged at this point. People are going to die. People are going to die. Right now, it's the matter of trying to minimize." everything we possibly can yeah minimize losses also you said yourself like a, someone who isn't so experienced could take out yes. one like it is uh an issue of the mass of them coming in rather than the yes. individual group. it's timing the tide as long as possible yeah and he sees and he sees that it's the one defensive point of the city the seawall if if they get into the city and they have to fall back from the bridge they've lost if a few get in, that's fine. Deal with it later. Oh no, some people die. But if the defense collapses because people start pulling back, then that's it. There's no other defense line to fall back to. That's a little pointed line of no time for quips. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Again, so it's so good to write for Roman yeah. and Neil, but it's like, that was a little Roman also being like, okay, I need to stop having it up himself personally. Yeah. But it works outside for the writers too. <laughs> Because largely, it is part of an act for him. He he is yeah. Roman, but it's he's also show. acting. Yeah, he, Roman. Roman. Well, Roman has always been a yeah, show Roman, for him. The, the underlying Remus, he's basically kept buried and is occasionally cropped mm-hmm. up. He was basically Remus through the entirety of Brunswick. To some extent. Yeah, not not as many quips and stuff. The Here we go with the, the kind of the, the, the culmination of everything that's happened this volume. For for all of Team Ruby, not just Blake and and, and Yang, even though this is this is really their scene. Mm. Um, in in the original yeah, volume, so... did they never talked? They never ever talked, nope. and and yeah. like they just somehow just inherently came back together magically, like over murder. Yeah, they hold hands and we're like, we pro- I don't protect her, we protect each other, and I'm like, y'all did not have a conversation. This is not progress. <laughs> They didn't have a conversation, and they also didn't really have any sort of significant scene to demonstrate that they didn't need that conversation. But the you know, it was like a double lose. Yeah. Versus, we had like a, a a good awakening moment for Yang beforehand with Maria, and then seeing Ru- like Blake making amends and apologizing to Ruby. Like she was there for all of that, and knows truly Blake has the best intentions. Yeah, and what, what's it's just it's great that it all comes together. It's like Blake is uh, Yang gets it through her head. Blake is trying, so I need to actually put out, like, look, look, I get it. I get it. I seriously get what you're trying to do, and I appreciate it. She needs to put out. You, it's yeah. like, it's like, <laughs> Phrase it's, like it. it's also like Yang realizing that she can trust Blake again. She doesn't have to be suspicious of Blake yeah. anymore. Yeah. And, and just Blake conveying it to, to her. Twice. Being like solidifying that. It's like, I know you care. And in mm-hmm. stark contrast, you have Adam, who's literally in the clearing, having a complete mental breakdown. Like, he has essentially mm-hmm. gone. He is now... He, Adam died days ago, I, I he's, reckon. He's past a mental breakdown at this point. He is on, like, a mental... He's in, like, a fugue state, call it? A mental buffet. A mental buffet. I always just say mental. he's catatonic, because he's just so... Yeah. ...out there. But I, I'm not I sure if that's exactly of, correct. I thought I thought of buffet because I saw a video with a, like a whale fall earlier today, and a whale fall is like when a whale is dead, it sinks to the bottom of the ocean, and then all the scavengers oh. come out for it. Yeah, it's cool. He's kind of at that point. Oh, look at yeah, look this at turnaround of all the people in his life that have that have 
there are so many people here that have been there for him, like his mother, technically Sienna, Blake, Gira. There are all these people that have... Ilya, yeah. you see them all. There are people Hazel. there that could have been supports and friends, but just because not only circumstances kind of kind of blinded him to how life works, and he's basically just he's isolated himself from everyone by going down the path that he has. He, it's kind of because of like because of his experiences as a child, because of like no that like the idea that his mom and his and the landlord hooked up. He's kind of associated the idea that unfortunate experiences don't just happen. They are the direct result of people who are out to get you. Yeah, and I guess it's very true to, like, uh, actual life where your early experiences in life really co like, the, your your future and your, the relationships you can have with others. Um, Which leads into the aspect that I think is one of the main reasons for his downfall and this specific calling out of everyone in his life that he thinks has failed him is because the one of the original motivations for his bad experience in life is not his fault. So he really struggles to find himself at fault at so, for, for anything at all, even when it is his fault. Like the people he's yeah. calling out for the collapse of all his plans... It's him. It's it's almost always Adam who's the it reason. It makes for him a bit of a uh, a foil to Cordovan in that way, where it's like you you don't yeah, kind of they don't really blame themselves for the the horrible the the horrible things going on. He also doesn't forgive anyone else for even if they didn't mean to fail him at all that they were trying their best, but circumstances just yeah. ended up. Like, Not Blake did genuinely he care. He still treats it as their failure. Like, Blake definitely did care for him and wanted the best for him, but it, it mm. didn't turn out right, and he just ended up souring on that relationship, the Belladonnas as a whole, and just fixated on them. And then you just come to the end of that, and he's trying to kill her and her family and everyone she loves. It's he, He's truly yeah, lost. It, it's, I mean, it makes me feel for this... Ver this version of Adam makes me feel like, man, I would love to see the AU where someone gets him out of that toxic family relationship and just, or, or someone gets that, at least his, his quote unquote father out of the picture. Like maybe he might have a chance then. Yeah. You, you want something better for him. You see all the places where you, it has gone wrong and you, and you wish it didn't. Um, speaking of things that are going wrong, the opposite's happening because now you have Blake and Yang finally building a plan together to try and fight him. And, they're, it is, yeah. It's good. But it's not yeah, quite, not quite there yet. It's almost like they're missing somebody. They're missing, like, two somebodies <laughs> that are important, yeah. you know? It's almost like it's not a bees fight, and we are intentional about that. Mm -hmm. Like, this was something that we wanted to emphasize. It mattered to all of them. No matter how much personal history or contact mm -hmm. that they had had at Adam in any given point in their lives... This was important to them. And yeah. if for anyone that feels like, oh, we took this away from the bees, think of it as like, where the bees aren't quite together yet here, but like the idea of doing, analogy wise, if, if they got together in the original volume six, they got together, quote unquote, here, and this is Ruby and Weiss being supportive friends of their relationship and helping them deal with a bad ex. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, like, it's how also, friends work. Think about it. The, Come on. The, the, if you think about it, though, like the main key thing about any abusive relationship is that it's very isolating. Yes. Like or mm -hmm. any bad relationship, any toxic relationship, because we talked about how when Adam and Blake were dating, he was actually a good boyfriend to her. But now it's become very toxic. Adam is at a point where he would want to try to isolate Blake and get her alone. The fact that the bees can share this moment with their closest friends kind of really drives home how much healthier and happier they can be together because they're not trying to isolate themselves from anyone else and they don't need to do that to be happy. Yeah. They can be happy with all their friends and family and they can be together. Yes. I mean, yeah, Boyce says it herself. They're like family and I think that's really important. Like I, Ruby doesn't really have so much to do with Adam, but she cares for Weiss and Blake and Yang and so she cares about what this fight means to them. Oh, this combo move where Ruby is oh, yeah. jumping in and swapping people out. Mm -hmm. It it was it just, was, when we figured it out, it was wonderful. Also, quick that caveat. That was brilliant to read about. On the Adam thing, uh, you said he, 
Blake and her Blake and Adam had a good relationship. That's also canon in the comics. That's not just a Furby yeah. thing. Yeah. For for people listening in. Um, that's it. Although, like, I mean, in the Adam short, they kind of try to imply that he was like, emotionally manipulating her. But like, fuck that. Yeah, I, I'd much rather it be a a quote unquote happy relationship that sours because of his mental state. Mm-hmm. Sours like after they broke up, even. Yeah. To get into Yang's, uh, what Yang gets out of this fight, it's very interesting. I, I feel because Yang had built up, I, I believe, this this vision of, of, of Adam that has been causing her strife, her PTSD, that kind of thing, and to see Adam during this fight, so for lack of a word, pathetic. That's why during the fight, she, she sort of loses the fear she has and gets to this point where she's she starts mocking him and then momentarily, she even gets to the point where like, like, are you okay, dude? Almost? Like, gets to this, to see him like that. She gets a lot Releasing of clarity of a thing she feared a lot of because she kept avoiding yeah. it. It kept building up in her mind about this thing, this improbable thing, and like with the PTSD, it just was eating her from the inside out almost. And finally confronting it here with the rest of her team really like gave her some clarity on it. Which leads yeah, back it's into like the she's pra- It's like she's practically beating up her fear itself. Yeah, she's be- she's fighting the PTSD for real, for real. <laughs> the uh, And of course, we- we've entered in the finale climax here of this fight, mm-hmm. where Adam gets smart, you know, that's another big element of the combat in fixing Ruby we want. It's like, people are smart when they fight, and he figures out Ruby's trick, and he grabs her. It's like, what happens now? How does Ruby react? And now we have all of Team Ruby acting almost on instinct and over push, overclocking everyone in the group. Yeah, you know, Blake, without Yang, Ruby's authority, which yeah, is noteworthy. Yeah, yeah. Blake, Yang, and, and Weiss are all powering themselves over the top just to save Ruby. So we get mm. permanent, you know, Weiss ends up bleeding out the nose, Blake's sword ends up breaking, and Riang does what we call, did we land on Supernova? Or did we land on... I think on, it's Supernova. I think it's Supernova, but I think we also entertain, entertain Solar Flare. I think it's Supernova, though. Yeah, I think Supernova was something we wanted to stick with. Uh, the, the inverse of his Moon Slice. Yeah, yeah. Instead but what's very of, key... Um, but her what's exceptionally breaks. key to that is that she gives up her arm. It's sort of this is the last bit of her PTSD where she wants to save someone, uh, and it's Ruby, and she wants to do so much damage to this person that she is willing to break her own arm. It's sort of her giving it up on her own terms. And Yang is the kind of person that originally, if this had happened to her, she wouldn't have got PTSD. If she was in a fight and punched someone so hard, she lost her arm. Like, she wouldn't have developed the same issues that she had, but it was the fact that it was taken yeah. from her without her permission, without her control. Yeah, there's a lot yeah. of autonomy. There's, there's a and, lot of choice in autonomy. And mind here. you, the wording here is, it, 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 I think Jay kind of makes it sound very final. Uh, no, the PTSD isn't No, over. no, 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 no. It's, yeah. it's she, she's yeah. over a hump, a major hump in it after this mm. point, but she's not... It's one of those things, a PTSD never quite goes away, and it'll always rear its ugly head and just the worst of times it's yeah. it's not going to be like she's not cured she is not no perfect she's now. had like a, a lot of catharsis and like a breakthrough yeah i would say yeah she was she was she's going from a state where she's surrounded by fire and it was inside of her where like she's no longer quite so surrounded by it but yeah. the fire will always be up she, she's of no her. longer drowning and like in a lot of these places yeah. you feel so helpless it's like she is no longer drowning she can she's coming up for air for what feels like the first time in since the incident, I think. Um, and now we lead into the big moment where Ugh, Weiss... We're so nervous very about this. Yeah, we- Weiss... <laughs> Adam is dying. He yeah. has been defeated. He is, that is he's the- dead. <laughs> yeah, Adam is already yeah. on his last legs. He's, he's, he's a not dead man it. walking, but not even standing, actually. Like, <laughs> if they if they just walked away here, he would have just fallen over at some point. Yeah. yeah. He might have tried to follow them for, like, maybe 20 feet and then just collapsed. Oh yeah, I'm I'm thinking the dude doesn't even have like ten minutes in him. Oh, his last words here though. Yeah, the the only f bomb that I've dropped diegetically PG-13. in Ruby, <laughs> the the one you get, and of course, Ruby taking the shot to protect Weiss. Where yep. like there are several like she's willing to do this. She understands a lot about it, but it's it's another one of those. It's so much different to know versus to do. 
Yeah, like, you know as an occupational hazard, these things happen as a huntsman. And you can be prepared for them, and you don't, and, like, not want them to happen, but it's also a little bit part of the job. No, it's well, fighting Grimm. Mm-hmm. Well, it's 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 to, ideally, <laughs> ideally, you're killing Grimm, not other people. Yeah. In the ideal scenario. But again, like, things, shit goes down. Yeah, a lot of people took beef with Ruby taking that last shot as if, like, the whole rest of the fight didn't matter. It's the same kind of beef people had with Cordovan getting at him with the cow rod. It's like... Does does everything else before that is that all a joke to you? Yeah, yeah, it, it's it's like it's like someone like you you did ninety nine points of you know the entire party did ninety nine percent of the damage and then the the asshole rogue who's been hiding in the corner sneaks up and stabs the guy in the back for the last one percent <laughs> and then declares I thus bequeath solo XPs upon himself like yeah no it's, it's a team effort how it works. again team effort. we we went out of the way for, for it to be all of Team Ruby for a reason because it mattered that they were all there and contributed and of course. Here's another great moment uh, with with Roman and uh, John here, where Roman's basically <laughs> just hard edge. We're getting the hell out of the city. We got to get the hell out of here. We're all going to die. And John's like, no, we're not. We're staying. We're going to try and get the best out of this as we can. We're going to try and save as many people as possible. And then Nora gets the Gatling gun, which is also a thing we really well, want. Well, the Gatling grenade launcher, yeah. Grenade launcher, yeah. Which is in the actual concept Jesus Christ, a, a Gatling grenade launcher? What a fucking monstrosity. They exist. They're horrifying. The speed, the speed of the grenade. You can fire a grenade, like, every half second. It's insane. Or even faster. That's, that's horrifying. crazy. And it's so powerful of Nora. <laughs> Now, what's interesting is, just from a thematic thing, I'd almost like to ask people in the comments, so many people thought when we cut back that Adam wasn't dead yet. I have never really? understood that. Both <laughs> versions, during the, the stream, people always say, he's still not dead yet? I've always wondered why people <laughs> thought that. Do they think his body would disintegrate when he died? <laughs> he was a great this whole time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's because, I think they... They wanted something really grandiose for Adam because we have a lot of Adam fans or a lot of people who are like maybe a little too into Adam that watch Ruby. <laughs> and I think we we Don't made look at it their clear. DeviantArts, you won't like it. <laughs> we made it clear. Everyone was like, Adam's such a badass when we were trying to convey he's like a wild beast, basically. And I think they expected a grander finale for him. So when he's just shot down like a dog in the streets, people are like, he's not dead yet. He, he could come back. He got supernova <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> His rib cage he is like He got supernova and right then now. fucking shot. And like not the good dead. kind. Uh, Anyway, big emotional moment. <laughs> yeah, Ruby's like, oh, it's like we can't, we can't solve this problem. Wait, we can't. I can. Yeah, she's Ruby, immediately... Ruby has a. She's always quick on the draw. Oops, but uh, she realizes very quickly, it's like there's a solution here, <laughs> and then she goes to set up for it against all her teams, wishing right. that she doesn't. Yuri with the softest Ruby he's ever drawn. I love it. Yeah, very, very tone appropriate though. Get all these flashbacks of her of previous moments in her life, little happy, sad memories, all the just mixtures of things that I, I love. Because I, I was originally I was just going to go back and try and dig up some old images, like I did later in this episode. Um, but Ari Ninja really did some great work, kind of bringing these moments to life. And then she begins to cry. And of course. The horrifying moment of, like, are you willing to sacrifice your memories? Yeah, and I think it's very poignant that Ruby has that moment after she see, like, sees all the really bad memories. Yeah. Like, there's an attachment to all of it, no matter it's, like, kind of emotional. Um, some of it gives yeah, you she's strength. Sparkle jelly beans. So, some, of the, some of the worst memories in your life, and this goes back to the whole argument, some of the worst memories of your life help define you, for better or for worse. But, like... <laughs> You know, are, are you willing to sacrifice? Maybe there's some of that for better. You don't realize you're getting from a painful memory. Um, yeah. You're, you're always stronger moving away from, from a painful memory as opposed to forgetting it necessarily. Here's, here's a nice little group the... hug. <laughs> uh, it's like, and that's also the idea that uh, the memory is only painful because of how much it meant to you and like the emotional weight that comes from pain- painful memories. Mm. And there's also this is a this is a moment of extreme guilt for her. She 
feels guilty that she feels that she's being selfish. Uh, yeah. There's this idea that I don't want to lose these memories, but also, like, I, I'm the hero, aren't I? I have to do this. Like, how many people will die just because I want to remember, you know, meeting Blake the first time, you know, or, or you know, or, or, or my mother or things like that? How much are you worth to yourself versus that of others? Yeah, yeah there's, there's a lot of to... weight on here. I remember we were mulling about on it, and we we thought really strongly that it's stronger that Ruby made it's she kind of makes the choice but she doesn't she doesn't make the choice like this the silver eyes don't actually go off it doesn't count <laughs> but it doesn't count <laughs> she didn't blast so yeah she, she still has still her memories use that memory later. Yeah, they this, haven't been she picked so up the, good. she picked up the book she didn't open it don't worry yeah to use that analogy but just like really cementing the weight of it just cementing the weight of like this is not something we're going to use like frivolously there is a drawback and we do intend it to be like a thing like a, th- that's why Team Ruby like freaks out about it is because it's like it's important. Uh, Jay's piece deal of resistance for this entire volume. Yeah. This amazing, this drop is awesome because that was Pat Labor, right? <laughs> that, that you were inspired by the, a Pat Labor. Drop? Yes and no. Just yeah, yes. Yeah, it's it's just general mech anime though. This is it, it gives early like Ruby vibes because it's just so full of like anime enthusiasm. Like just the, yes. the love for the the type of stories that like <laughs> not on the animation. pants. I just stole these. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Celtic line, 100%. Yeah. 100%. I, I'm betting Roman bought those, too. But he's saying, <laughs> not, I the just looks. stole these for the emphasis. For just for, like, <laughs> maintaining street cred. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, they're definitely still stealing shit. But, but yes, he probably bought those pants. The Argus Atlas military, convinced <laughs> by Ruby's speech and by the, the horrible sounds of yeah. the, the people dying... Turns yeah, why doing the quick people. put up the screens hacker moment? Well, not hacker moment, but like techie moment. But I, I need a, I need that, that the hacker man image, but now it's just Weiss. <laughs> she's also wearing sunglasses. <laughs> though. <laughs> it, she, she's wearing sunglasses, but they're like gaudy, like schnee sunglasses with like schnee symbols. Did we get that moment also? Thinking about like when she was in the CCT, contacting her dad. Yes, I'm pretty sure. That I feel was, like that was a connection. That, that, that was sweet, the connection sweet. we wanted to make. She's like, she, she's got it. She's got comms on the ready. And of course... Oh no, we're not there, that line yet. Not quite there, not quite there. <laughs> That's right. Okay, so first is we the giant mech. This was the most contentious yes. thing because... We, we know why it was there. We know why it was... Well, I, I would argue we don't really know why because that thing is so... F- Goddamn ugly! I don't know and why they would like it. It's an experimental mech. Like mech, I mentioned At this least earlier. In the original, it was ugly. Yeah. Here we've we've made it, it better. Yeah. <laughs> we got real otaku on it. <laughs> people who are into armor core, like real civilized people. Uh, the but we wanted to have it at the very least to kind of be like this nice capstone to the. We, we, that's how we kind of wanted to position it by the end of things. Um. And favorite course, John line of the season, yeah the John the line I have no idea what's going on it's like yeah we have a lot of shit that we're juggling at this point yeah I I love John being so goofy but so serious he's he's an interesting mix of got my shit together also not I'm still vomit boy <laughs> and Nora being like I wasn't done yet and Rin being like the, but the gun is done Nora <laughs> the, gun the gun is done <laughs> you gotta you gotta worry a bit for Ren you gotta really worry for he his has to rein her in yeah I'm it's not like, done yet you... Ren just Ren <laughs> Just being like, I am. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, here, here's some soft, like, reaffirming of, of Yang being like, yo, it's fine, I lost my arm. It was sick. I, I, yeah, uh, Neo being concerned. I, I take it as a compliment to how these dynamics have all panned out that, like, you can get, like, everyone is crying for a different ship. Like, people are like, oh, you should do Baked Alaska. It's like, oh, you should do Ladybug. Oh, uh, White Rose, Bumblebee. Uh, uh, Have people started with Jean and, and so Roman yet? Least. Yeah, Lancaster. <laughs> like, I take it as a point of pride that we have built these characters so well that we have such enthusiastic cries for it, as opposed yeah. to what you typically see in, in the Rooster Teeth comment, uh, comments, where it's like, man, I really wish for a Lancaster moment. I really wish for a Ladybug moment. I, like, 
we have those moments. We have oh, those the beef. Are, those moments in the comments yeah. are even sadder. They're just like, I wish Blake and Ruby talked. That's literally <laughs> it. Or like, actually yeah. with volume nine being like, I wish Ruby and Yang acted like sisters. Like, it's it's even more desperate in canon. <laughs> They want they want just the platonic stuff, not even the romance yeah. at this point. Yeah. No, I think I think fandom and like shipping tendencies are a good indicator when you've stumbled upon like a good dynamic in canon. Be like, oh, yeah. oh there's something there. It's interesting. You're just not you're not supposed to like t- take all the cues from that. Like, don't don't bend cl- the knee to that. Just have it as like a ear to the ground moment of like, okay, that's good. We should follow yeah. up on that. And of course, uh, quick little closure. Go bye bye to Maria. The closure. Yeah, and she's just like me. <laughs> That was a neat trick. People, people might have been surprised that we decided to leave Maria behind this volume and not take her with us to volume 7. I don't seven. know how many people were surprised because what did she even do in volume yeah, 7? Yeah, I don't think people... She I think they were Neo, like, that actually, that makes sense. Yeah. They were like, it's yeah. neat. It, it fits. I, I saw more people being like, oh, thank God you left Maria. I, I saw a lot... Well, oh. not, maybe, not, maybe not quite like in that tone or whatever, but like I just know a lot of people were like, oh, that's a smart move. Good choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I love we, like we got Maria. no comments on Oz, uh, on Oz not coming back. Because uh, Oz came back oh, yeah. when um, when Roman or when Oscar was f- couldn't fly uh, the ship because he's yeah. a 14-year-old boy, but Roman flies the ship. He knows how to do that. That's one of the first things we see he does. So yep. no no real reason for it, Oz it, to show it, up. It makes Ozpin actually a little scary when you think it's like, wait, where where is he? It, he has long plays. He's lived thousands of years. Uh, he's got something. I mean, or maybe he doesn't. Roman could die, and he could just get a new host. It's yeah, it's fine. actually is advantageous. That he's kind of like soured on this group. Like, they've soured on him and vice versa, so it's like, it wouldn't be that bad to get them all killed. Mm. Not that we're doing that, but... <laughs> he doesn't have an incentive to really come in and be the good guy and save the 14-year-old boy here. Jay is having audio issues right now. Uh-oh. Oh. Rip. Well, Jay, just get commentary and we'll get the record. Yeah, just, just message it and then we'll say it. We'll figure it out, don't worry. <laughs> Everything has stopped. Oh, his whole computer crashed. Rip in peace. Oh, oh God. No. Oh, no. You're, you're, you're like recording a backup, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh. We cut to the Nikos family on their couch, watching the battle on the evening news. We cut to Saffron, looking sadly at a booth. And everybody checks in. Yes, <laughs> we can check in with everyone. Or we check on it on everyone. <laughs> uh, this was... That was that was such a heart attack to get going. Uh, that scene, um, because like it's so important to show that you know ev- everyone's coming out of this kind of okay. Like like, like yeah. a big theme we wanted to kind of aim for for this volume, which didn't quite pan out quite how I intended it or how we intended it, was hope. Hope at yeah. the end of this volume was going to be a big thing. Is it like uh, especially like yeah. Russell coming out of the trees alive with everyone? Yeah, which I think another thing it was what Ken was kind of going for especially with how dark it is at the start with brunswick and the and the lost fables and stuff yeah just bringing it up reason, a little bit for some reason they framed it with like oz's return as kind of being the thing of yeah hope. in the silver eyes and seeing summer it, it, it and redemption of cordo it's all a little weird and muddled i feel of course the uh, bees judgmental probably went a little too hard for the bees where they're at in the story but it's fine we let it pass. yeah I mean, look they're they're tired they need some to lean on yeah, and they're just like yeah. looking for a little bit of comfort yeah they they ain't together yet don't think they're since... finally friends again yeah yeah they're just tired they're gonna have a group nap all of, all the bees team ruby they're all, everyone they're all just gonna be collapsing on yeah. themselves and of course we decided for john and team that's something we kind of skimmed over is juniper is also going up to atlas um they, yeah. they made their final choice they were kind of flip-flopping a little bit in the middle but they made that call which yeah. mirrors how we were treating it too we we talked about it but oh, then yeah. that would go against yep, there was a real possibility they could have stayed there i think but uh we thought ultimately it's pro- it, it, it made sense for them to go yeah because that got into a conversation about what is fixing ruby anyway malachi mm. yes uh yeah, malachi, the, yeah. the 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 reveal of her semblance. Uh, should we describe her semblance here, or should we wait till next volume so that we can go into detail? <laughs> if we do, I mean, don't let me do it. It's kind of demonstrated think... here, and I feel like we talked about it a little bit, but 
just well, the think, idea that she's very good at mimicking people. She, she, yeah, it's a mimicry I think semblance. next time, there's I think more the next time we can cover it, there's there's a little, t- let's let's leave a little close to the vest. Yeah. You know, keep it's the cards more a little than close. you think. Yes, mm. it, it, it's a it's a more than just mimicry type of semblance. It's it's an interesting one. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And of course, um, new redesign. Cinder, Cinder in her new Cinder outfit. What, what gets me? Keeping is the I, red. When I look at this, I I have to double tape because I'm like, is that just her outfit from the show? No, no. It's it. it I think that's a it's that's a, it's a compliment to Mupa in in and yeah, butterfly and butterfly and, and that like it yeah. feels. I mean, like I, I, even above any of the other outfits they've done, it feels like far more from the this show. This is something. Yeah. Yeah, and you keep the cape, which I enjoy. It has dust in it too, which is like a note on its character seat sheet, I think. Yeah, it's like you can see it from like how it's colored. Mm, it's, co- it's sort patches. of why she even though she's wearing winter clothes, she's still a little bit lighter than mm-hmm. a lot of than Malachite for instance. I, I just remembered that Malachite was also an issue we had with clothing cuz she appeared in I think two different scenes where they had her yes. drawn in a new outfit. I was going to say, I'm sorry, Mupa. <laughs> yeah, originally <laughs> she was supposed it. to appear in a casual outfit where her hair was already cut short and she was dressed very sort of sloppily. It was very clearly like pajama type lounging clothes. But uh, for continuity artist reasons and like ease of drawing, they ended up uh, changing it so that she was wearing the clothes she had on in volume at the start five. of volume five. Yeah. It makes the reveal of the, uh, the outfit reveal at the end stronger, though. I think it, it's someday. Really cool. I, I hope that her casual outfit oh, yeah, I, still gets used. We're gonna I try wanna, to fit it. Yeah, in. we're gonna we try get, to find it. Don't worry. Um, but yeah, uh, that was fixing Ruby Volume Six. Uh, not obviously the end for credit, the most part. But, yeah. Little in last notes. We got some wiggle room. Yeah, so we kind of kind of picking up a little bit what Jay was saying. Is like there was a whole conversation about the nature of fixing Ruby and whether or not we abandoned Team Juniper, and ultimately we kind of thought, well, there is a lot that goes on with John, Nora, and Ren in in Atlas, and we can't just in good mm. conscience abandon them here. I mean, um, you kind of can. Don't give me that. <laughs> we could, but uh, at the end did. of it. <laughs> Most of the important Renora stuff. <laughs> Listen, we can we can still make it work. All right, we, we got we it. We it got work. it. I, I think yeah. what we got the most out of Argus for them though is kind of a place they could return to. Like they're not ready to settle down or like be there yet. But yeah. it was something really like to the heart of Ruby, where it's like we've developed, we've given more to these characters that we kind of promised or see glimpses of in canon, where it's. We can kind of see where they go after. Like yeah, there, there's I, places or threads you can see. I was gonna say like we we have this idea that depending very heavily on how they actually end the show proper, if it ends with a happy ending, you could easily if it ends. If it ends, yeah, <laughs> um, no. you could you could easily see all of Team Ruby and Ranger retiring to Argus to be just regular huntsmen. Like you you could see that angle yeah. happening, and that's kind of what was nice about this volume. Is it kind of felt like. Got kind of a home for them if they ever needed one. Yeah, you definitely in, for Juniper. Do you say more in than canon Ruby. or in fixing? In, no, in fixing. In fixing. In fixing. Yeah, 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 fixing. yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I, th- I thought you were talking about canon for. No, no, in no. Canon, there isn't anything for. Strangely, <laughs> there's nothing <laughs> for Argus like besides, I guess, Pira trained there. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a statue of her, which is weird. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. But yeah, so we have, uh, this was, God, every volume, it feels like, man, this was the worst volume to work on. It was the best volume to work <laughs> on. It, it just, uh, like, so many. But we love it. Yeah, we love it. it. It was it was such an adventure. And there are so many moments I'm, like, looking back on. I was like, man, I it feels so long ago it's so, I happened. feel like it's it's more than a year. It's like, like this. Yeah. I feel like we wrote this two years ago or something. <laughs> Oh, I mean, man. we started pre-production last year in like March or so. That's when we started finalizing yeah. the new character. This volume designs. had a long pre-production on it because it was the hiatus before they even announced when not Volume mm-hmm. Nine was going to mm-hmm. come out. Which don't um, expect Volume like that should be. Don't expect Volume Seven anytime soon, guys. Um, yeah, yeah, that's going to have an even longer pre-production. This, this year was mostly this volume. <laughs> yeah, in fact, um, the one thing that I will announce next in line, and we're, the dates and schedules are still in the air. Next in line for Fixing Ruby is a remaster of Volume 1. 
So look forward to that. There will be official updates and the like coming in the future for that. Uh, I thought this would be a nice little place to end it off for all the people that saw this through. Uh, thank you all so yep. much for watching. Uh, <laughs> listen to all of us ramble for so yeah. long. Yeah, Fru- Fruby, <laughs> Ruby is frustrating, but Fruby is a, a, a labor of love, even though it yeah, kills it's us a, a joy. little bit. Yeah. A lot of passionate people work on this because they care. It's a joy for a few months and then like, I don't want to touch it again. And then a few yeah. months later, I'm like, all right, I'm ready to love you again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like, I need my my fresh breath of air. I need to not be in Fruby right now. <laughs> uh-huh. we officially... it's, it's just how we take it in seasons. Yeah. Which, you know, good. Good little break moment. Oh, uh, post credit. <laughs> yes. I was going to say oh, Peach Powder. Yeah, post credit. <laughs> and I'm actually, I'm kind of pissed at myself because look at this misalignment. <laughs> or, wait, does he get it? Oh, it didn't get misaligned. Okay, all right. For some reason, I thought it's I fine. misaligned it. Oh, uh. you're just crazy. Yeah, yeah, you're just, bit. you're just, you know. And yeah, stop being crazy. <laughs> Here we go. The the big tease of something very big. <laughs> Which, and again, with Salem being spooky, and you're not seeing her face because the true Leviathan. It's good. You could say this actually um, helped us with a decision that we wanted to make where. Um, the reason, one of the reasons we finally agreed to get rid of the kaiju giant thing was the scalability of Grimm. Like, the idea of what Salem's doing right now, we know it's the whale, sorry to spoil it for you. Like, it's going to be so off-putting that you've never seen something like that. But you to go from the dragon that was in Volume 3 to the kaiju in Volume 6 to the whale in Volume 7, just... It felt like, oh yeah, okay, it's just the next big thing. Okay, yeah. cool. Meanwhile, this is a by decided. getting rid of a giant grim, we we gave more emphasis to to when the whale does come. Yeah. And now the video's over. Yes. Yeah, we finished. I think we ran a little long. Thank you all so much for watching. It has been an absolute pleasure to do this, uh, even though this is such a long recording. Uh, we hope you all had a good time. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone here, uh, the my co-writers and editors. Uh, you, I love you guys. I wouldn't have been able to do this without your help. Uh, this has been an amazing volume, and I look forward to every future volume here on in, as miserable as they will be. Ayo. Here's the remastering volume one. Woo! Ayo. Thanks for having us. When do I get paid? <laughs> <laughs> <Come> on, <joke. laughs> <laughs> 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 Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye. <laughs>